All right, everybody. Let's get this thing started, shall we? Hello, everybody. How you doing? How you doing? Yeehaw to you and yours. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Or if it's not morning, good whatever it is to you. Hi. Oops. Oops. I'm trying to fix things here for both of my streams. We're live on like five things. So we're figuring it all out as we're going. I've got my bracket here. I've got my bracket here on TikTok, which is what I'm trying to fix right now. Hi, guys. There we go. Got my bracket set up. I've got our chat. What's up, everybody? We've got a lot of games to look at today. We thought it started at five. <laughs> it started at four. What are you going to do? Mm. I'm happy to be here with all of you. Live on YouTube, live on Twitch, live on the Tick of the Talk. As it looks like, the boys are uh, setting up to watch a game right now. Audio could be a little dicey at first. I would appreciate your help dialing it in if you're like, hey, Zoinks is too loud, Doob Snacks is too soft, the game is too loud, the blah, blah, blah is too blah, blah, blah. Any of that would help. But, uh, you know, also don't be so difficult about it, right? I, <laughs> don't make me keep going. But thank you, everybody, for being here. The game is getting a little too sweaty for sure. You wonder why Chris started early? It turns out Jake is the one who's late. Indeed I am. Indeed I am. We thought it was five? It was four. But we got a lot of uh, exciting games coming at you. These, these are the AFS Cup qualifiers already. The UCS season is underway, and you're going to see a ton of insane games, a ton of insane teams. Uh, this should be really exciting. We're going to go through so much of EU, so much of NA, and all your faves will be here. We're taking a look like this is our screen right here as we're taking a look at the games that we have getting ready for you. I've got Zoinks and Doob Snacks who are going to be with me. I think Zoinks is with me all day and Doob Snacks is with me for a bit here. So we're getting ready for a game right now, everybody. We've got a great look at this. We got our starting screen, scoon screen. Great. We've got our be right back screen. We've got our casting screen. And here I am with you and the bracket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, it's gonna be a day. It's gonna be a day, everybody. Good morning to all. Let's take a look at uh, how the boys are doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring them on again. We're gonna have to dial in some audio here, so you can let me know if they're too loud, too soft, any of that. They will start yelling at some point. I can show you guys bracket. Yo, dudes. Hello, hello. Hello. Hey, all right, we've got Zoinks and Doob Snacks here, everybody. And again, I'm going to be trying to dial in their audio a little bit, as well as the game audio as we start going through this here. Uh, hi, guys. Hi, hi, hi. So, so it sounds like we all messed up the time, eh? Hey, what are you going to do? Uh, where is our, what's our first game that we're going to go to here, Zoinks? So, if we want to wait just like a couple of minutes, Nouns Esports will be into their game number two. If okay. We want to wait there. Um, we could also grab uh, like Dalton's team, which is basically Zephyr from last year, just with one player swap. Um, and they, I'm looking to see even where they're at. I think the chat is going to want to do Nouns. Yeah. I'm sure, guessing. Sure. I mean, I want to see Nouns, of course. Here's the thing about Nouns. Uh, for everyone, if you don't know who Nouns is, welcome to the Pokemon Unite Championship Series. Uh, obviously, everyone else knows who Nouns is because they are one of the most dominated... Uh, dominated? <laughs> dominant yeah. teams. But to be fair, hey, they, they didn't win. Uh, they're one of the most dominant teams in EU. I think we're going to have to see Nouns. Some people want to see Verbs, but you know, part of me thinks that's a bit and not exactly what they want to see. That's true. I hate that you've trained your chat to do bits on you. That is <laughs> that is some kind of dark tech that I don't know if it should be looked. Look, when you do bits all day, at some point the chat's like, I guess we're all doing bits at this point. <laughs> I think we're going to have to watch right. Nouns. Are they up one game? Uh, yes, they won their first game. They're probably just doing draft right now for their game number two, so it should be up in just a matter of... Cool. And who are they versus? It's Nouns versus whom? Outsiders. Uh, if you want to 
pull up my screen. I can show you bracket if you would like. I've actually got um, it up right now. So what oh, you're perfect. seeing, uh, the chat's seeing. Oh, curve, perfect. Yeah, so they're going up against Outsiders uh, for their first game, who Outsiders was seated rather low. That's an interesting fact. I don't know if you talked about this in your own fire, but for February and February only, um, championship points from last year is counted for seeding teams. Um, and then any team that had no championship points from last year was just seeded random. But uh, now Z Sports is ready to go, so we're ready to jump into game. Ooh, let's hop into this. Uh, everybody, this is our first match that we're going to be watching here on stream for the AOS Cup qualifiers. Uh, who am I hanging out with for this first one? I think it's me. Ooh, it's me and Doomstax. What's up, buddy? I'm excited. I'm excited. UCS is back, baby. UCS back. is back. It's been a hot minute, and we are here with all of you. My Parsec has this dumb thing on the screen. I gotta get rid of that. Hide that button. There we go. All right, everyone. Here we go. We have Nouns Esports versus Outsiders in this game number two for the AOS Cup qualifiers. We can see Megu heading to the top path with a Blastoise. Blastoise becoming such a thing. We can see uh, Buzzwool and Blastoise on both sides here, Dupes next. I have to assume we saw Leafeon and probably Umbreon banned out given this draft. Yeah, that's what makes the most sense to me. Um, you kind of can cut these drafts two ways now. You either remove the top lane demons or you remove the EV problems. And it looks like we went the EV problems direction this game. Yeah, it feels like it's it's either they get a Buzzwool and then they, you know, don't get an Umbreon or the other way around. B big, huge body blocks by Utah right there. Saving Bruv, who's been on the Crustle the past few tournaments I've seen. And I'm absolutely loving Bruv on the Crustle. It's a great pick. It's something uh, Zonx and I were talking about. It's amazing how it doesn't get any buffs because of how the meta shaped out. It's relevant now. For the first time in actual competitive, it is truly not a troll pick. Um, and Bruv was actually on the front lines of, air quotes, developing that tech and bringing it back into the light, kind of dragging it into the sunlight. And speaking of dragging it, we actually have a Dragapult, a Pokemon that has not seen a ton of tournament play, but we've got Toon Slim on it. So he's playing that central area role on the Pult right now, possibly in some trouble as he checks that bush and realizes that there are a few enemies inside there. They don't have level five yet on this Buzzwool, so they can't really punish him as he's gonna run back to this central area. This has been a Pokemon that's been so incredibly dominant in solo queue because, it, I mean, once you start getting a couple KOs, you can just snowball an entire game, but it does feel like coordinated teams have had more of an answer for it. Yeah, absolutely, and that, that was something I wanted to point out as well. Because of how it works, it's pretty easy to get on top of if you understand all its mechanics, but as we know in solo queue, those tend to kind of fall by the wayside, and it becomes a little bit more difficult to have some coalesced approaches to tackling it. Outsiders is going to take all of these mid-birds, maybe the big one going to Utah there with a the water gun, um, but great experience on Outsiders early, and I think that's the first KO, the fact that a Daisu just knocked out a Buzzle is a good look, we're getting tons of points in, Spraggles. I gotta say, if I'm Toon, I'm actually annoyed with a Daisu right there. I want my stacks on my Phantom Force, and I'm like, dude, mm -hmm. you just, oh, you blissy-handed, you, like, helping hander, helping hander? Come on. Yeah, that's a thing. Hey, that's you hamburger thing. helper handed that KO when I needed it, buddy. I needed it pretty bad. Dude, Stacks, I don't know if you know, are aware, it's early, bud. It, it's very early for you as compared to me, but we're both struggling in the AM here. Bruv playing far four, taking tons of damage. Uh, this Gardevoir being online is kind of going to be a problem and really needs to be kind of... Oh, Outsiders needs to focus on Nouns' as Dragapult. Dragapult really needs to figure out how to cut off this Gardevoir because a lot of Nouns is scrapping from, from, from the front. Seven minutes here. Reggie hits the top and bottom path. We still have our top laners staying top to try to get as much farm as they can. Slowbro poking them out here with Scald, which I'm actually a little surprised here in this bottom path to see Slowbro with Scald. Mm -hmm. Big old snipe shots coming in, eating it with the Slowbro. At the same time, we've got Clefable to heal that up. And here comes Toon. He's moving on in. He's invisible, looking for a KO right here. Gardevoir with a big Unite move. Not able to take anything down. Clefable is going to continue pushing. Reg Ice is getting very, very low right Right now and they're looking for the secure and it looks like the dragapult's able to pick it up yeah with its unite move which is a great kind of sure shot thing and there you go a getting another ko and tune just cringing at that as they're able to get the clefable down they're gonna siege this goal zone a little bit tune some's feeling big was the first one to kind of test the deep waters up the path and ultimately this goal zone left at 17 so they put both of these goal zones low priming them 
for big, big overdunks, maybe later on a split push or something like that. Take a look at this Megu here in this top path. Oh, uh, obviously, oh, oh. they've been absolutely dominating this top path right here. Level 9 compared to 7 on Buzzwool. And here comes Nouns Esports up to this top path. We have this level 10 Dragapult that's basically just going to be moving around. It feels kind of like a shark as it's moving through the waters just looking for its prey. It needs to pick up those KOs. And if it's able to, it's going to be able to snowball this game so incredibly hard. It really is. We've got a four on two, so it's a Desu and Megu in the top path. We're going to have to hold it down. This is an opportunity for outsiders to really get some value, though. Unfortunately, Megu catching all four of them with that surf. Reggie Alecki's getting burned down. It's at half HP. We're going to see if we can make a little miracle play here while we can. Buzzwell prevents any shit again, and just in case, uh, surf is in. It's a little too early. Synth going to secure it. Fairy Singularity going to catch two. Hydro Typhoon back the other way. Spraggles, we've got tons of action early as now Megu surfing back. You Toon pulls up just to get put down because they get caught in an absolute blender. Outside is looking pretty strong for the first time. And now that's three players down. Spraggles all this experience into the hands of Outsiders. Look at that buzz wall with that massive eject jumping through that fight. And feels like everything went round, wrong for Nouns Esports right there. You know, we talked about Dragapult just getting punished so easy. I feel like they weren't even exactly sure where it was. It just kind of got caught in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. Just like Bruv right here having to use a Unite move. It might be able to make it home because of that. And it looks like it is going to be able to. We've got the X Scissor. It is going to be able to peel away from this fight. They don't want to deal with that Unite move. And Nouns is actually ready to take this Reg Ice without really anyone from Outsiders coming down. We have Mew trying to make their way, but it's going to be a little late right here as we get a nice secure for Nouns. Yeah, I mean, really, you could see what Adesu was doing in the front line. Bruv was in Adesu, just cut off the path of Outsiders to even make an approach to that uh, basement, Reggie. I think that Nouns is struggling a little bit from some communication problems. And what's making me think that Spraggles is they wouldn't have lost the top path that hard if in that exchange if they were talking, right? Because it started off with Megu with a beautiful surf to poach the Gardevoir, but nobody was there to follow up as the rest of the team was moving through the middle part of the map. And after that, it almost became like, okay, well, we just got to give up on this attempt. And they kind of got beat down one by one rather than in a strict team fight. So I hope Nouns can kind of sort that out because they're in a good position here. Look at this. I mean, Buzzwell is such an absolute menace in this game right now. I recently put an S on my tier list. And I think that might even be too low. I mean, this thing is just Great. absolutely insane. Missing the Unite move here, but Megu actually using their Unite move to kind of counter what was possibly Buzzwell hitting it. Reggie Alecki now just being absolutely roasted here by the Outsiders. That is going to push towards the side of Nouns. I wonder, you know, something you brought up is a... a possible miscommunication i'm wondering if it's more that nouns was winning so hard at the start of this match that they started mm -hmm. vibing a bit i don't know if you ever do yeah. this you're just kind of doing well in unite then you vibe and you realize you gave up a lot of your early advantage because you were just having too much fun yeah we all fall victim to that without a doubt and they were up ahead uh to to your point um, but this is the UCS. You can't be doing that solo queue action anymore, right? You got to lock it down, lock it in, and understand how not only how you can win, but how you can lose this game when you are far ahead. Here we go. We're two minutes, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. So the first Rayquaza we are going to see here in the AOS Cup Doob Snacks. We have them positioned around this bottom Reggie. It looks like a great position for nouns, but uh, they're actually coming in. Outsiders making the play. Right over is really going in, getting aggressive, and that's a hard KO for Outsiders to take. They're going to have to try and space the rest of this Nouns team out, but Bruv is doing a good job of that by themselves. Walls and walls and walls and walls between these two squads as Orange decides to finally peel to the middle. CHSV going to position to maybe try and burn this thing down. Maybe they think that's their opportunity here, and it might just be that. Skull Bro moving forward, trying to prevent Megu from going in. That thing's already at half. They want a flippy-rippy scenario, but Toon's not having it. They engage directly on CHSV, cut off by Synth, forcing out the Unite move there. We've got Clefable on the gravity downstairs, or excuse me, the Moonlight downstairs. Brothers topped off with tons of HP, and all of a sudden, this Rayquaza energy is just off the rails. Utah uses their Unite move, and they're hiding in the shadows. Is their James Pond all over the place? Moving through, we've got four players down already for orange out of nowhere spraggles and this thing looks to be pretty buttoned up by nouns as the whole team is wiped and the first team wipe i've seen today spraggles talk to me buddy
Beautiful stuff. I mean, what a play there from Nouns. I, I That was just amazing. You saw as soon as Dragapult moved up, they recognized it could get caught by Guardi or something bad in the top path, immediately hitting it with that Bliss assistance, like way, way early. And then you saw right overs, the Buzzwool, chasing Utah, but they weren't able to make anything happen right there. We saw once again another missed Unite move there for uh, that Buzzwool, and that just spelled the end of that fight. I wonder if Utah goes down to that Unite, if we see anything else happen in that moment. But there you have it. Nouns Esports takes game number two against the Outsiders. And I mean, you wouldn't have expected anything else. That is Nouns Esports, the EU super team right there in action. And even with a Dragapult, who has not been crushing it in these tournaments, we see them crush that match. Fun start to this tournament. And I don't know if we're going to have Zoinks pop back onto the microphone, but I would be happy to have him pop back on and give his thoughts hey, on yeah. that as well. Sure. Yeah, it was a six match. Um, Nouns Esports winning with a Dragapult. Pretty surprising. Toon Slim also like... Not going bananas with stacks or anything like that, which is a Pokemon you kind of want to be. And you steamroll with, but still uh, having a solid performance. Unfortunately, I clicked too many times trying to showcase the bands and skip past the damage. So my apologies, chat. Uh, I want to say uh, my chat uh, voted on Twitch. Uh, all of the channel points were voted for Nouns winning. Not a single team, not a single player <laughs> voted for the Outsiders, which is sad to me. That is sad. It's a little sad, but uh, is it is surprising? I don't think so. Um, it's really tough to gamble against the star power of what Nouns has put together for themselves. What do you guys think about this? I mean, we're, we're at the point in Pokemon Unite where we essentially have super teams. You've kind of got even that happening a little bit in NA in a different way. Right now in EU, at least, we have, without question, like the mega super team. You've got uh, yeah. the best of the best from Tally Bobo, the best of the best from Nouns Esports, and they're they're together to make their run at the World Championships. It's going to be really interesting to see what something like that looks like on the world stage. Agree. I, I think we have seen our first super team now. I think Nouns Esports can clock that in. You could call L I mean, <laughs> LG feels like they arrived at that same result by a different method almost <laughs> to, to really be considered a super team. But yeah. I mean, picking up Zugrug is, counts as a as a wild new roster. So I think it's pretty pretty exciting. Yeah, we are clearly looking at teams that are very worlds capable uh, that we can see representing their regions. And potentially, if they do well in this tournament, representing their regions at a multi region a little bit earlier than worlds even. Yeah, I'm I'm really interested. I mean, I kind of feel like LG, even though they're already the world champs, I kind of feel like they are set up as a super team as well with Zug. It's like a weird, it's right. a weird call, but they're taking what is many people look at as the best tank out there, bringing them over to LG. They already were the world champs. They do feel like another massive super team for Unite. What's cool about LG, though, specifically, is they've made themselves the super team, right? Because they kind of all started together. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess in the most part. Um, so it's it feels to me a little less just a continuation of a uh, of a dynasty, right? You add a, another tool here and there, another offensive weapon or defensive weapon in terms of player player skill, but your like core is the same. Whereas it kind of feels like Nouns is truly that super team all right we're gonna take these best players from over here these best players from here smash them together and that's our squad now yeah that's that's kind of what it's feeling like uh it's really wild to see and i don't know other regions well enough to say oh they put a super team together in india they put a super team together in apac mm -hmm. like i'm not sure i've seen some of the rosters that look pretty amazing but it's hard to say for sure i know Things are going to get really interesting when we head over to our side of the pond because NA is, uh, at least from last season, a lot more competitive than EU. But there are so many EU teams that have a ton to prove. Yeah. Can we watch one of those teams now? Absolutely. Okay, so this will be game two from the side on blue side will be <laughs> their team name is ABCDEFGHIJKL, um, which I've been just calling them. A through L, <laughs> but that is uh, their full team. And then, um, gosh, the second team name is even harder. It's like Gnugna Fanastia? <laughs> I don't know. What? Okay, okay. I found it. Uh, yeah. What is it? Match you in pool two. 
if you have it. Gane- it is Ganegna Fene- Fancetta. Oh, jeez. Oh, what are we calling them? What are we calling them, gents? G Fest. G Fest? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know how you got to G Fest out of that. I, I also don't, but that is what we're going with. We're going with G Fest. Okay. <laughs> what game right. is this? One or two? This is going to be game two. Currently, the purple side is up 1 0. Okay. So ABC is up 1 0. Uh, the players to watch on this team, I really think Ayame and Oscatar are two really good players. Bordy is also a very solid job. Uh, and hopefully we get to see all that. It looks like a fun draft, though. We have Serena Comfe going top. So, I'm psyched. <laughs> Here we go. All right, let's start this thing up. Zoinks, we love you. Here we go for game number two between ABCD and G-Fest. <laughs> cool. Just... Honestly, this is Zoinks' attempt at running a bit on us with these team names here. There's there's, there's no one here that Zoinks specifically wanted to watch. He just wanted to grief us on these team names. Taking a look at Zorark here in this central area. We've got Inteleon in the bot path. I'm seeing an Umbreon. I'm seeing a Leafeon. Leafeon, just that absolute menace in Pokemon Unite right now. Running into the central area, already going to try to steal away this blue buff. Let's take a look at this right here. Here comes the Solar Blade, and they are able to take it. What an absolutely disgusting Pokemon. It's got a piece of uh, epic Hollowware coming out here soon, Doobsnack, so I don't even think we can see a nerf to this thing. No, it's too good. It's incredibly strong. The other side, though, on orange, they've got the other incredibly strong Pokemon, Buzzwool. These are two prime candidates for bans, not taken off the uh, off the roster for this particular game. And you can see both of them for both teams kind of going crazy right now. Just imagine a reality where you have a Pokemon that can out that can take its own farm so fast that it's able to run down. Oh, nice big KO. It's able to run over to the other side and out secure a Zoroark for a buff. Like Leafeon is just absolutely disgusting right now. As we're seeing a Pokemon we never see in competitive lately. Zarina in this top path with a Comfey. Yeah, maybe uh, hearkening back to, to the old days there of UCS Season 1 where Zarina was truly one of the best things moving. Comfy caught on the backside, and we like to call those a BOGO deal, Spraggles, and it's Buzzwell getting two. Buzzwell already level six, mashed on pacing by Leafeon and that Drizzile, soon to be Inteleon. So, I mean, we're keeping pace on the purple side despite not getting all the knockouts that Orange is. Here we go. Look at this. He's level seven in the enemy central area right now. Zorark having to run to the other side just to pick up a buff. My I goodness. mean, it's not a bad look. It, it, Zorak was completely cut off early because of Bordy going across the map. So, hey, if you know where that Bordy's living on your side, go live on theirs and try and get some of this experience back. And they managed to do pretty well considering how this thing started. They're still level six and only one level behind. Look at this Leafeon, just an absolute monster, picking up another KO. We got one for the Inteleon as well. Top path, we've got Zarina. Finally is Zarina. Pretty useless for a while, but now it is Zarina. However, it's going against the Buzzwool. We'll see if the old all-rounder Zarina can do anything, even with a Comfey, against the new powerhouse that is Buzzwool. We see the healing. Here comes the big superpower, trying to take this Pokemon down, filling up that muscle gauge as they head back to the goal, looking for a stomp, but they weren't able to pick up that KO. They do get that berry. However, they grab that one as well this fight is still going on and i want to reiterate that even though zarina's doing well this is a two-on-one fight right now and it's not full-on winning it yeah and Bordy downstairs getting ko streak of three one thing i want to mention though and i think what would have helped oscatar out and maybe get this knockout is that comfy has never hopped off right and good comfy players or at least ones that are playing without fear in this moment you have to jump off get into the tall grass so you can maximize your healing and i think this would have been over on that two-on-one if they would have done that which would have been a huge experience for oscatar however the comfy not willing to let go of the ride that they're on and now that slowed the pace a little bit here comes Bordy though level a trillion moving forward tons of impact nice solar beam gonna get good experience back the other way they're now really really close to their unite move and Oscatar is really feeling this Comfy, trying to put some pressure on Caught in a mean look, Caught in the tall grass as the Comfy Unite is out. And the rest of Purple is pulling up for the smoke. A through L, putting the damage on, putting the pressure on, and trying to withstand. But I think they've overstayed their welcome, Spraggles. Yeah, I think they finally have. I want to call out 
the brilliant heads up play by that Zarina right there. I, I don't know if you noticed, but we had the Zorark move in for that final part of the faint combo. Zarina, Unite moving to take itself up into the air, and they were able to avoid all of that damage. What a play right there, but eventually they were knocked out because, I mean, let's face it, they were standing on the enemy goal for like 10 minutes. This is not Steve, my cat, in solo queue. This is the UCS, so someone's gonna punish you for that play at some point. We've got Inteleon right here trying to fight back at this goal, and it looks like they're just gonna let that walk. Umbreon coming in with the Unite move. Zoroark, you know what? They're saying, well, I'm gonna Unite move too. I mean, everybody's using these Unites these days. Look how this experience tide has changed, Spraggle. So yes, Leafeon is the biggest thing, level 11, getting KOs everywhere, but I mean, the Buzzwool, Venusaur, and Zorark all being 10 really allows them to put some tactful, tactful pressure onto purple. And now that Apollo has also hit 11, like that parity is like that equilibrium is now balanced. So all of a sudden purple, which felt very good. And all we keep seeing is the KO streaks out of the Leafeon. All of a sudden they're back in the action. Nice Unite move by those arena. That would be a quick KO. Can't believe Bordy did not hit that Leaf Blade. Maybe a little bit of an iframe type action. Uh, they are able to get the follow-up KO. Now tons of pressure on the other way. They're finding value despite these experience levels being exactly the same. Take a look at that. Nice little fight right here. Zorark is going down. You know, something that you and I uh, talk about a lot. We were talking about vibing in that last match with Nouns Esports, and you're talking about these levels coming to parity a bit right here. And I think a lot of what happens inside of Pokemon Unite is the catch-up mechanics that the game has uh, really... It, it really rewards the team that sticks with it and then finally picks up these KOs, even though this Leafeon is so far ahead. At some point, if you are able to punish it, you're able to come back inside of this game. And the catch-up mechanics we're talking about are the fact that when you're a lower level and KO a higher level, you get so much more value than the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. They're riffing this Regirock, and this is going to be a source of experience Orange needs. Bordy comes in. If they can get their Leaf Blade, kind of knocked by the Regirock rocks itself, but it's still secured by the Wigglytuff, who's playing on the Razor's Edge. Bordy gets KO'd, pulling up the smoke on the backside. Shouldn't have taken that direction here, but it doesn't matter. Orange is looking to push despite not taking this Regirock. Nice solar beam over the shoulders. They're keeping the pressure on. But Mari's very low. They get stomped, quickly identified. They can be KO, and the buzz will going down is a problem. Now Shoki is going to get dove on, and they're going to be KO'd because it's too easy. There's no front line. Back caught into that mean look is uh, that Zarina. Apollo tries to clean up the trash, but they don't have enough firepower in their main to get it done. Cobra now peeling back. KO streak of four. We're going to see our first Penta. The arena is proven. We've got the Cotton Cloud crash. And if I'm Oscar, I want this Penta in a big way. They know they're on the Spraggle stream. They want to show off for the fans, but deciding maybe at once that this is not their moment. This Zarina. This is why, by the way, we always say, like, I, you can't really buff this Pokemon. Like, you can't you can't buff this thing too much because it is able to do this. By the way, I'm sure you noticed it. Another brilliant, you know, uh, moment of a Unite move from Zarina. As soon as they were about to be taken down by that faint attack combo, they take Zorark up into the air. Another double KO here. Just being set up by this Wiggly. They're level 14 right now. Unbelievable. Yeah, and they had a really slow start, right? Buzzle got two KOs, uh, two KO streaks of two right at the start. They were able to find their way, catch back up, and uh, A through L is grooving. I mean, they are working together. They have built their entire game plan to facilitate Oscar kind of popping off, and that's exactly what's happening now. Take a look at this. Beautiful snipe shots from this Inteleon. Just able to, oh my <laughs> gosh, threading the needle, picking up a massive KO, almost hitting that one as well. Reggie Alecki possibly with the assist right here as you see these massive snipe shots still landing, and they're able to just continue putting pressure onto the side of G-Fest with this. Buzzwell level 13, getting healed up, but we have everyone from ABCD, EFG, HJKL in the central area right now, ready for this fight. That's a level 14 Zarina with a Comfe Collar and is definitely looking for that Venusaur right now. Such an easy target for it. Another big Unite move from Eldegoss, just kind of wasted to make sure that they don't go down early. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great exchange. A, a dummy engagement for a Unite move, that's perfect. Shoki gets KO before they can even use theirs. Now they're moving through. A nice Unite move on Mari. They're going to poke up, and this is the Oscatar show. They're looking for more. Arc kicks them up, puts them down. They're fighting in the tall grass now. They're putting the pressure, but Orange has to sit on their own pad, and I don't think that's a place where Purple wants to fight, but they rage on. Arc is so low. 
Here comes the Inteleon finding snipe shots, finding KOs. Finally, the buzzwall goes down and the pressure continues. We've got double slaps now. KO streak of two. We're singing them down. We're shouting them down straight into the microphone. Spraggle. Solar Beam comes out. We are still on this pad. Krinsky has picked up the Kompi and now they're trying to get out of dodge. But what they're doing is eyeing up the snipe shots from Ayame. Purple fighting well. And here comes Os or excuse me, here comes Bordy saying, Did y'all forget about me? Yeah, incredible stuff. I actually, I gotta be honest, I did forget about the Leafeon as it just ran in there with a massive double KO. Right now, Wiggly in a lot of trouble and Kumpe might be going down as well. Kumpe, they need to try to pick this up, but no, it hops onto the Leafeon and they are able to pull out 35 seconds left. There's really not anything that can happen for the side of G-Fest if they don't get this Rayquaza. Even still, there's not much time left. We can see Zarina moving in, trying to stop this. Zorok attempting to stop something here. They are able to pick up a couple KOs, but only 20 seconds are left. There's such little time on the clock. The solar uh, beams are coming out here for Rayquaza, but there just isn't enough time to score even once they secure this. They're running to goals right now. Here's 100 oh. from the Eldegoss. They need to peel someone to that center, but I just don't think they can make it in time. Time, and no, they're it is, not able to. It is so close. It is so close. If Umbreon or Venusaur peeled early instead of being there for the secure, I think they might have actually had a decent shot. I was surprised to see the Eldegoss get their points in. I mean, they did not need much more, Spraggle. So good effort out of Orange to try and bring this thing back up to parity. But what a game. What yeah, a game. Or such I say a Orange, game. Purple, because they flip. Yeah, they flip at the end. So for everyone watching that's a little confused by that, when we're watching on uh, a player's Spectate account, which is what we're doing here, uh, we don't Sorry, actually know which team is technically Orange and which team is technically purple so at the end of the game it can kind of switch but the team we were watching that whole time that was purple they did win it that is oscatar on the zarina 106k obviously enabled by the most disgusting pokemon in unite the comfe but it's really cool to see zarina kind of back in the meta for a half a second right there geez no i like how they built this composition out it's a little um it, it's it's unsuspecting it's unsuspecting. You're like, okay, Zarina picking up the Comfy, but you can really see what they were doing, right? They were using uh, Krinsky and Oscatar Bordy, who are all playing very well together in that mix, in that front line. And Ayame was ringing true with those snipe shots, Spraggles. 102,000 damage. I mean, that is an impact that is felt all across the side of purple. Yeah, really cool stuff there. Zoinks, what do you think about seeing the Zarina back? I love Oscatar so much. <laughs> this this is a super exciting player in EU. I kind of an infamous player for playing with a lot of North American stacks, so he's gained some popularity with some of the top teams in NA. I know LG is very fond of this player, so I'm excited to see this team. Um, I actually thought the Wiggly Tough tech into Buzzwell was kind of cool. The Starlet was, Recital yeah. to be able to cleanse the crowd control is a really nice. A uh, really nice maneuver. I think if you're going to give up Buzzwell and Draft, grabbing something like a Wiggly for your defender um, makes a lot of sense a little bit later on. I like that. I like that you're playing that off. Obviously, you're going to lose early game against Buzzwell no matter what, but at least you got some options out later on yeah i mean well you know it's interesting you see the slow bro ban right there it's it's kind of funny because we don't get to see the bans until the end of the game even though we can kind of right. guess what they are <laughs> based on what you're not seeing inside the match you see that slow bro ban and you think oh yeah they don't want leafeon or zarina really here to be able to be stopped at all in this final fight pretty pretty yeah. interesting stuff uh from these two teams i'm not seeing much Zorark, and I feel like every time I see it, they're not really crushing these games anymore, which is interesting. Yeah, a bit of a bit of a slowdown in the Zorark um, Zorark camp. It really like to me in my mind, it's like okay, if you're picking Zorark, you also need the Comfy. You need uh, a, a decent front lining option uh, to make sure that whatever goes down, it is not the Zorark with their Comfy. Um, but I really did like. Um, the, the Krinsky squad draft because, you know, what two Pokemon would love to fight in a mean look? Zarina with Comfy. Like, those are two Pokemon that are, like, fine being stuck in that orb. And we saw it all game long. It's like, okay, you mean looked me, and then you're gone because this is exactly where I want it to be anyways. So, uh, shout for the creative draft strategy. I liked how that turned out. But we got another one. Is this Ball Toys Unite? Yeah. So, I figured we could jump over to this. It is game one of Ball Toys Unite versus Unbound Masafra. <laughs> M-A-S-S-A-F-R-A. Yeah, I think we'll go with Unbound on this one, eh, Spraggles? I'm going with Unbound Masafra, and I'll <laughs> never say the shorter version of that ever, ever, ever. <laughs> 
All right, let's get this thing started, gentlemen. Uh, it is zero zero right now, and we're starting off game number one. Ball Toys Unite. I mean, a lot of familiar faces on Ball Toys Unite. I mean, Chelvin playing tank. You know, the 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 joke there was like, oh yeah, we'll just have a. Uh, Tank Cinder, right? Because we've seen Chelvin play so much Cinder Ace. Um, Zervis is leading the charge on this team. Tally Bobo's captain last year. Great support player. And maybe one of the only players that I've seen consistently on the big stage get like 100k healing out of an Eldegoss. Here we go. Sorry, I'm setting up one thing behind the scenes, so I was a little bit behind there. Sereyu on the Inteleon, only level four heading up to this top path. But the water gun is more than enough, uh, even if you're just level four here. This cure is insane. Gotlu on the buzzwall. I'm excited to see that. Gotlu's the kind of player that I feel like is always pushing right to the absolute red line with his Pokemon. And because of that, you see plays from Gotlu that are absolutely unreal, especially near the end of the game. Oh, without a doubt. And that's what this team is looking for them to do, right? Zervis understands the capacity at which Gatlu likes to operate and knowing what their limit is allows Zervis to control the game a little bit. And, uh, you know, having some conversations with Zervis, they feel that if they can keep their team pointed in the same direction that they've got a really good chance here and here we go we see this bottom path here a couple of evies evies just being so unbelievably powerful inside the game right now we got the hyper voice on the sylveon which is going to be interesting i've seen a great combo with hyper voice sylveon and snipe shot because hyper voice is able to just rip away all of your special defenses mm -hmm. and then you just nail these snipe shots that already do three thousand damage and now they're just set up to get insane ko's in an even bigger way yeah, nice pivot up as Eden had to grab a berry. They get picked up, put down. No way Gatlu thought they were actually going to score, but scrapping out a little bit here. As all of a sudden, we've got the Shade ran by Sereyu and Zervis, so Gatlu does end up getting their points in. And now Big Solar Beam chunks the damage. They're going to peel back. Everybody's on the Cotton Puff here. we got a little bit of Razor Leaf for spacing out of Ivysaur. Now Purple's fading back to their side. We'll get the 720 birds here in a moment. And I think Purple might be looking to take the body. Look where Gatlu positioned. They went straight in for Eden, pivoted back to the birds. Nice little uh, solar beam back through. And, you know, up on the scoreboard is Purple. But these, uh, these levels could be worse given how the start of this game has gone. And here we go, heading down to this bottom path for our first Reggie of the fight here. We got the Hyper Voice pushing forward. Nice big snipe shot pushes Mew back. Registeel just being chipped down right here by the Hyper Voice. But I think both of these teams are trying to figure out how this fight is going to start to play out. As it's still being chipped up here by Ball Toys. They've got the score lead. They've got a positional advantage. But they know they've got a solar beaming Mew. They're looking for it right here. As Registeel is getting very, very low. Here comes the snipe shot looking for the secure. And it's Eldegoss somehow who picks it up. Zervis, the probably the Eldegoss of all time, picking up that secure. Yeah, really great work by Chelvin on this new tank roll. Was able to bully the Mew so far out that uh, even if its Solar Beam was on time, it was actually just a little short from actually being able to hit the Reggie. So great work by them buying the spacing, understanding exactly what the secure tool that Orange had available to them. And, uh, you know, locking that down as a tank is supposed to do. Now we got a classic 2v1 eating, taking tons of damage, busting out the Unite move out of the Buzzwall. They chunk one, chunk two. Nikaz goes down before they can reset. Now they're putting the pressure on the Venusaur. We're just sludge bombing and Solar Beaming. And yes, it went through two players. But they still got their points, and Mew Unite is out. They're looking for a target. Unfortunately, that's Zervis. Now we have a Hyper Voice. They get screamed down. Their ears are bleeding. The Mew is in the Pokemon Center for some auditory deficiencies here. This Screamion is going crazy, Spraggles. Pushing forward those massive Hyper Voice. I mean, just look at them rip through that War Turtle. That's a level 11 onto a level 6 War Turtle. Just yelling at him till he has to come home. It's like your mom when the street lights are on as Reggie Alecki is being ripped apart here and I talked about Gotlu playing their Pokemon to the red line a little bit earlier and we saw that with that Buzzwool combo right there this is disgusting they have mean look Umbreon setting up Buzzwool, Sylveon and then the snipe shots from Inteleon it's just so difficult to play against yeah, that's what's wonderful about having such a strong Eldegoss player is you don't have to focus on getting any supports in early in your draft, right? Because Eldegoss will almost be there, and if they're not, you get something else. I would cast this goal zone siege, but it is absolute calamity. And uh, Purple breaks the goal zone, is going to try and get some chaos before resets. They get thwarted. 
four, are you kidding me? Rob gets the magical berry that was populated by the Hoopa and runs all the way home. Oh man, I heard the Screamion say to go inside for dinner, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. They didn't want any of that smoke. Beautiful stuff here from the side of Ball Toys. 237 to zero. And I think if you're playing this coordinated or you're playing against this team in solo queue, you're probably running into a 237 to zero situation if they're playing anything like Ball Toys right now. We've got the Hoopa Unite trying to push them back out. Reg Ice getting very, very low here. Looks like we're going to finally have a good secure. Look at the two beams. Looking like the start of Star Wars right here as all of those lasers are flying. And they are able to get a secure. Yeah, but can they leverage it and do anything with it on the map? I mean, they're still down by 237 points. This is an opportunity here. It's actually the Surf bubbling out Gatlu from the Solar Beam. So that kind of worked out for Purple in that exchange. As Baltoys United is looking, Cloud, Cloud Crash on all four, waiting for that Blastoise to come back through, forcing out the Hydro Typhoon right into the Buzzwell Unite. They get KO'd in the middle of trying to shoot water all over this Thea Sky Ruins. And now it's the Slow Bro playing Surf up front, but Mew getting some good courtesy KOs on the backside. Inteleon is down, but purple feels good. Balto is looking to scrap, and they definitely, definitely, definitely mitigated the impact of that basement Reggie. That may be one of the most disgusting ways to wait for a player to come back through a hyperspace hole is with a cotton cloud crash from Eldegoss as soon as they came back through. Dropping down on that, pushing Blastoise back, picking up that KO. We can now see, by the way, highest level in the game, Zante on this Screamion right here, which has been an absolute force inside this match. 277 to zero. It's never over until Rayquaza goes down but at the same time this is going to be really really tough for unbound to come back to yeah there's a huge experience lead on balto unite side so what does that mean they just can't hemorrhage this experience back they'd almost rather let this reggie alecki go than over contest and give up uh one of their top player ko's gatlu however likes to redline as you mentioned they're coming in zante's got the screamy on cover and they're actually able to get a ko for themselves the secure is oh, a no no, no. <laughs> what a crime dude sereyu absolutely wanted here for illicit activities what a snipe shot that's disgusting i mean i don't know what racketeering is but that might have just been racketeering right here as we see this something, reggie something like got he, racketeered something something got, something got racketeered inside of this game as it's 293 to zero we can see got coming up here just oh nice big slow beam if they're able to pick up a ko maybe they can turn something around blastoise pushing another big unite move umbreon coming right back stealing all of those shields and it looks like they're not going to be able to pick up anything on the buzz wall here no but they were able to i believe another burger went in zante went and closed out that tier two goal zone where the rest of orange thought they had an opportunity on gatlu who's actually waiting in the wings on their side of the map yeah and look at this right here i mean some incredible stuff here from ball toys we talked a little bit about eu super team earlier but to be fair this is one of the most star-studded teams out there as well and you're seeing why inside this match 393 to zero the solar beams are coming out but i mean they are just absolutely stuck on their side of the map right now they are well aware they need to make a play they're looking for gotlu they're looking for something it's a level 15 sylveon Level, I mean, it, and it's looking to scream right in your face. Eden is so low, despite being the tank, it's kind of getting eviscerated any time it steps up. They're looking for an opportunity. Chelvin is down, so if there's a move to be made, it's here, but they have lost two players themselves. They're pivoting it around. They would like to get Sarayu. Sarayu's low on HP, but the Screamion's on the chase, and that's another two players down into the bucket of the ribbon Eevee here. Nikaz says, I don't know, I guess I'll get 70 points in just to say we didn't get absolutely donut hold here. And uh, Rayquaza is going to go to Ball Toys Unite. This was a beatdown. Unbelievable. I mean, yeah. Beat down, beat up. It's the new Phalanx move. It's Ball Toys Unite. It's incredible right there. 393 to 70. I don't even count that 70 to be honest, but wow. What a what a game for Ball Toys Unite. I am still reeling at how quickly Zante was able to get this screaming on online. And I mean, I, I don't mean level four. I mean, taking over the game. Like, they were huge. Yeah. And then the chat saying, I saw someone say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm looking for that build from Zante. I mean, you just put a couple glasses on the Sylveon and you let him go. You let him go.
I personally, if I'm playing Sylveon, I am playing Screamion. And not that I have any games that look like that, but in my mind, I always believe it's a possibility. Beautiful stuff here. Uh, a couple, like, quick housekeeping things. We're probably going to have to have the predictions on Twitch get closed out a little earlier. And also, some of these games, depending on when people are watching them and when we hop into the match, some people may know the outcome slightly before we see it on stream. That's just the nature of watching these games as soon as they're popping up on our stream. So, as best as you can, don't spoil anything for the chat. Spoilers. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get in the chat. Don't you do that Um, <laughs> Do we want to do game two of that last match, or do we want to pivot away to something? I think we can finish the set. All right, yeah, let's, let's do, it. do it. Well, maybe not, I guess. <laughs> it's game two, but let's check it out. Gatlu on the blaze again. Into triple defender from the side of Unbound Mass. You don't really get to see a Blaziken too often, so this is going to be exciting. My chat is saying to ban Zoinks. Hmm, maybe we have to. Yeah, I mean, they Zoinks does owe you a lot of money, Sparkles. Yeah, but does that mean you Stop ban him, or, or does it mean him. you figure out a way to get him to pay you back at some point? That's what I'm looking <laughs> for as we head into our next game right here. Ball Toys Unite versus Unbound. They took a commanding game one, and we finally see the Fire Chicken in tournament play. I, I know I, uh, Zoinks made a tweet that they really enjoyed the play style of this Pokemon. I enjoy watching uh, this Pokemon as well being played by top level players, and I hope uh, I hope the Gatlu show really, really is without commercial breaks because a Blaziken that is grooving is a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I love that tweet from Zoinks acting like no one said Blaziken was fun to play. <laughs> My DMs are empty. My DMs are empty. <laughs> is everyone supposed to DM you every time a Pokemon is an absolute blast and everyone Correct. agrees? Give me a break. I would love that. <laughs> all right zoinks ba getting banned instantly yeah like this is this is ridiculous at this point zante picking up the inteleon so not sarayu going to be doing that work here i believe they're on the del fox um which is i love when teams have the skill set to be able to switch two player between inteleon because it really opens up the avenues of how you can draft and i mean there's you don't want to hemorrhage a bunch of skill level so it's not like Bragos is playing Inteleon, then Doopsnax picks it up because that is not the same skill level there. But when teams can alter between those two without having to give up huge skill gaps on a specific Pokemon, it really opens up your drafts. And Ball Toys Unite does this, and so does Nouns. And those are hallmarks of two great teams. You know, something that's really interesting here is we're seeing, I, I noticed my chat's pointing it out, we're seeing this Assault Vest on the Clefable. And one of the coolest things about having a draft inside of Unite, which is coming to Ranked very, very soon, is you actually get to make plays like this that make a lot of sense that you couldn't otherwise. They have four special attackers on the side of Unbound. So that Assault Vest is going to save this Clefable from an early, you know, massive KO in some of these big fights. It can basically eat an entire Unite move from some of these mm -hmm. big special attackers. Yeah, it's genius. I mean, that's what's wonderful about Draft. It's not only jockeying for the Pokemon, it's jockeying for the held items that you can bring into battle here. And Zervis is no slouch. They understand exactly what they're doing by strapping up the Assault Vest, you know, trying to go a little bulletproof with that Clefable that is now playing incredibly far forward to get vision for the team. Going straight for a quick score. Are they going to get it in? There's a lot of traffic there, and they're able to just dunk it in just in time. Screamion is there. They use follow me to bail out. They dodge the solar beam, and they make out like a thief in the night. How do they... I know how they get away from that. I, You know, you see it all. You see the follow me. You see the X speed. You see the assault vest eating enough of that solar beam. But I'm sorry. Give me a freaking break here. How did that Clefable get away from that entire enemy team? We see the big time overheat moving in. Now with the follow me they're looking for a little bit of a fight right here Zervis is in a lot of trouble finally going down Gatlu coming back in and looking for more of these KOs as someone who's always playing on the red line now they've got the fire chicken to prove it right here the combos are going to be absolutely insane I can't wait to see him try to pop off with this Pokemon I, the the work that was able to be done upstairs by just trading a Clefable for two players back the other way is exactly the exchange that they were looking to do Zervis understands the mission here with the assault vest and follow me, it's to get into the absolute brain of the other team and let the rest of your team get the KOs. And we're just seeing that ad nauseum here, rinse, repeat. 
and with only six minutes 30 seconds left in this game we haven't been in it for too long but we're seeing this play happen over and over and over again beautiful stuff here we finally have the level nine on this venusaur trevin and shelvin just trying to push out the members of unbound as reggie is getting very very low here comes venusaur looking for the steal and no it's the del fox who picks it up Nice little move by Sir Ray. You're able to get the KO on the Sylveon back the other way before they can do the damage. Ferdinanger is out. Eden's playing far forward on the Blastoise again. Zante is going to make it out. Chelvin's going to make it out. Zervis is playing on the backside. They need to kick up a Moonlight if they want to insulate this goal zone a little bit. Still playing far forward is Eliza. They're trying to get their points in. And they've got a good opportunity here, Spraggles. We've got a good mean look on Chelvin. So they couldn't get in there with Horn Leech and Woodhammer. And now there's no donuts on the side of Orange. They're going to make it happen here in this second game as we have the Fanciful Fireworks are out to do a little bit of goal zone defense, forcing out the Hydro Typhoon. But Eden is poached and put down instantly. And here we go. We see Ball Toys pushing back from this fight. It's interesting to see this Delphox, you know, the mystical fire flame charge Delphox. I feel like you never see this in competitive anymore. The only thing I'm seeing lately is fire spin, but it's pretty cool to see this kind of Pokemon played as a carry once again in a very interesting team composition. You've got both the Delphox and the fire chicken, very unusual choices, but you can see, you know, they get massive value in the hands of some of these top players. Got Lou in a little bit of trouble right here. We're going to have to see if they're able to fight this out. Unite moves coming in. They are looking to pick up this KO, but no, actually, they're going to push the other way. They're going to put the points on the board. They know they can't chase this Pokemon down. It's going to score in the top path. I don't think anyone can land on its head in time. In fact, they're all jumping bottom to stop Ball Toys right here. The Unite moves coming out. Big Trevenant unite and the wood hammer zante trying to get home but no they are not able to make it shelvin neither they are going to finally go down as well that was a nice Trevian Unite, but you have to give credit to the Venusaur. Jumping right in, hitting a couple players with the Sludge Bomb, and all four players with that Solar Beam, really all of a sudden sent Ball Toys Unite scrambling, right? They were like, oh, we didn't expect that much firepower that much quickly. They didn't fall for the bait of Gotlu scoring in the top, right? They all collapsed bottom, and I think that was a surprise too. So good read out of Orange to give themselves a real chance here, because they are fighting a little bit from behind. Dupe snacks. We got Reg Ice being set up right here. It doesn't actually look like we're going to see anyone from Unbound try Try to stop this just being taken down by ball toys 283 125 they're just looking for other places on the map to find some value there's so much experience up all over their side of the map they've lost top and bottom goal which gives them constant opportunities to farm and unlike last game they're keeping a lot closer with levels and i think it's because they're on top of their farm and at the same time they've had a, a few better fights than they had in the previous game i wonder if unbound actually dropping that hoopa has brought them into a better situation no that i mean that's a great great point they're they're just scrapping with kind of the the pseudo off tank support umbreon type action here something we've seen a couple times um but look at these level disparities you mentioned it they're not that far behind because they've just been farming up the extra experience while pokemon that comes on their side of the map and that's why you have to be tactful when breaking these tier one goal zones here we go, Reggie Alecki pushing onto this tier two. This is something they're gonna, gonna just try to defend right here while Ball Toys mm. is just gonna try to take their experience. Of course, if they give them an opening, they would be happy to push this in. I just don't think anything's really gonna happen here. Delphox uniting, but it's not really to make a massive play. It's just because Delphox can unite every three seconds inside of Pokemon Unite. So they might as well use one and see if they can pick up anything, a possible KO, or even just putting some annoying pressure on your opponents. Yeah, I believe it's Eliza the Slowbro that was trying to hold it down in the face of two. Uh, let off the hook a little bit because I think if uh, Ball Toys Unite wanted to, to turn the switch, they definitely would have been able to crash onto that player and potentially their goal zone. But for now, it is insulated. The lead is only 150 points here. 140 points, 60 points, 160 points. We got there, Spraggles. I know math. I, I had to get my abacus out, but I think I finally got there. Uh, my abacus keeps screwing up. It doesn't give me any good information. 20 seconds <laughs> now until Ray Quaza. And you're right. There's only 160 or so points separating these two teams. That's actually really great for Unbound, as this Slowbro has eaten so much damage, but is able to stay around. Wow, massive snipe shot right there. It it's got Venusaur to under half. If they're able to pick up a KO on Venusaur, this thing is all over. You see the positioning from Unbound. They are looking to see if they can move in somewhere. Any KO they can pick up on Ball Toys can give them the opportunity to score in top or bottom and actually bring this game to parity. They'd be ahead if they were able to put full pockets into either goal. Into yeah, both great, goals, excuse great. me. 
Yeah, great positioning by Ball Toys Unite. They're not even really letting Orange able to get in there and engage. And Gatlu has been spacing perfectly as well to make sure that the Screamion can't pin the chicken. And now they're going straight in, right? Baiting it out and then moving around. Now the timer's down. Gatlu can actually engage if they want. They're going straight for it. Rob is taking tons of damage. <laughs> but nice little Sarayu pot shot over the wall to take care of that KO. And now they're looking for another one. Another oh! phenomenal time shot follow-up by, by the Delph Fox again. Another KO. Now Eden is low. They're knocked out. Three players down instantly, and all it took was a couple moves and a little bit of schmoovement out of the Delph Fox. They're looking to rip. Fanciful Fireworks are out. They're putting tons of damage on this thing. Eliza's back. They're trying to find their way in. Are they going to be able to surf over the wall to make a prayer play? It's a little too early. And here comes another Inteleon secure on Rayquaza. And Ball Toys Unite looking saucy my friend they look good they look saucy they look spicy it's some nashville hot chicken from the gotlu looking for that big ko on the rayquaza i gotta say i love the play there dupe snacks they were ahead and they just said they're completely zoned out they're afraid we're not going to be afraid to take rayquaza right now they have insanely good rip and insane secure between the snipe shot and the overheat on the blaziken and they just take that down i love when teams get a aggressive like that as I, I often used to say in high school be aggressive be -e aggressive and it applies today in pokemon unite yes your cheers from your high school days do apply today despite that gap being 40 years from then till now the siege of the middle goal zone is happening they're right on the doorstep here this is all for not ball toys unite winning convincingly to up can't wait for my 40th reunion in a few days here wow geez it's really coming up yeah, it's right around the corner. I'm going to be there, too, so it's good. <laughs> there we go. 584 to 125. Ball toys looking fantastic there. I mean, what a beautiful play from ball toys. Uh, it just zoning them out so incredibly well. I, I loved it, man. And the ability to take that objective right in front of that. Unbound knew it was happening, but what are they going to do? Yeah, I mean, it literally took one hit and then Sarayu to just be told, hey, got, got them low over here. And they just shot in one uh, one fireball to get a KO and they did it over and over again. I do want to tip the cap to um, Nautilo on Unbound because they had level 13 by Rayquaza despite how bizarrely that whole game went, right? They were committed to getting their farm up, still did 62,000 damage, which obviously paced uh, the entire team. So shout out to them for being one of the reasons that uh, Unbound had an opportunity at the end. Yeah. Great stuff from these two teams. Zoinks, we saw a fire chicken, buddy. It was fun. It looked pretty good. Also, have you uh, heard about this thing? It's so fun. I don't it's know. It seems fun. pretty mid to me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to grab it. Okay. Yeah, I love this. I love this Pokemon. It's so sick. Also, shout out to Spragos for mentioning Nashville hot chicken. And now I am unbelievably hungry. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, I, it's it's yeah, early, but it's, it's never too early for hot chicken. I That's what I always say. It's what I always say. <laughs> it is weird um, that you're always saying that. It feels I, like I'm glad that you're adopting it finally. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you're really getting on. That was going to be the first Unite Mike shirt was it's always time for Nashville hot chicken. Yeah. And I feel like um, there was a lot of pushbacks. It's like, doesn't really fit Unite Mike's. It just feels like something. That it was It was also, I was like saying. hard. I was also hard on it being like a white shirt, you know, I just perfect for stains. I don't know why I was dying on that hill, but. I was, I was. <laughs> but, he's like, but everyone says it. And we're like, okay, as long as I don't, I'm not. Let's just get Cloudbuster in here. Okay, so we are getting to the part of the bracket where we have some of the top teams beginning to clash very soon. Um, we will potentially have Illusion versus ABC uh, coming up quite quickly. Uh, that could be a very, very exciting game. Um, Giga Chad versus Neo Sentry potentially will be coming up quite soon. Uh, but Illusion is currently in their game. They are up 1-0. We could take a look at their game number two next yeah, if I'd we want to do that. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. All yeah. right. Let's do Illusion versus Suntail. Illusion is currently up 1-0 at the time we're jumping into Spectate. Hmm. So, yeah, Illusion is the, the Lunder Klaus uh, squad. Um, and definitely that should be the two uh, largest known quantities for those of you that follow the UCS at home. Um, had really solid seasons last year. Lunderu actually stepping in for Tally Bobo Believers for, I believe it was, uh, was it Utah? 
and able to deliver on a big time results with that Glaceon, if you recall, Spraggles. Here we go, Doob Snacks. I do remember that Glaceon being extremely powerful. We're gonna see what they wanna bring in here. I think the mo the thing I'm most excited about looking at this team is first off, kind of how old school a lot of it is. You've got the Greninja and the Lucario right here. So it's a lot of early, early Pokemon Unite on the side of our purple team, Illusion, Michael. Illusion. Uh, Kiri again, uh, moving forward to playing uh, the New Age Defender a Warrior here in Umbreon. Can really scrap early. Uh, really bullying out that Alolan Vulpix and moving to the other side of the map. Now, there's the theory moving around, and Klaus has obviously bought into this theory that Lucario is one of the only Pokemon that can truly scrap in the early game with Buzzwell. What are your thoughts on that? I've heard it. I think it's true. I do think Lucario doesn't have as much value as Buzz does throughout the game, but I agree. It is one of the Pokemon that feels like it actually can keep up with Buzz. It just doesn't seem like Lucario has as much value as the game goes on. Fight breaking out right here. Lucario looking to pick up a KO, and they do. Nice big power-up punch into that boosted, and now we see Buzzwall in a whole lot of trouble right here. Nice big double KO. Not only keeping up, but keeping him down in the top path. Is they're looking for three? Can they pick it up? They do! The Klaus is committed. I mean, if you're gonna go into this theory, you might as well go all in, and they certainly have KO Shrink of three for Klaus, and it's hard, hard, hard to argue with that performance right there in the face of this top path, which has two of the best top path characters in it, Buzzwool and Hoopa, and especially when those two are working in tandem, it's tough to overcome, but not for Klaus, not today, and not on Lucario, as they get another one, Spraggle. Look at this beautiful play there by the Greninja. I mean, just moving in, looking to see if they were able to get a nice little steal right there. They weren't, but they were able to hide in the shadows and get out of there. This fight's happening in the middle, trying to pick up a lot of this. Looks like some of it went over to both sides right there. Lunder already level seven. Lucario already level seven in this top path. Level-wise, things are looking amazing for Illusion. It really is. They do have their Venusaur online. That's where they're going to have to leverage a lot of their power here. Help this Buzzwool get back into the action. Because right now, it is truly outpaced by Klaus. And that's one of the ways Lucario can get ahead and bring more value than a Buzzwool. If it's just so much bigger than everything else on the map, it can really carve through the other team. Here we go. The top path, we can see they're crashing onto that goal wall. The bottom path right here, a lot of experience heading on over to our orange team. Pushing forward, trying to pick up something on this Umbreon, but it's difficult to do. Snipeshot not able to pick up that KO. Greninja at 8. Lucario somehow the top path Pokemon at 9. As we see an even break, they want to keep this pressure on. That is a level 5 Buzzwool. If it picked up a KO right here, it would change everything, but it's going to be pretty hard to do against that Greninja. Coming in with the big surf, but it missed this is it right now. This could actually be a huge moment for Suntail if they pick this up. No, Greninja somehow making it out as we head down to the bottom path right here. Lucario not getting punished for pushing super far forward. Hoopa is going to go down. That's another multi KO for the Lucario as they pick up the Reg Ice with the snipe shot. The fact that Rasmog is still standing is impressive in and of itself. Like you said, once they missed that surfing gauge, I thought that was going to be curtains, but whoa, they are still alive. Moving through here, you mentioned the even break. They want to keep the pressure on, but also they want to kind of neuter this Hoopa to keep those hyperspace highways from being as good as they possibly could be. As we know, Hoopa is one of the best macro Pokemon in the game because of how quickly it can make your team rotate. Uh, but that doesn't really matter when absolute beatdown that's happening by purple tons of great pressure they're scoring at the same time screening for each other incredibly well and now it looks like we've got the classic 5v5 going on everybody's lower fighting off a couple unite moves here as orange wants this goal zone to stand we're looking at a little tele telekinesis caught on rasmog but here comes sun putting up putting down blissey taking the rough end of that as they are quickly ko'd now kyushu is so far forward they're trying to make it happen no solar beam comes through with the support but it's not enough as Umbreon is literally just dunking in their face. Kiri again, yet again, putting points in right in front of your noses. Incredible stuff here from uh, Illusion. And one thing to notice, that entire fight, the reason they were able to play so aggressive in that moment and just sit on their tier two is they knew not a single member 
of our orange team here had a Unite move. They were too under leveled to be able to really stop them. A few Unite moves that goes the other way and they throw a ton of experience back, but that was just such an incredible moment to bully the enemy team. They're not gonna be able to make that play as easy anymore as we see three Unite moves now on the side of Suntail. Uh, yeah, really heads up call there, Spraggles. And it's important for those of you at home that are playing in solo queue, playing in your rank layers, to understand what Unite moves are available, what have been expended, and what you can actually do. Nice Grand Engine Unite takes care of the A9. Now they're in deep waters here. They're trying to surf their way back to shore. Moving forward, forces out the big Buzzwell Unite on top of Lunder, but good coverage by Kiri to get that KO back the other way. Now they're sieging the goal zones. A couple Unite moves have been used. We've got the A9 to come through with their Snow Globe. If they want to use it, they're going to put the pressure on. They do use the Snow Globe. Is that enough, though? Tons of damage being rained in. Spragles finally bought a... Um, Purple peeling back, and it looks like the goal zone will stand for now. And honestly, I wish Purple would have mitigated this damage a little bit. I feel like they just gave up two KOs for no real value. They did give up two KOs, but I mean, I'm impressed they didn't give up more. They're fighting so incredibly well in difficult situations. Greninja right here, moving in with the Bliss assistance, trying to make some big KOs happen, and they are a Blissy picking them up. However, as they are continuing this push and you know this is a team that is just playing with an advantage and they are not afraid to push their advantage which they have been doing all game so far fighting on their tier two once again and now finally they're actually really getting punished for it that could have been their biggest mistake is giving up those two ko's that huge level 13 mm -hmm. greninja going down might have been too much i mean it's I like the Erasmog aggression. I think it's going to be one of those double-edged swords for this team moving forward. I mean, they facilitated a big, big-time engage, but they did not need to go that deep into the ocean, right? Surf close to shore to make sure you can hit sand again. Unfortunately, they went a little too far out. They got caught up in the moment. They did get KO'd. Now we've got three minutes left. Tons of experience went into the hands. Now we have a level 13 Alolan Ninetales the other way. And um, Suntails actually has an opportunity to scrap over this right now. Yeah, and we have a, an opportunity here in a minute. And we do have three members here of our purple team, Illusion, heading up the top path to get that Regieleki. It's going to be something annoying to deal with here for Suntail, but they should be able to clear it out before Ray. The question is, are we going to see that same level of aggression on this tier two? Because it looks like they're actually peeling off, taking this opportunity to score in the bot path. Yeah, I mean, split the attention at the very least, get a lot more points in here. They're almost up by 200, but I really do not want purple to get caught out. I mean, orange is big enough now and they have Unite moves. They can fight on their pad and really give you a headache. So make sure that you're playing safe enough. It looks like just by the way the screen shook that that snipe shot did at least hit a wild Pokemon as Razmog, look how aggressive their positioning Spraggles, thoughts? I feel like this Greninja has been so aggressive all game, just playing in the enemy central area and some crazy way. This is actually extremely yeah. aggressive. Moving in for this Unite move, they do pick up the KO on Venusaur. They are unpunished for it. Ninetales in some trouble right here and a lot of trouble. Buzzwool moving in, trying to pick something up as they're now pushing the fight into the end into the central area here of our orange team. I mean, an absolute seamstress is Lunder stitching in those snipe shots. Two big time wow. KOs. They have tons of time to rip. What a play by Illusion. I love this. If you're going to have Razmog playing that aggressive, you better be making plays like that. Absolutely nasty business out here. And you know what it is, Spragos. That's a little too easy, buddy. Wow. I mean, what I, what a play. I just That's so phenomenal uh, how they played that. It was just real. I mean... You, you get to see so many top players when you're watching, you know, the UCS dupe snacks. And that was just such a beautiful fight, such a beautiful trap that they laid for them. And then as soon as they got it, they knew they could turn right around and take Rayquaza immediately. Uh, incredible stuff from Illusion. So good. Oh, that was good. Like I said, I mean... It's it's tough to, like for me mentally as a player. We're in garbage time, so we'll just chat through it here. Um, as a player, for me, I hate because I play support and often tanks. I hate <laughs> for a second. I thought you said you, I play so poor. I was like, come on, buddy, no, you're, I do, you're good. I do also play poorly, but as a support, <laughs> you play tank support, player, support. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you see a player on your team like a Greninja playing that far forward and that aggressive. All I can think of in my mind is we're going to lose this game because I'm not going to be able to save this person. They're going to go absolutely off the rails. 
But Razmog, perfect spacing, jumped on their target, didn't go too deep into the other team. They actually stayed like on a really good periphery. And by the time uh, all of Illusion pulled up, they caught the Nine Tails. Everybody was on the same page, and they executed that hyper aggressive plan perfectly. And that was a lot of fun to watch. That is the fun part of Pokemon Unite when you have a player like Razmog playing that aggressive, but the team being all in on that aggressiveness, you get amazing surprise plays like that. And there's no way that Suntails had any idea they were about to get jumped on. Yeah, wow. I mean, great stuff here as we see the bands. Zorark banned out. Obviously, Illusion did something to them that they had to stop. And Blastoise with the band. No Leafeon coming out in this game. They didn't need it. They decided to bring out the Greninja. And I'm just like, I'm really impressed by it. It's interesting because you saw Illusion play in a way that could have been punished if they weren't so incredibly cracked. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like this is this is not something that uh that I believe that we could like pull off in our solo queue, right? Like there's no shot. Even a trio you'd have a hard time executing that against a team of solo queue players. But when you've got Lunder, Lunder I don't think Lunder missed man like that was it that was insane no we've actually got some snipers now last season a, a few <laughs> people were playing snipe shot and i feel like uh, the only people that really made it look good were lutano maybe there were a few players who were kind of picking it up right there near the end of worlds last year uh but man it's just uh in incredible stuff here to see so many good snipers in the meta right now zoinks buddy what are your thoughts uh yeah helping hand blissey certainly goes burr when you are playing that aggressive <laughs> it's a lot of fun i mean how many times do we see a blissey with like how much you need to have sub 20k recovery when you're on the team that is uh that is a confident squad i will say that was a lot of fun to watch i love the confidence what do we have coming up next so I would like to follow this team if y'all are okay with it because it'll be Illusion versus A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L next, which is like, I think one of the first really, really good matches of our bracket. Um, this will be Illusion versus uh, the team that had the Serena earlier today. I would love um, to see that. That sounds team. fun. Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. It's They're on five minutes on the clock, so they could be into their draft already, but it doesn't look like they have made it quite yet. Uh, um, how would you boys feel about uh, taking this next one, the uh, the Unite mics? Sure, I could try casting. Yeah, cool. Um, so it's going to be, which which uh, perspective are we watching from? Illusion on our purple side? Yes. Okay. Well, I, can, I can do that, yeah. I okay. can really do either, but. And then A, B, C, D on our orange side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sounds good. We'll get that set up here. Man, it's been exciting so far. Is there anything that's been really surprising either of you? I think the thing that's surprised me is some of the Pokemon picks, I feel like people are getting a little, uh, they're flexing a little bit early on in the bracket, which is to be expected, but it is pretty cool to see. Yeah. You take EX licenses out of the out of the metagame, and I genuinely, we, we start to see variety, and it's it's pretty sick. I have, uh, I'm a big fan. I think the bands have been a lot more off the wall than I expected so far. Mm -hmm. I think... I think EU maybe a little bit more on the specific ban strategy, like against their opponents that they know um, a bit heavier than maybe other regions, which is pretty fun. It's a lot less uh, just meta dependent bans, which I'm excited. About. I love seeing this from the chat. It's interesting because Jake hates Greninja. I don't hate Greninja, everybody. <laughs> that is true, actually. It, that is interesting. I don't know why he does. I hate Scissor. Hate Let me be clear. I hate Scissor, and that's kind of <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I don't hate Greninja. Uh, what I do say about Greninja, and this is true, is most Greninja players are, they're playing their own game. They think they're a ninja and they're really not. But when you're seeing a top player on some of these Pokemon, it's unbelievable. But the only thing I hate, I hate almost nothing in this world. It's just Jungle Scissor. Really, that's all I hate. <laughs> Okay, duly note. I'll stop doing it. My bad, man. I, like I didn't know. I didn't mean to sort of subtweet you in this conversation, but stop <laughs> jungling scissor right now. Felt like you exactly wanted to subtweet him in this conversation. <laughs> um, I'll talk about a surprise if I can uh, dabble around the world here, as uh, Ground Zero Gaming had their big announcement with some of the most recognizable names in OC um, not making it to top eight. Wait, they what? Open. They did not make it to top eight. 
Dude, that team looked so stacked. It was the the one that was the most. However, counterpoint. Well, <laughs> there was some of it. There's, yeah, it's a mix. I think Joe has just been taking some time off, right? I feel like they like started playing together like last week when they got signed. So I don't know. Maybe this is just the warm up turn. That's what I'm hoping for. Wow. It's a shame that this is the warm up one because it's one of the biggest ones to start the right. season here. Yeah. Fury on the Ophelia Fury with uh, Mayfu, Caster, Bemco, Buster. Like those are names that you'd recognize from OC last year. Um, they're able to qualify. Uh, through the winners, so good on them as well, um, mm -hmm. winning their first two uh, rounds. So 16 teams, 18 teams signed up over there in, in OC as compared to how many do we have today, Zoinks? 85? 85 played, <laughs> yeah. So there were 92 signups, 85 check-in. <laughs> you're, 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 you're going on this. You're still going on <laughs> I I think as, as somebody that has been a perennial OC supporter, I think it's time to just... Oh, that needed Maybe. to change. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, let's put let's put some let's put some proof in the pudding a little bit. I mean, I've been reading the instructions of this pudding for two years now. <laughs> like, it's yeah. time to actually make the pudding. Fair enough. I'm impressed. Oh, the 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 thing I did not expect would be one of the biggest rivalries of the UCS season was Doob Snacks and OCE. I did not expect it. <laughs> yeah, an entire region, an entire region for, for the smoke <laughs> and buried me. It was insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel like spraggles was involved in that a little bit too uh, <laughs> take it, it was definitely thing. an unsolicited shot by old snacks out there like there was no reason for me to pull up on a magic harp tweet and say what i said <laughs> it really it really was out of nowhere i love i got kello in the chat too and kello's coming nah. for you and honestly she she should i'd be afraid of kello if i were you yeah yeah i i stay afraid um, of kello Bit of a bracket update, Team Convicts. So I think I've been calling them Lay Dalton. I pretty sure changed their name at some point. I think they're not going by Convicts. So Convicts are now in your winner's quarterfinals, which means they'll need to win two games. That's the same spot that Nouns Esports is at. Also, Team Uwu. Team Uwu is like Gatlin Gunner, um, Hirai, uh, a few of those players. Yala Bingo, which I believe is like Six E's and Potato. Um, they're an internal Marv SVM, very, very good team. They're also at that stage in pool one, and then in pool two, let me check. Y'all a bingo. Boys United it Plus. sounds like something that you would say at Drag Queen Bingo. I don't know if you've ever been it to is. a Drag it Queen Bingo, but you would, yeah. if you've ever been to one, it feels like you have to yell out Y'all a bingo. <laughs> a bit of a call and response. Yeah, that's absolutely true. <laughs> Yeah, Ball Toys versus Red Ping. Uh, Yala Bingo is actually a pretty good matchup. Cinco Golemo is uh, like where, where's new team? Oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. pretty fun. We'll see how that shakes out as they're both scrapping out on the winner's side. Uh, I do like internal competing this year. I think that's pretty fun. Mm hmm. Yeah, sticking with it. Going for another year. Defender extraordinaire now. Hey, everybody needs one. What would you, I mean, Doob Snacks, uh, if we were all to play a role in a pro team, and I recognize people are begging us to, if we were all to play a role <laughs> in a pro team, I'm curious what you what you would think you would play and what you would like to play most. Like what you what you would like, I would play this, but if in, you know, perfect world, I'd like this. Uh, I think you can. I think my skill level at both uh, support and defender is about on par. So I'll say I would prefer to play support because I just have more fun on those characters. Um, but I could go either way. We'll say support and support. The answer to both questions. Fair enough, Mister Zoinks. I'm a bit of a pentaflex, so really any role probably fill. Super, Coach maybe first impressive. and foremost. Super impressive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you do wear glasses, so <laughs> coach yeah. up. It's true. Yeah, exactly. The um, yeah, the offers I've been getting have been well, lucrative, but not full of passion. You know what I mean? So That's exactly tough, where so. I am. They're like, uh, we're gonna pay you I all know. this money, and I'm like, yeah, but who wants to win because they just want the glory? <laughs> right, Forget right, right. it. I'll gas the exactly. games. Exactly. So that's been that's been a difficult decision for me. But in all reality, probably um, either top lane or defender are the roles I play the most. Uh, but I think if I'd like to play on a team, it really depends on my teammates. If I like to, if I'm shot calling or wanting to shot call, I like playing defender more. 
Uh, but if I want to just press my buttons good and have a fun game, then probably top lane. So, depends. Are there really smart players on my team? If you guys are on my team, I'll say it that way. Mm, smart. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there are so many exciting roles to play in the game. I think most people, when you're playing this game solo or something like that, I feel like you kind of get stuck in this mode of thinking like, oh, I'm going to play you know, I'm just going to carry or something. But there are so many exciting ways to play. Like playing support for a good team is so fun. It's just such a good yeah. time. Because you you are such a huge playmaker. You know, you see players like uh, Zervis, Ender, stuff like this. I mean, they just make so many things happen, you know? Mm -hmm. So is that is that your answer? You would, you would go support? I think if I if I could do anything, it would be uh, silly jungle. So something like the bird or the bird or the bird, maybe like some of the birds, like Talon, Dodrio. That's quite the riddle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say Talon, Dodrio, Cram. Is that your third option that you're saying? It actually, could be Decidueye or Cram. Really, like any of those birds are super sure. fun. Uh, and then otherwise, I would. I think if you were to slot me into a team right now, I'd probably play top. I'd probably play Buzz or Blastoise top just because they're so broken that it's kind of easy to do whatever you want. I mean, it's really hard to lose with those Pokemon, it feels like. All right, we got a game. Uh, Illusion versus uh, ABCD is finally up. And I said, I think you said you had Illusion on the left-hand side, right? I've got okay. Illusion on our purple side. I've got ABCDDWGHIJKL on our orange <laughs> side. And I'm going to let you two gentlemen take it away. The Unite Mike's cast in this game. Love you both. Love you. All right, we're underway. First and foremost, Zoinks, I know you're a betting person. Who's winning this game? Who's winning um, this series? It's us because we took over the Spraggles channel. It finally we're happened. Here. We we did it. We have conquered the Spraggles YouTube channel. Uh, Unite Mike's full takeover. Yeah, uh, uh, but Doritos if I'm in chat. Doritos in chat. It's a global <laughs> emote. It's the Unite Mike's global emote. We've selected it. Glo uh, Doritos in chat. Okay. If I was to uh, choose a winner uh, to bet on one, man, it's tough. I think before seeing Illusion play in that last game, I would have went ABCD. If they're just a team that I'm really excited about. Oscar in particular is an amazing player. Um, however, after seeing Illusion's performance in that last one, I think I'm going to go with Illusion. Yeah, interesting. We already have Razmog moving into the top path as this Blastoise because we've mm -hmm. got, I believe it's Lunder circling through on the Venusaur. Um, uh, I think it's Klaus, actually. Klaus, yeah, actually? Klaus. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so Klaus, usually the top path demon, uh, switching it up. And I love, love when teams have this level of versatility. It makes them a little less predictable. And mm -hmm. to your point, I think gives them just a fresh look and a different way to play. And it's tough sometimes for teams to adjust, especially early on in the tournament here, as we got a 3v3 up top. So Zoro gonna try and hold it down with Razmog and Klaus as they're putting tons of damage in on Ayame. Oh, Ayame uh, can take the damage certainly, but it still hurts to see that Umbreon moving so slow away from a red buff attacking Pokemon. Uh, extremely slow retreat back to the goal zone, but they are happy and healthy and they were pushing. They try to get some additional stacks in as well. Razmog with a great goal. You're cutting out a little bit, my friend, but you are right. That oh. was a heck of a goal zone defense. This Buzzwool is already level five, and that's exactly the spike that they want to be at. Uh, however, matched by Razmong, who desperately wants to hit Blastoise, because that's when they really get to fight at parity. A lot of folks say that uh, War Turtle slash Blastoise is the way to stymie a Buzzwool, and it seems to be the thing we see most often. We'll see if they're actually correct. Oscatar taking a ton of damage needs to try to get out of dodge. They are slowed by this Eldegoss. They die. They go down to the <laughs> cotton ball. I can't believe I just said die. <laughs> it's okay. You, not on our channel. Get fired. It's all going to get fired. <laughs> it's not on our channel. It's on Spraggles' channel. Spraggles will get fired. Three dozen chat. Here we go. <laughs> Holding down the top goal zone as Cicero and Klaus are moving back. Uh, Kree have been, has been doing a great job on these defenders. And holding down this goal zone by themselves is no easy task in the face of a couple players. So, ABCD has been known to play some pretty wild Pokemon. Oscar obviously had Arena one game. And now we are seeing the emergence of Absol, which has seen a lot of popularity in the APAC region, but I don't think we've seen very much in EU. It's basically Weijan and, um, oh my gosh, and Wrecker, I think, are the only two players really bringing this Pokemon out in Europe. So I'm excited to see it. It is very, very strong in a team that wants to retreat often if they don't have very, very good support. However, Eldegoss healing is prominent, so Absol's going to have a tough time finding and sneaking in these KOs. 
Solar Beam coming through, doesn't hit its mark. Kree is down a, a ton on HP. Bordy moving for, I believe they are store powered Espeon. Did I see that right? As Should now Wei Wan is looking for an engagement here, and that is right on Lunder. Caught in the mean look, forces out their Unite move. They're looking for a follow up. They're chasing Klaus. They've got the speed, and the, fl the flux zone is not a matter, <laughs> but the Solar Beam finds its target on the dark type Pokemon as Ayame is moving back towards the Reg Ice, and this thing is still standing. Ayame pits back forward, tries to eject through, but Klaus finds the mark. Anyways, now Reg Ice is low. We got a Giga Drain, and we got a secure out of lunder on the mew that's a pokemon that they play quite a bit bordy has zero hp gonna pick up double berries and try and do this goal zone stand as another player for abcdefg goes down and uh looking pretty good as illusion despite being down on the scoreboard by just a hair that's super concerning for abcd i mean they did exactly Tended to do. Absol found its way to the back line. Umbreon created space. Espeon near the objective, and not one of those plans were. Right, the Absol got defeated by the Venusaur because Klaus just threw their Unite move at the ground right in front of them and was able to Solar Beam track the Absol. So good play by Klaus. It just makes it really, really tough. If that's a showcase of what's going to happen later in this game, I mean, Illusion's going to walk all over. Them. Yeah, without a doubt, Oscar needs to get online and follow this Absol as they go in. They use their Unite move again. Cesaro yeah. does go down, but that's not exactly a prime target. Waywon peeling back. Waywon actually the comfy in the last game we watched, now picking up the Absol. So you want to talk about a roll swap? That's a heck of a <laughs> one for them right there. The mean look goes down. Razmog is now doing the defense on the Reggie Alecki. As we have Lunder using their Unite move, maybe trying to find a prime target, maybe the Absol, but they can't quite can't do that. Now we have the Espeon Unite Hydro Typhoon back the other way. Double B beams crisscrossing and xing out two players on the other side of the map here ko streak of two for klaus and i'll tell you what illusion looks just like impassioned right now zoinks they're playing incredibly well oh this is such a good composition this is a composition that's kind of dominated the off season if you will like all the time outside of UCS and even within UCS is these double beam compositions are so incredibly strong. And the popularity of Krussel has only made them better. I know Kree wasn't actually in that last team fight, but the ability to have consistent beam damage because Rock Tomb is stopping the retreat of your enemies, very, very powerful. I mean, it's a good composition for a reason. Speedsters and Dive is usually the relative answer to this comp, uh, but so far the Absol hasn't quite found the value. However, are at level 12, so Weijan definitely having uh, a pretty decent game, kind of bringing it back. There, well, you, go. there you go. That's a Unite move to, to end all Unite moves here, getting a couple KOs, uh, and now Oscatar going in using their Unite move as well. However, Klaus does get great cover by the Elder Gods and Kiri, who goes back through using their Unite move to get the shield and keep the pressure on. Another KO streak, a two for Klaus, and I feel like we'll be saying that a lot this year, as now they're looking to siege on this goal zone a little bit. Terrific Rock Tomb spacing by Kree again, as Ayame is trying to take the long way around to get back into the mix. Way one scoring a 50 up top. I don't hate that play. I know that Klaus was able to turn that around in a big way. However, for the side of ABCD, you're running a dive comp, and sometimes you are going to struggle to get scores. It's worth it to go down to get on the scoreboard in that big of a way. So they're 172 to 80. Now there is a chance for the side of Illusion to really shatter the goal zone, and it starts off well with Klaus earning that KO. Yeah, we see some Unite moves coming out. The Espeon Unite to really get the spacing that they need, but another KO Streak of 2 for Klaus. And I mean, KO Streak of 3, we're just stacking bodies at this point. Bordy eats the Electro Ball from Lunder on the chase. Nice X Scissor by Kree again to again get the spacing they need. And they go down, two players down as, um, for Orange. And the Goal Zone Siege continues. If they can get this 40 banger in off of Cesaro, that's going to be a great overdunk for them. And that lead has shriveled the 13 points. Hey, I'm doing a pretty good job of extending how long it took to finally break that goal zone, but in the end, Illusion still able to accomplish it. Uh, Wijon is running that Psycho Cut, so the additional damage for the entire team whenever that Pokemon is marked. They're trying to capitalize on that. You hit a high target, and then Oscar gets involved in the fight as well. So all-in style of strategy, where Espeon is playing more from the back lines. Peel for your supports, for your defender. Well... Espeon support at this time, or Umbreon support, if you really want to call it. So uh, it's going to be a lot of backline support the Espeon compared to the maybe high damage numbers we see from in other relative games. Yeah, that's a great call out. Nice little mean look, again, to just give Orange the time they need. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, able to secure that Reggie Alecki, and it's flying in the face of this squad right now. How are they going to buckle up and turtle up around it? That's the big question for me as we are already hitting the Rayquaza point of this game.
Yeah, Crustle going to try to take some initial space. So does Blastoise. Rasmog caught in the main link, though, is going to force out the Unite move. They don't really have the beams to capital, though, but Klaus is going to eject button, find the Umbreon. Yeah, they put a burger down, one player down for Orange, and now uh, the Absol is just hanging out in the back line. Wei Wan looking for an opportunity to jump on one of these players. Krinsky is solo on HP. They use their amnesia. They get surfed through. Now we have a Buzzle United trying to pick them up, put them down as we're moving back through. Absol backdoor unites on top of the team, but it doesn't matter. They secure that KO. Tons of players leveled up there, and now they need to flip the script on this Ray Quasar. They're down by 133 points, Soinks. And if one team needs it, it's certainly purple. KO streak a three for Lunder. They're saying, what team is this? It's my team, baby. And they <laughs> force the absolute just decimation of A through L. And what a play. Like, what a great follow-up. Despite being down on the scoreboard, never really got frazzled and were able to find their marks over and over and over again. Yeah, Klaus was <laughs> 12 KOs. Lunder came alive in that final fight, certainly. But the Venusaur from Klaus was looking unreal in that game number one this is what happens when you have a scaling composition scale before the early game dive comp right <laughs> this is what happens when right. you have a venusaur at first reggie and otherwise seventy-three thousand damage would have gotten a lot worse i'm sure if those final two minutes actually played out but obviously the quick surrender uh coming from a through l oscar twenty-five thousand damage a bit quieter of a game on buzz felt um like i don't know uh a little tough into the blast within the top path and the absol still getting some value too sorry we probably lost visual for a sec but yeah i'm, I'm taking a look here uh was the was the absol value really what they were looking for i mean it looks like they were scrapping from up close and personal anyways uh mm -hmm. maybe could have used with a little bit more range specifically because they had no good retreat path because of kree with their rock tomb um and of course Klaus could range and change, and Rasmog could space with Surf. So it seemed like a bit of uh, maybe maybe one that put yourself behind on the draft screen to me. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, it did. You were right in-game. It absolutely did. I, Absol maybe the one that was doing quite well. 13 at the final moment of minutes, and it was... It was getting some good KOs. I just think, I do think the answer to double beam is dive comp. Like, I don't think you are going to ever beat them in a range game, uh, especially when you're not running supporter. Um, but, like, you need to have Clefable, I think, comp if you were truly going to try to beat Venusaur and Mew. But just, you're not going to out damage double solar beam. You know what I mean? Like, they are going to win that war of range and attrition. Um, so, I think having a dive comp is a good idea. It's just. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe you got to double into it. Absol and something. Maybe we don't run the buzzwall top, but maybe we find some other option that could be a bit quicker on their feet um, to just kind of work together in tandem. But um, maybe the idea was there. But yeah, that final fight uh, just looked like proof of concept <laughs> for the side of Purple Team's composition. Yeah, no, that's, just good. that's a good read. Maybe um, I noticed that Clefable was not one of the ban options. However, they didn't select it. Yeah, uh, pretty surprising, I think. Which, which maybe would have been kind of the... The, the, the piece that would have turned uh, that game plan around a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a heck of a match. I mean, these are two, like you said, high-octane teams in this region. Uh, both teams that really think they've got a chance to make this top eight and push further past that, as it seems like everybody is on the chase of Nouns Esports at this current point in time, just based on roster yeah. star power, if you will. Um, down, but certainly not out. That was just game one, right? That was just game one. So we are, it's the best of three throughout the whole thing. So I don't know if anybody has just joined the Unite community recently watching on Spraggle stream. Uh, a lot of grassroots tournaments take the format of best of three winner side and best of one loser side. So you basically have two chances in a tournament. When you enter, you get to play on what's called the winner's round bracket. And if you take a loss in a match, you get to play in the loser's round bracket if you take a loss in the losers round bracket you are eliminated from the tournament um so far all these teams we've been watching are on the winner's side and right now yes it is illusion versus abcd that we watched illusion up 1-0 in our best of three if they win this one they will be pushed on to the next match which will be their win and in so this is the if they can take down this team they have to take down one more and then they're qualified for top eight that is so, like it's so close they can smell it right they mm -hmm. are just on the brink but i mean if they win whichever team wins there's there's two good teams giga chad gaming neo century red yeah uh, i mean these are names that we recognize here um and th th these are these games aren't free anymore and i'm not saying any of them were particularly free but now we're like diving into kind of like the uh 
the, the structural stables of the EU region here and the players and that have been around for a couple years now that are really looking to make their mark. So th- there's no unknowns to be dealt with at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Now, any are any teams in the winner's semifinals yet? Let me check pool one. Nobody in pool two is quite yet. Um, now, D-Sports and Squishy Squad should be happening quite soon. Team Uwu versus Plush Keepers is an exciting one. Um, Convicts versus Antramaba Marua. Man, these EU team names, they are getting wild out here. Yeah, uh, and Yola are. Bingo is currently up 1 0 over Cinco Golemo. Cinco Golemo. Take a quick look. Um, Squishy oh. Squad as well, trying to make a little bit of magic happen against Nouns here as they're in the middle of their game. Yeah, uh-huh. they're a team that we haven't um, we haven't seen very much of in the offseason. Mm-hmm. I feel I feel like they kind of came back for UCS, so uh, I am going to enjoy that. But wow, Doom Snacks, we got our game number two between Illusion and um, A B A through L is what I A B C D, uh, and they are coming with some very interesting comps. Klaus going over to the Leafy on this time around. The Absol makes a return. And Oscatar shakes it up and goes to the Blaziken. I had to imagine this was a Buzzwell ban, right? Maybe. It, I don't know. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to think so. Otherwise, we're just dealing with just completely uh, brand new <laughs> off the reservation strategies here. Um, but taking a quick look, um, Lunder being back on the Glaceon is actually a call out from last year when they subbed in for Tally Bobo. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but this is a Pokemon that they are a gold badge on. They are a high, high level player with this. And there's a very large comfort factor here for them with this Pokemon. As we've already got a 3v2, nice Razmog using the eject button to try and dive on Oskathar. They are so low. Can they get the <laughs> KO? They do. Hoopa closing the door on them. Sazero, big shout out, bringing a rings to the fight and they are doing phenomenal. Gonna get a couple quick points in. We're gonna stack a little bit. And this is exactly, exactly where Illusion wanted to start. And this is why this strategy is so popular. The double evolution, you have to take a blue buff on the bottom side and leafy on team to take the red buff experience on the top side of the buff itself that means they are at <laughs> the top path under a minute ready to take an early ko poor torchek didn't even stand a chance absol actually electing for the bottom side doesn't want to scrap with leafion currently in early game who does like <laughs> leafion yeah. is a menace like <laughs> even a crappy player like me can make leafion look like an all-star just because of how strong solar blade is Moving forward here, there's no fear in the game of Illusion. Razmog is, again, playing aggressive, but that's what you want out of this type of player, right? They're not on the Greninja now, back on the Blastoise, but they are getting in the face, using their eject button, setting up knockouts for Klaus so they can be the biggest thing on the map, which they are, oh, at a parity with Absol, and seeing how they can value that. Nice stun, picking up their own berry, and now Oscatar finds himself at half HP. He's just a Gospeler sing, and here comes the Menace Klaus. There's a big solar blade coming through. Credit goes to Razmog, but now we've got the Gossifler desperately just trying to score to get their points in so they can evolve, but not today. Daylight Dollar Short of Zwei Wanjo engages onto Klaus, eats a solar blade, but there's the portal for the clean little reset. Oh, good timing for the Absol flank, but yeah, the damage is too much. I think they jumped in for one attack and got immediately smoked by a solar blade that I don't think was even intended for them. So if that's something like that happens, Absol just not going to have the HP to truly hang around on that side. Oscatar waiting for these 720 birds. You could call it early, but you could also be effective. As Oscatar Asuka- hanging in that top side, she pushes zone. A Pokemon that truly thrives with when it can get a lot of attack weight sacks. So Oscatar trying to get those in early. So far, it has proved extremely difficult for them to do so. It really has, and of course they're playing as the ugliest Pokemon on planet Earth, the Combuskin right now. Quick reset for Razmogs, they're pulling back through, these birds are low, and Ayame just desperately wants one of them to go into the hands of this team, but they're too far away with the experience share, so Oscatar evolves, but Ayame does not, and they get KO'd for that exchange anyways. Razmog level 7 looking to bully because they have a 4 level advantage on the support player for A through L here as Regirock is on the map and gingerly being hit by Kree. Yeah, Illusion basically having every advantage in the world. Kree does grab Krinsky, big engage by Cloud. Unite move from the Emerald two-step, immediately KOs that feat. Wave one joins in the fight. Unite move's gonna take the Regirock. 
One of the best things that Absol is good at with that Unite move is the invulnerability frames, and of course the absurd amount of damage you can throw out in an AoE. That is a great objective secure, and they get away for it, so credit going towards A through L on an amazing... Yeah, they're able to keep this thing. That kind of kept them in the game, right? Give them the, a little bit of a breath of life here. And it's something they so desperately needed because this top path was not going well for them. Nice little Phantom Force back across, but Askatar is not fooled as they're charging the overheat, but it's not enough to cover the whole ring of the portal. Uh, Cicero pulling right back through. Razmog on the backside, they're engaging on Bordy. They want this target, they're going for it. Hydro Typhoon to prevent that Venusaur from going back. Another hoop is there for the reset and now per excuse me and now uh a through l fighting off their pad trying to get into the mix ayame pushing forward with oscar but here comes way wanjo they're all over sazero but it doesn't matter solar blade secures reggie aleki flying towards that goal zone and ayame just gets spaced off by rasmog so all of a sudden purple coming back alive illusion no illusions here they're putting the tricks right in your face and showing you how they're done reggie aleki looking good Good map pressure, and let's see how they adjust. All right, Absol gets one, takes down the Hoopa. I mean, Oscatar set them up for that fight. They go in 1v4, which I can never truly recommend, but the damage was there. They made them a little bit softer and softened them up for Absol to capitalize on. They take one KO, but at this moment, yeah, it is a severe uh, downside for the side of A through L. They are struggling to come back in this game. Experience, though, is getting relatively the same. But you got to remember, these compositions uh, are favored early game for the side of Team Illusion. They have a much stronger early game uh, compared to the side of A through L. A through L's composition, a little more focused towards that late game. Blaziken needs to hit 8 or 9. They have hit it. A Venusaur, finally, really a big boy. Yeah, that's the thing. When you're going for a later scaling team, it's all about bending, not breaking. They've done a pretty good job here. Both their goal zones are standing as soon as I say that. We've got tons of points trying to be put in here as Ayame pulls up. They're level 9. They've got at least... Uh, they had a Unite move at some point. I was going to say they had a good opportunity to use it here, but now all the damage is raining in. There are no Unite moves on the side of A through L besides this slow bro that's nowhere to be found as Krinsky is trying to make a play on this Registeel. Spaced out by free pretty easily. Lunder's pretty low and Askatar Ayame maybe looking to make a pressure change on the other side here. As, uh, was that a, like, I feel like the Blastoise wasn't even moving. What happened there? <laughs> uh, slow bro Unite. Um, okay, Slowbro perfect. locks them in place and, and holds them there it so they could not move. Game. And yeah, and then Absol just swings in and takes another objective. So another Reggie, this Reggie Steel, gonna make a few more of these offensive threats a lot more threatening. Venusaur in particular, a solar beam from a Reggie Steel buff Venu is terrifying to have to deal with. And yet again, the Absol hits level 13. So very good scaling on that Pokemon, already hitting that benchmark. Oscar getting to work on the Reggie Alecki. They need to start working on the scoreboard now, but they've done a pretty good job of defending it and keeping the other side relatively low. That tandem of the Surf Icicle Spear just KOing oh. the poor Cotton Ball. Uh, winners come early and it's time for the plants to freeze. Holy smokes, Absol Unite again tries to find a target and they do. Razmog goes down. We've got a quick reset out of Lunder. If they come back through there, they're in big time hurt, a uh, big time trouble. A through L waiting for it, but not falling for the bait is Lunder on Illusion. Aton rushing down to the boss side again, just to try to defend these goal zones that has been a uh, priority number one for A through L is defending the holding that as a team to sub 100, a good way to start. However, in the meantime, Reggie Alecki has been getting some attention paid towards it. Oscar, the only member relatively in range. Of course, they have great secure uh, on the blade skin. However, they're going to have to contend with two members of Team Illusion if they want to take this. Yeah, Lunder scrapping over these birds, going to charge up all those Icicle Spear charges to throw them right into Reggie Alecki, yeah. but it's taken. I believe that was with the overheat off the Blaziken, able to kick right through that Reggie and send it towards Illusion. Now Lunder's fighting on pad. They're trying to rip this Reggie Alecki down. Tons of pressure, and Lunder goes down. Deep into the white weeds is Oscatar looking for a target here as Leafeon is just peppering in Solar Blade. That goal zone is broken, and Razmog's aggressiveness finally kind of being a detriment as they get KO'd again. Yeah, had they trying to defend that goal zone. It could have been a bigger overdunk. However, Mass went a little bit awry. Whoa. They grab the Hoopa immediately. Love this play. However, Sazeroy does get the Unite move off from the Hoopa. This could be catastrophic, but it starts off with a great KO from A through L. They're going for a Rayquaza rip. It's a 20%. We're going to move through. Everybody's going to be B pressing here. It's going to be ripped in half, and it's taken by Orange. Nice solar beam to secure by Bordy. Wei Wanjo and company are looking to score. And I haven't said this yet today. 
uh, Zoinks, but I think it's Hundo Burger time, my friend, as the first burger gets slammed down. Yeah, Chris get ordered up real quick. Ayame ha does have 50 points, but no longer is you know, they do not have shield. Absol does 49 points, leaping towards the goal zones. Venusaur still holds 50 and a full ray shield, uh, but Absol not going to score theirs. It is now paramount that this Venusaur gets their points in, and with the early call out from Hoopa, they are not going to get it. Boy, it's going to be eliminated here in short. And all of a sudden, now Illusion has a chance in this game. Tier 1 goal zone is still up. They're collapsing on it. There is Krinsky immediately sussed out by Sazero. Tons of pressure on the surface there to put them down. And they've got a Hundo Burger in for themselves. This lead is shrinking quickly. And they need to make sure they don't pick up too much points. If Ray, uh, Razmog oh. can get theirs in, this is exactly where they want to start. Three players down there looking for an opportunity to score. Wei Wanjo crash lands into the ground. Lunder's looking for the coverage. Into the back line is Klaus. They're looking to run the cover for them. They're trying to get their points in. They score 282 to 217. All of a sudden, Illusion's making the magic happen. 30 seconds left, Zoinks. And we have a rings unbound for Sazro. They're scoring up top two. And I think they just gave this one up. Yeah, A through L Yo. calls it. Absol not able to score thanks to Klaus's quick response and Bl and Venusaur being found in that tall grass makes this just impossible. Like, if you think about a Venusaur or Absol get those points in, they're sitting at 317 right now, which still would not have given Illusion that W. Illusion walking away with a 2-0 win with A through L having, woof, a frustrating loss in that game too. I mean, that was like a drug detection dog out of Sazero. Mm -hmm. Just phantom forcing and finding not only the slow bro that was hidden, but of course you mentioned the Venusaur, which was the big, big catch because they were able to knock out that shield, get the knockout itself, and then really make the push. So I want to just tip the cap to Sazero for some, you know, last mm -hmm. minute heroics with those call outs, sussing out where the players for A through L were and allowing the team to take over. And after that, I mean, great work by uh, everyone else for the spacing, the scoring, uh, and really leveraging that big catch of Sazero to identify where those players are to make sure that they win the game. That's a hell of a game, my friend. What a game. I mean, holy, what a finish, right? I uh -huh. was shocked to see that. That was just incredible. <laughs> so good. So, Any so good. Yeah, Sprague, is anything about Team Illusion that you think is just making I mean, they're on quite the tournament run. I it really impressed. I mean, when you're able to defend a sort of a, a crazy moment like that, you, it really just shows what kind of team you are. I was shocked to see the Absol twice, mm -hmm. but it actually yeah. started. I mean, it, it wasn't looking bad at all. It just feels like there are many opportunities where you would hope that you were a different Pokemon. It looked fantastic there in game number two. But yeah, I mean, what a squad to be able to come back from that. I got to call out this comment from the chat. Uh, from Shy Biscus, it's pretty good. Uh, so many letters, but they only take the L. Oof. Oh. <laughs> Oof. Ouch. That one hurts. That it's one a, certainly hurts. It's a good one. It's a good one. That was a that was a fun series. I I was like, oh, here we go, game three. Let's go. Nope. Nope. Nah. <laughs> All right, do you two want to jump into uh, Noun's Esports Game 1, Team Uwu's Game 1, or Convict's Game 1? Convict's is uh, basically Zephyr from last year. I would like, I, I would say whatever you think is going to be the hottest game, let's let's give it a go. Let's try, I think Team Uwu versus Plush Keepers is going to be the best. Okay. So we're going to have Uwu on the purple side and Plush Keepers on the orange side. Okay. And this is game one, so it should be zero zero. Cool. Moment. Plush keepers. It's gonna be too much for the thing, isn't it? It's gonna like bounce over. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh, it barely makes it. It barely makes it onto my screen. It's perfect. Huh? Uh, shout out plush keepers. All right, you two, have fun. All right, love you, Zoinks. Fun stuff. As here we go, Doob Snacks. We are heading into game number one between Uwu and Plush Keepers. What are we seeing here from these comps? Anything surprising? I mean, Lucario maybe the most surprising thing. Yes, like surprising, but not as surprising as it once was. You know, we're seeing this more and more now as, you know, per, perhaps Buzzwool and Blastoise banned in this one. Um, and now, okay, this, so what are we taking into the top path? 
um, excuse me, not Blastoise, but Buzzwill certainly was, as Snow is putting in the, this work in Lucario. We saw Klaus do great work with it earlier, and this could be another opportunity as Harai uses their eject button. And uh, the biggest surprise to me is they're playing a healing Pokemon, Spraggles. We've seen Harai play Sableye over and over and over again when they're back on Zephyr. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting to see. But, I mean, Clefable is just so powerful right now mm -hmm. that I think a lot of teams feel like, look, if we're able to pick it up, we're definitely bringing it into this match. Another thing that's been powerful today that I love is the Hyper Voice Sylveon. I felt like once this Pokemon got its recent buffs, we were going to see a lot more Sylveon. And it's actually really working out for a ton of these competitive teams. Evolves early, becomes a menace just at its first Evo on level 4. You can just see the amount of damage it is able to to output is really intense. Obviously, they're having a tough go in that bottom path. I mean, you're trying to out-secure an Inteleon, which is pretty tough to do. Yeah, and now that Krustle's online, like that's just another layer of, quite frankly, just annoying static that is provided by that Pokemon. As they're, you know, shelled out by Rock Tomb, they're either gonna be trapped or cut off from their secure. And honestly, that's a great tool against this Screamion as well. Not only to trap it once it's uh, once it's uh, Hyper Voice is down and it's on cooldown, but also to space it from being able to engage. Look at this Blastoise, man. Blastoise becoming an absolute force in competitive. It's always been something huge, but Blastoise is just really doing it right now. The mean look, obviously, breaking the Snow Cloak, but they weren't able to grab that Glaceon right there. That could have been a nice KO if they could grab it in that moment. We see the Rock Tomb coming out. Not able to do too much, but they are able to zone it out a little bit. Nice mean look right here. They are going to be stuck in that Hyper Voice, and this is a combo we're seeing so much by so many of these teams where they are just able to rain down that special special attack damage once they are stuck in that mean look. There's nowhere that they can go. Hyper Voice basically hits the entire area. No, exactly right. However, that screening by the Crustle allowed the Inteleon, Alex Kidd, I believe is who's playing that, to come online. And those snipe shots, if they are any, or excuse me, uh, BNJ was there, Alex Kidd was the one that facilitated that. But if these snipe shots are anywhere near some of the snipe shots we've seen so far today, like Inteleon is a new Pokemon. Yeah, Inteleon, Liquidation used to be the call, especially because it could not miss and was way overpowered. But now they have gotten rid of that, and now it's just the rest of its kit that is way overpowered. And if you hit some of these snipe shots, it really changes everything about some of these fights right here. I'm interested to see what this Lucario is going to be up to in this top path. It looks like it's losing a little bit to the Blastoise in the top path, which I guess mm -hmm. is surprising. You probably are playing Lucario because early you're able to beat your top path opponent, but we're not seeing that here in game number one. 12 to 42, Reggie Rocks on the board. Glaceon is starting out right here, just charging up those spears, and here comes the fight. Yeah, they're going for an engagement here, laying in a tons of damage. Sox goes down instantly. Regirox at 50% on the backside is Mew using their Unite move. They're caught in next scissor immediately. Harai is low, but there's the Screamy on Gale and Gunner coming through, getting two KOs back the other way. They're looking for BNJ target. They're able to dodge a snipe shot, but not before they're taken out by the Glaceon. Now this Regirox is still up. Nyat's being chased. BNJ flipping the script. Jay Paul ripping this Regirock. They've got the Icicle Spears. They can make it happen. Are they going to pepper into Regirock as it tries to reset? They're trying to mitigate this reset of it, but now Regirock is still low. Snipeshot lined up, and it's too early. Still clutched out by Jay Paul. Now they can flip the script. Icicle Spears reined in on socks, but they catch the reset from the Hoopa, and this thing's settling out, at least for the moment. Scary moment right there, as you saw that snipe shot just being charged for an eternity, and they recognize, well, I really want to try to get this Reggie right here, but they knew it wasn't enough. Glaceon able to pick up the secure, and you can now see the level lead swinging really nicely in the direction of Plush Keepers. They've got those level 10s online. They've got that level 9 Blastoise now with the big United move and they don't have as much on the side of oo woo to really uh to really fight back against these unites yeah they're having a tough time it's, it's a good combination of ranging and changing secure and burn on uh the side of plush keepers and if they can get that 40 and that would have been clutch socks there to just cut that off just in time nyat's caught in a rock tomb can't rejoin the team there's the Umbreon unite they are prancing in the moonlight indeed is now ripping through the icicle spear socks peeling back alex kid traps the retreat so socks is getting so much damage rained in on them alex get able to get the ko and get out of dodge before they fall victim to that Quick points going in. Unfortunately, Harai rolls the block and just uses it to get back to their team.
Yeah, look at these. Oh, nice big Sylveon Ooh. moment as they're continuing this push right here. And here comes Mew with the Unite move. Hoopa in a lot of trouble. And that Ooh. is a double KO. This push continuing, running onto this tier one goal zone. The hyper voice is out. Mew is here. The snipe shot lands, but so does the electro ball. Mew in so much trouble with the eject button barely getting out. Inteleon Unite moving to try to push back. And Glaceon is here to actually stem the tide. 30 points go in, but they are able to push them back to their tier one this fight is somehow continuing these teams are relentless they want that action they're going for it Alex kid tries to get their points and they have 12 they can't quite get it in now nerzox is trying to get their points in something goes in can they get the overdone finally 37 points that goal zone is gone bnj is just getting a round of applause from the rest of the plush keepers because they were tired of that bot path scrap we talked about this being a close match and look at this they've had tier ones up on both sides almost the entire time finally that bottom goal zone going down right here and it looks like the points are starting to shift towards the plush keepers right now snow up in that top path actually hitting a little bit of a unite move using an eject button looking for that hoopa right there nothing happening hoopa using their unite right now they're saying look it's 330 it's either use it or lose it let's bring a bit of the team up right here and see if we can do some damage onto this top goal zone put some more points in extend that lead we've got a big 40 in the pockets of glaceon right here that's a nice big overcap bringing him 42 to 232 almost 200 points separating these teams which means our purple team needs to make a massive play at rayquaza yeah, and you said use it or lose it. They certainly did use it and got tons and tons of value. Spraggles they were able to crash the goal zone, get a couple knockouts, huge overdunk, check it out on Spotify, and, and then taking the Reggie Alecki as well. So this is exactly how Plush Keepers could have drawn up a perfect Hoopa Unite, much less one that they just used so they didn't lose it as well. So great shout by Plush Keepers. They are in the driver's seat. Here we go, 2.45 on the clock as we are getting ready for this fight right here. 40 seconds left. We have our Inteleon peeling back. Both teams now in that weird moment where there isn't a ton to do. You really just don't want to make a huge mistake right now. We can see them pushing forward onto this tier one right. Yeah, tier one right here, excuse me. Looking for some points early. If they're able to score this early, they actually get themselves a lot closer. Obviously, they would want to wait for the double points, but they're so far behind that they need to take these moments. Lucario in a lot of trouble right here. The close combat coming in. Crustal Unite move looking for a KO, but it's Umbreon that goes down. Yeah, we're going to be down a couple Unite moves going into this Ray that's just in five seconds. Nice Rock Tomb Trap, so Gunner can't make it out and get damage on a target that they want. Icicle Spears are raiding in. Are we going for a rip here? That's a Unite move by Jaypaw. They're going straight for this Rayquaza. They're ripping this thing. The Mew uses their Unite move. They're looking for an opportunity to collapse on somebody. Galen Gunner flanking, trying to hit a Hyper Voice, maybe on BNJ. BNJ lines up a Snipe Shot, gets a KO on a one-pot shot here. We got another Unite. Umbreon Unite is out. Rayquaza is so low. Solar Beam comes through. It's a bit too early, and I think uh, Plush Keepers just clutched that out off the back of a snipe shot four players down for uwu make it five ten jack queen king that's a what sprinkles that's an ace and now we're serving up burgers beautiful stuff right here the points are raining in huge over cap in the bottom path this match is so so over 114 628 what a fight you know as soon as they pushed out the lucario as soon as they pushed out the clefable and then they had that umbreon ko they got extremely aggressive and it looked pretty dicey there for a moment but they were really in control of that fight the entire time zoinks putting us into double time right now eight times speed as we are finishing out this match i mean there's really nothing that can be done in this moment great fight there from our orange team, the Plush Keepers. I'm very impressed by their play this game, Spraggles. I mean, there are no slouches on the other side of the map, but they were truly in control from start to finish. Uh, plush Keepers, uh, you know, most notably to those of you that follow the competitive Unite scene, kind of uh, quarterbacked and put together, I believe, by Pump um, out of France. So finding all of these wonderful players. I mean, Volto, we saw them on stage uh, at EUIC last year, had a great, great set of games as well. So, I mean, I, I like this Plush Keepers team. That was very exciting and definitely um, 
outkicked the coverage of my expectations. Yeah, we see the Buzzwool and Leafeon bans. It really is, are you banning the jungle? Are you banning these tanks or supports? I mean, uh, excuse me, the top path, or are you banning these like tank supports? Leafeon, Buzzwool, these are some of the biggest bans in this tournament for sure. These Pokemon are just so incredibly powerful. Nice stuff from the Plush Keepers. Again, if you're uh, watching this and you're confused, sometimes the teams will flip score-wise just because uh, what we're spectating isn't necessarily the perspective that the game says they're on. So they could be technically the orange team, but we're watching them from the purple perspective. But you did see Plush Keepers take that game. Yeah, in a very commanding fashion again. Now, uh, will we see the bands be the same? I think so. I think so. If I'm in Team Uwu, though, I need to go back to the drawing board. Uh, that was maybe one of the first games I have seen uh, that lack of value out of a Clefable. I mean, it felt like they were nowhere near any of the action at any point in time. Uh, did you see something different, Spraggles? No, I think you're exactly right. Um, that was an itch. You know, it's weird. It felt like Uwu really had some strong moments in there, but Plush Keeper is able to take advantage of just some of these big mistakes. You know, when you're caught late there there's this weird moment and it's not really at two minutes 30 seconds but boy is it's crazy how 10 15 seconds changes everything that catch there at the end was just such a a beautiful play by plush keepers and i love that they just kept their cool and were able to just jump on this fight really impressive stuff Impressive, impressive indeed. I think we've got the, the next game queued up between Team Uwu and the Plush Keepers. And uh, you and Zonks are going to take this one for a spin, my friend. Love it. Good hanging with you, buddy. Dupe Snacks will be back in a moment. Zonks, how are you? I'm doing good. That was a, that was a fun matchup. I am... I, I'm surprised for, for a few reasons. Plush Keepers looking a lot stronger than I uh, than I had originally anticipated headed into this tournament. Um, and Team Uwu was struggling a little bit more than I than I thought they would. However, Sylveon still looked uh, unbelievably good. So at least there is good parts to highlight about both squads, even though obviously one's taken a loss, one's taken a win. But uh, I saw you asking me, Spragles, and I'm assuming your chat's been too, on a bit of a nouns update. Uh, so nouns esports have been doing very solid. I don't think they've dropped a game yet in their qualification bracket. They're playing against Squishy Squad right now in the winner's quarterfinals. Um, and then they will be, if they can win that one, they'll move on to the winner's semifinals where they will uh, play against the winner of this match. Oh, wow. Um, the one that we're spectating right now. And then whoever wins that match will be qualified for play-in. Wow, this is huge. So we're definitely going to be seeing Nouns next. Um, For sure. And yeah. that's going to be a really exciting game. They've obviously <laughs> been playing some lights out Pokemon Unite. I watched them in a tournament recently, and they looked absolutely insane. Uh, it looks like we got this game ready to go here, Zoink. So Good. it should be pretty exciting to see. We've got ooh, 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 ooh your purple team. <laughs> Plush Keepers, your orange team right here. Lucario's back. Glaceon's back. Sylveon's back. Leafeon is here, too. Leafeon just, mm -hmm. I swear, the shocker for me of this season is just how <laughs> insane Leafeon is. Oh, it's so good. I think you and Dude Snacks were casting a game earlier, and I think you just described it best. The the central area clear into how quickly you can get to top path, because you don't need both buffs to get five or to get four to get your solar blade. Like it is so unbelievably paced that you can just dominate any lane you want to, wherever you flank. And there's that advantage is so hard to give up Leafy on. The only Pokemon that can do that. I can't think of anyone else with a faster clear, really. Take a look at this Leafeon right here. Their choice to do kind of the weak clear so they can get it enough experience right here because if they are able to do that, it's going to get its four incredibly fast. Running to the other side here, picking this up with the experience share. There's the four so early on the Leafeon. It scores. Oh. It can either secure farm or run back to deal with the Lucario. Of course, it's going to secure, pick up another stack, and it's almost level five already. The clear so fast, and it's such a danger to the enemy team, but the Eldegoss, one of those Pokemon that you just can't get away from in path glaceon already here in the top path clefable in trouble and they turn around this moment that felt like it was great for the side of our purple team and now it's becoming a little bit horrible as glaceon's in so much trouble mew looking for a possible solar beam right here let's see if they can line it up no they just don't have enough time 
No, waiting for those birds. Instead, the secure still, though, going a lot in favor of the plush keepers as we see Yappa at level six. Let's take a look at the bottom side now as Sox is trying to go up against Alex Kidd. Defender Krussel versus Defender Blastoise. Um, interesting to see Blastoise played as kind of true tank in this composition. I think you can play Blastoise just about anywhere. It's just so unbelievably mm -hmm. good. It's a reverse Charizard, as I like to say, that you can't right. play anywhere because it just doesn't work inside this game. Blastoise works just about anywhere. You could literally play it. Uh, you could play it in any lane. You could go top, bottom, or jungle, and you'd have to go, yeah, yeah that's Blastoise. You could really do whatever you want. Now, this is the slowest lane to put it in. It is going to take quite a while before it be a threat. However, the early game for Blastoise, I feel, has been um, greatly under misunderstood. It is extremely strong, despite not having th that final evolution. Those boosted autos and hydro pump really slow down your enemies incredibly well. Yeah, water gun early, skull bash even for a stun, which yeah, is kind of crazy. I mean, repositioning and a stun, your boosteds are incredible. It's one of those Pokemon that doesn't need any levels to actually already be a secure threat and to put your opponents in a bad position. So yeah, wherever it is, it is getting some great value as we already see Inteleon online here. We've got the level seven on the Leafeon. If that Leafeon can hit eight, before one of these big fights, that'll be huge for that Unite move. It probably will because that's what Leafeon does as we see mm -hmm. all the beams flying out, the snipe shots and the solar beams, everyone looking for a little bit of that farm. Inteleon almost eight right here, which is pretty huge. And we have War Turtle online now. EV's trading KOs, Leafeon earns one. Uh, the Another team fight really starts popping off at the bottom side. Gallon Gunner gets some early damage to Kid, but the healing from Eldegoth so far been very, very impressive from Nairz. And here we go, getting ready for this Reggie steal. And I have to mention, Zoinx, so I'm not sure what's going on with your mic, but it's cutting in and out. And I know the chat's excited that they can hear less of you, but I want to hear more as this Inteleon yeah, jumps okay. right in. Huge solar beams. We got the double KO going down in this bottom path. Mew takes one, Leafeon takes the other. Reggie steal getting chipped up right now. It is at half. We see the War Turtle looking. We see the Glaceon looking. It's going to be really hard to secure this. And they don't as that solar beam comes in. Beautiful fight here from the side of Oo Woo as they are taking taking this bottom objective. Nice stuff. And Hot getting some early solar beam damage. And yeah, let me know if my audio issues continue. I'll try to see if I can fix it up while I'm spectating, but I don't know. Might be tough. Might be an after this game kind of solution. Yeah, it's not it's not terrible. Just every once in a while you're cutting out uh mid-sentence, but you know, it'll be something that I'm sure we'll either figure out or not as the day goes on. Getting ready for another fight. Lucario jumping jumping in right here. The rock tomb actually trying to stop it, but it does not stop that KO. Able to avoid that solar beam as it's using its power up punch just to kind of dance around and try to get out of this engagement right here it does it's so nice seeing lucario in some ways but it's almost like seeing that ex that you forgot you had a really bad relationship with and now you're just like uh -huh. oh yeah there they are and then you're like oh wait actually it's it's uh -huh. terrible that they're around yeah there they are <laughs> you gotta say it much menacingly on the second time <laughs> Snow getting some uh, great value out of this Leafeon. It struggled a little bit early, uh, to our surprise, I think. It got some good scores, but then the Lucario shutdown was pretty immediate. However, now that we've got some chaos the other way, it feels like we are back to parity, or at least what we can call it, in this mid part of the game. Reggie and Lucky going to be demolished uh, quickly if they can. However, Glaceon gets involved, but that final KO going over to Enhyat's Mew. Uh, I want to know what you think about nice big uh, Unite move right there. Almost getting in a position to pick up that uh, Inteleon. Not quite, though. I want to know what you think about Mew. Because I've actually... I yeah. know that it, it got buffed, and then it got nerfed. But it feels almost like a bit of a wash. I know Solar Beam is worse. But it feels like Mew is still insanely good. But just maybe people are kind of off that right now. Uh, I, I like Inteleon, Glaceon, and Venusaur more. <laughs> than I do, and I feel like those are the options that it contends with quite a bit. So I, I understand why it's fallen off a little bit. Its Unite move, though, is extremely strong. It's a very good secure Pokemon. So if you're missing that, it's very powerful. Uh, can't get body blocked, things like that. Electro Ball, very surprising. So it's got it's got uh, certain value. However, this team's playing at its central area. 
So obviously it's pretty strong. Self-destruct from here I gonna take out the Lucario with it, but the Registeel buff is gonna go to plush keepers as Yappa is gonna take it with their Glaceon. Very nice stuff. And I, I totally uh, agree with you. I'm just, it's one of those things, you know how it just feels like as a community, we bounce off of something, even though it yes, didn't absolutely. really get hurt yeah. that much. You're just kind of like, yeah, I guess it's not it anymore. But to be fair, when you're playing at this high of a level, Zoinks, those small margins can mean the entire game. And it's the reason mm -hmm. you don't see Lucario as much anymore and you would see uh, another pick. And it's the reason that you can't really play Machamp anymore. It's like, is Machamp that bad? Well, maybe Machamp's not a great example. But you get what I'm saying. Is it that much? <laughs> worse could could you really not win a game with it but the question is is that slight advantage that you get out of a buzzwool or a blastoise or whatever else you'd be seeing just so much better you know you would see overlord on something like aegislash and it's still overlord but you have to go yeah aegislash is a little lacking right now so i do mm. understand dropping you know mew a little bit but it does feel like, I don't know, maybe a little premature as we get a nice big Unite move into a KO down here. Leafy on one of those Pokemon that can just take a, a Unite move like that and have it right back ready for Ray. Yeah, <laughs> you can use it basically whenever you want. Problem is, though, for Iwu there, not a huge overdunk on the bottom side. I, I don't think they have had a uh, great score line there. However, the top side potential, leaving it at 31, is going to prime it for some bigger overdunks uh, a little bit later if they can find it. Regieleki not going to make its way to that tier 2. Lucario not really having the, uh, I don't know, pushing power that Volto maybe would like. But with the final stretch around the corner, Team Uwu is actually going to have the lead. However, this is a tough composition to make your way into from plush keep. Inteleon and Glaceon is so much poke damage up front. Hira is going to be working overtime to try to outheal that far range damage. And we're going to see what they want to do here on our orange side. Obviously, plush keepers are going to need to look for a possible score or a win of a fight. Easy. Nice big snipe shot. They hit a few of those and things change very, very quickly. Lucario waiting in this top bush. They've got them kind of funneled into this small area right here as we see the fight starting. Big Unite move from the Blastoise pushing them back, but they're not able to really do anything about it. The Solar Beam lands. Here comes the Clefable healing, and Lucario is just getting pushed out. Everyone's sort of dancing through this fight. We see Intellion was in a lot of trouble right there, thanks to Leafeon, but no one is going down, which is actually great for our purple team, oh, as here huge. goes the Blastoise. Sylveon ripping them up. Rayquaza is now started. Lucario at the top of the pit. We see Glaceon throwing in the spears. Crustal uniting to make sure that nothing happens because of that. The snipe shot hits Mew, but Mew is doing fine because of that beautiful Mew moonlight. Here comes Lucario looking for a KO, not able to pick it up. Sylveon dances up into the air to make sure that they do not go down. No one yet down from our purple team dancing perfectly as a squad to make sure that the moonlight keeps them alive as two, now three members down here. Mew picking up a triple as Inteleon is getting pushed out. They are ahead on the scoreboard, so they're going to need to make a decision. What do they want to do in this moment as they are hitting Rayquaza? The snipe shot still landing. Any moment right here, this could get stolen. It's getting incredibly low. Another snipe shot and here comes the final moments they secure with the leafy on oh my word i mean they were up that entire matchup the team fight was going well the entire time for team uwu and i was still holding my breath as those final seconds happened it felt like things could get so catastrophic so quickly but great play from the kind of supporting staff of this team to be blocking those snipe shots obviously the one downside of snipe shot is that it is rather predictable with that red line of sight uh, we saw the crustle and the clefable getting in front of those consistently to block those for their damage care so even if our tanks and defenders and supports and the like of uh, do go down, at least the Pokemon that are going to be responsible for securing that final objective are still around. You know, one moment I love there, Zoinks, was uh, when we saw Lucario. And it went for that jump in right there. And it was really close on picking up that Mew KO. Uh, mm. Obviously, they, they, they had a lot of moments where they were close on picking up KOs. Uh, and the Clefable was keeping them all healthy. But Mew having the, you know, the awareness to unite right then on a sliver and make sure that they survive that. It felt like every single member of Uwu was just living on an like one HP and a dream for sure. Mm. Yeah. 
it's really good. I mean, into double poke compositions like Glaceon and Teleon, this is somehow where Clefable is best. That's the t that's the thing I don't like about Clefable Spraggles. Thank you for asking, by the way. The thing what don't I you don't like, like about, about Clefable? Clefable is that it is the best support into dive comp and the best support into poke comp. I, I think <laughs> that is a design flaw when it shuts down assassins with gravity and follow me extremely well, but it also has the healing numbers to counter out like damage, you know, just basic chip damage like Glaceon and even Inteleon can kind of provide over time. When you have a Pokemon that is the best in class at both of those things, I think that's a major issue. And that's like why I have Clefable on my please nerf list at the top. This is uh, very exciting, Zoinks, because we're heading into a game number three here. These two teams are awesome. And yeah. it's going to be. How's my mic sounded, by the way? Did I? It way did better, it fix actually. This? I okay, think you good, fixed good, something. Good. Yeah. All right. Good to hear. That's, uh, that, that's really great. Although the chat's like, oh, no, we can hear him more, which I kind of hate <laughs> yeah. that they're like that. But, you know, the chat. It's, you know, they, uh, they, just, they just want me to pay up. I get it. They're I very get protective it. <laughs> of me. They love you. But then at the same time, they're like, well, you know, if Jake has a problem with Zoinks, we have a problem with Zoinks, which I, <laughs> yeah. I just I don't like that mentality at all. I got to be honest. Yeah, the, and the I know you didn't ask uh, Zoinks, but the thing I don't like about Clefable is that uh, when you're trying to make content, with a uh, new Pokemon, and the enemy team has a like, Clefable every game. It sure is hard to do. It sure is, yeah. They need to they need to give that Pokemon some kind of detrimental passive. Let Clefable just always be visible on the map, on the mini-map, no matter where it is. Uh, and then if you're making content, you just go to wherever it's not. Can I there tell you, go. I was on the public test server, which is already my, the worst day of the year for me. <laughs> yeah, I was on the public yeah. test server, and I ran into, like, a mean look Umbreon and Clefable, and I was like, what is this? Are we are we <laughs> serious right now? Well, are we? How, how intense are we trying to get on the public test server? Can you please play something fun? Blaze! What are we public testing? What are we point? public testing? This, this has been tested. This has been tried and true. Uh, Doof Snacks, you back? I am back. All right, good stuff. Yeah, we're going to hand you off to a game number three between Team Uwu and Plush Keepers. Um, I don't know if you were there for this, but uh, reminder, whoever wins this game will be playing against the winner of Nouns Esports and Squishy Squad for the win in it. So this is the uh, the penultimate, I guess, of the winner's side bracket. Oh, you said the win and in. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. It's just when you said it fast, it was like the winning in. And I'm like, there's no way that's a word. But now I understand what we're <laughs> Michael saying. Michael Finnegan with his win again. Michael yeah, Finnegan with his win again. Is this something that's real? Is this something that's real? <laughs> it's the whiskers on his chin again. You know, the campfire song. I am <laughs> losing my soul right now. What are we doing? I can't believe you fixed your mic for this. <laughs> yeah, this is what. What are we getting griefed with? Michael yeah, Finnegan with the win again. It's a, it's a delightful children's song. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Um, teams that have made it to their win and in <laughs> the round right before they have qualified for plans. Yala Bingo. Uh, so again, 60s, Potato, Marv, that crew. Um, and then in the pool two, I don't know if anybody else has achieved that spot yet. Yeah, oh, yeah, you were Ball telling Boy me United a little bit. Playing uh, in their match for that. Zoinks, you were talking to me a little bit about these pools earlier in the bracket, and this is not something sure. we've had before. Um, you know, not to sound like messed out here, but what's the dealio? I don't understand. <laughs> Sure. So instead of running just a giant double elimination bracket, which these uh, tournaments have done in the past, instead to make it run a little bit quicker, they are run into pools. And honestly, running quicker doesn't really change that. It makes it just run. Um, if one pool is really slow, it doesn't slow down the other. So in a double elimination bracket, okay. you get two chances, right? When you're on the winner side, you play. And then when you're on the loser side, you lose and you go down to the loser side of the bracket. Normally, in that case, if you are on the winner side on one side of the bracket and you lose, you play on the opposite side of the bracket in the loser's bracket. So you're playing against people from the other side of the bracket. Sure. The problem is, if that side of the bracket is running a lot slower than your side, sometimes you're in a situation where you're waiting an hour or maybe more, a couple hours for your matchup. Doing this pools, doing this pool setup will keep it a little bit... Um, a little bit quicker and you won't have a factor of top teams um any matches that would have been good matches are not being lost with this format right okay. uh basically it, it's just it's mostly a decision done for time in my opinion okay yeah i just uh obviously uh i don't know 
why something like that would be done. That's a great <laughs> explanation. That, that makes a ton of sense to me now. Thank you. Yep. Glad well, I got my whole, mic fixed. It's the whole Finnegan Winnegan situation, Spraggles. I've heard so. of this. I think so. This is the, the classic when we're hanging around a campfire. Okay. All right. Correct. I, it's the that song is... goes There once was a man named Michael Finnegan, handsome whiskers on his chin again. Wind blew him off and they grew in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan. Begin again. We all and know the song. Again. And then you do We it all again. know the song. We sing it all the time. Why are you explaining yeah, something we all know? The song is my question. <laughs> so weird. Everyone in the oh chat's like, guys, we know the song. Please. <laughs> it's like My someone gosh. explaining the ABCs to you or the ABCDEFJHIJKLs. Team. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I wonder how they're doing in loses, by the way. Uh, Ball Toy, by the way, I mentioned is currently playing in their uh, in their qualification match. However, they're down 0 1 to Copy Babas, which is a good team. That is not Dodo, Feybao, Young Leon, Ooh, Nils. That's a great oh, team. So. Yeah, that is a. It's kind of what are they old guys? Were they going by or uh, Giga Chad no, retirement like Giga home? Giga Chad retirement home. Yeah, yeah. yeah Giga Chad right. retirement home. That is very. Yeah. Nice. That was a great. So name. that is happening right now, but it's not on my spectate quite yet. Can so. I tell you? Uh, looking at this, I'm a little bummed that we don't have more Pokemon puns in any of these names. I'm Wait not for si NA. We got a couple. Uh, I mean, flaming, flaming hot Dodrios is one of my favorite. Flaming hot Dodrios is so good. I wish it's, that they had an offshoot that was Cool Ranch Dodrios, but <laughs> cool, fair enough. Yeah, they need an academy Let, team. Dodri Stat. <laughs> okay, what about uh, Dodrios 3D? How's that for a callback? What is it? Huh? Spraggles, the the puff. You remember is this the, is Michael Finnegan moment? Oh, guys, roast, no, I, roast I, this guy. I do <laughs> know what you're talking about. The classic campfire snack, D Doritos 3D. I actually do know what you're talking about. Yes. Uh, I'll never get a W. <laughs> I, I I'm I'm sorry that Doritos 3D isn't obscure as a song you invented as a child. <laughs> okay, but if I did invent it as a child, it's brilliant. I was a savant at that age then, if I came up with that. Okay? Or you were just an avid Dr. Seuss reader. That's true. And we're getting ready for our next game here as we're heading to a game three. Uh, nouns versus Squishy Squad. I You have to assume Nouns is going to be cruising through this bracket, as we talked about earlier, being the super team. If they run into, if they do beat Squishy and run into either Uwu or Plush Keepers, this should be quite a game. <sighs> Yeah, I can't wait. I guess we're going to decide which team it is now as we head into a final one. Do some next Spraggles. Get after it. Here we well, go. So real quick, real quick now, Squishy Squad might be in game three. Really? Yeah, I mean, 44 minutes. And when he just queued up this game, we had a Desu was available and getting ready to play. Wow. Okay. Well, we might even be popping into that depending on how fast this finishes right here. Uh, Michael finishes again. Here we go. Uh, purple team, orange team, I uwu, plush keepers. It's just a classic song we all say around the campfire as we're heading down to the bottom path. We've got our Leafeon up here in the top path. We're seeing a Buzzwool. I'm wondering what was banned out right here. I'm guessing Blastoise and what? Maybe Blastoise and Blastoise? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, maybe Clefable, like right? That, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be. Volto has been doing it. Uh, again, somebody that was on the EUI stage uh, last year as a, as a sub of uh, Volto stepping up. And they had actually a really good on-stage presence despite kind of being a last-second ad. Um, and I'm glad to see them committing to a team and trying to, to uh, earn their spot again here because they had some very flashy moments. And playing Buzzwall, they have the opportunity for some more. Really nice stuff there. I mean, Hoopa just able to distract too. We've got the Danger Noodle here, Dragonair in the top path. This is a Pokemon that's been seeing so much more play in ACL than we have been seeing it in other places. However, it does feel like EU is picking it up a little bit. I've seen Nouns pick it up, and now we're seeing it up here in our top path. The Hyper Beaming Dragonite seems to be a bit of a thing, as Guardi's actually putting some damage down. I feel like I haven't seen much Guardi, even though it got buffed, uh, Doob Snacks, and I feel like it's actually doing really well. Guardy is nasty and something I expect to be picked up a lot in NA. It's just a quality, quality pick. j getting absolutely chumped, chunked. Nice follow-up engage by Snow to get that knockout. That's a key one. Gives them the double buffs as well. So now Snow's looking to be a menace. Volto's on the other side, but those solar blades deal real damage at no matter what level you're at. 
Down in this bottom path, we're seeing uh, the Scald bro in this bottom path. It's interesting seeing Scald when there isn't a ton of attack damage that you really want to, you know, negate on the other side. Now, that's not the only mm. thing Scald does. It's also some nice DPS. It has some decent secure. But I feel like every time you're seeing Slow bro, you're seeing Surf competitively. Yeah, I think uh, Scald is kind of griefed, to your point. Um, I just don't think it's as good as uh, Surf in almost any scenario here. Harai is just trying to get their stacks in, but they get beat down for that effort, and I don't even think they got their one point in, Spraggles. Sock's going to hold down the bottom, as really we're looking for an opportunity, uh, Orange is, to rally back here, because I kind of think they've been stymied left, right, and center. Yeah, they're, they're running into some problems. The only thing that looks really great for them is this Dragonite is about to come online. Buzzwell also pretty strong, as we have a little bit of a fight ready to break out in this top path. Here comes the mean look, right into the Psyshock, into the Solar Blade. Huge damage comes out. Buzzwell goes down. Dragonair is here a little late, and still not evolved as once again, look at this combo. Mean look, Psy Shock, Solar Blade, gone. Well, as we know, uh, worms on pavement don't fare too well in the sun, and that was proven yet again. That Solar Blade looked dangerous. And of course, Harai steps up, grabs a berry. Now they're working on the backside, and they're just causing so much static, bringing so much attention to themselves, allowing Gardevoir to be hit, allowing this Leafeon to get more experience. And now they're the biggest things moving on the map. Flush Keeper's actually rotating down, trying to get some sort of purchase in the bottom path, and they're pushing pretty good. Gunner has to reset using that Fell Stinger to try and get the Ndidi. I don't think that's necessarily where their target was going, but they did force out the Mew Unite. Yeah, they forced that Unite, which is really nice. Obviously, Mew having to use that Unite, really getting no value for it. Big Solar Beam coming in, but here comes the Leafeon looking for a KO. They're seeing if they can get Dragon in or Slowbro. Either way, they're completely zoned out, and they're able to take this objective. Things are going great for the side of Uwu right now. Yeah, that Fairy Singularity actually used like a Rock Tomb, right? Just for pure spacing to make sure that the Dragonite couldn't engage through it to use their Hyper Beam. I actually forced them to reset which means that Awu got that thing for free. And that's exactly what they're looking to do. So clever use of the Unite move. You know, not every Fairy Singularity has to be for three KOs or to bunch up the entire team. It can literally just be used to gobble up portions of the map to open up, you know, opportunities to steal objectives. So well done there. Uwu is playing very, very well right now. Yeah, this is, I mean, unless they start giving up some big moments right here, they can just take this all the way to the bank and win this game because they are in the driver's seat right now. They are in control control of what's happening and this combination please nerf mean look uh, please this is so stupid that this can do it's, this yeah it's uh, there's another fairy singularity because that's the big buff that it got and that's quick ko on the dragon i prime target here as we have volto using their buzz will unite but can't track down the target that they had lined up they get ko'd quickly snow is just peppering in these solar blades everywhere it's like its own form of just destructive spacing. Like if it doesn't KO you, it doesn't allow you to move forward either. It's looking phenomenal. Harai is going straight for the engage and they've got to be feeling strong right now. j able to drag and dance around the next Solar Blade, but the Reggie Alecki is hit. Now we've got a big opportunity for an overdunk here and they get plus 34 on that. So nice overdunk again. Check that out on Spotify as well. Great Pokemon Unite related podcast as Harai uses their Unite move, catches all three, stuns them up. The follow up is there. Snow wants the target. Snow gets the target. Two players down though for Uwu. Incredible stuff right here as they are able to win that fight even after Gardevoir is going down. You're on fire is also a Pokemon Unite podcast. Don't know how to work it into a sentence, but we got Pokemon Unite podcasts out here, everybody. Here comes Slowbro looking to try to get something done in this bottom path, possibly get a secure trying to steal some of this away from these X scissors right here. And this combination is so stupid. Someone take this part of this of this stream and please send it over to Temi and say, are you looking at what's happening right here? Every time a mean look lands, the Pokemon goes down. Just clip it and ship it. It's a mean look, then a rock tomb on the backside. So even if they do leave the mean look, they can't escape. And then everything in the kitchen thing gets thrown into that horseshoe. Um, I mean, Volto gets a, a quick KO on her eye, but that's really been the only target they've been able to take down because the rest of the spacing's been just so good out of this Uwu squad. Speaking of clip it and ship it, that's another Pokemon Unite podcast where Dupe Snacks and I take a look at all the best clips of the week, very Tosh.0 style. Unfortunately, no one watches it. No one watches it. it is, it's so unknown that I am surprised by the fact that I have that podcast, to be honest. 
Me too! Taking a look at our bottom path right here. We can see the two EXP share defenders just hanging out. Already level 11. Almost the level of the carries on the other side of the map. As we have Dragonite and Buzzwell ticking over to 12. Unite move to try to stay alive and pick up a KO. And somehow they do. Leafeon does go down, however. Providing some nice experience to our orange team. <laughs> What's impressive to me is they left with a KO. Like they should have been just absolutely dead to rights. They used the Emerald 2-step and are able to close out. Uh, the KO on the Mew. I mean, that is impressive work and just shows the strength of Leafeon, especially when they are higher levels than their opposition here. Sox has really just kind of been dancing by themselves in the bottom path, really just tasked to insulate this goal zone. have done a pretty good job in the face of multiple players, and it looks like plush keepers are looking to get into this bottom path and get some positioning for this basement. Uh, excuse me, the basement Reggie won't hit. They're just getting positioning in the bottom path. Can I say, Doob Snacks, I don't know if you've been brushing up on your Unite move names, but I feel like you're nailing it, my friend. Have I said words? You hit it. Sense? You hit the Emerald Two Step, the Snow Globe. I mean, I feel like you're you're just you've got all the names, and I, I every once in a while I'm like, Cram Unite. I say I say I say the the Unites more than I say the names of them. That's for sure. Um, but I'm glad to see you noticed. I appreciate you uh, respecting the work that I've been putting in. Consummate professional, you. the best in the business as we get ready for this fight here, Dupes next. One minute 50. We are just a few points separating these two teams with two tier one goal zones up. Slowbro gets caught. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any Pokemon at this point is getting caught. It's just putting in this like absolutely vice grip trap that Uwu has going on. Now, Harari's on the backside. They're able to use their Unite move, dodge the absolute huge Hyper Beam, but it's the Buzzwell Volto that goes down, and now Snow's feeling it. They're in the back line. Mew pops their Unite move. They're looking for a target with the Solar Beam, and they miss everybody. Can't hit the bright side of the barn with that. Nerzox uses their Unite move, try to pull everybody back through. They're throwing fists from space, but isn't enough. Prestle used their Unite move, but it's sealed up. It's signed, sealed, delivered, and now it's burger time, as that's what's on the order. That's what's on the menu, and I think it's about time for this Uwu team to put Plush Keepers away. Yeah, Uwu now reigning the points in. The game is still incredibly close. We have the Umbreon shield down, but with 100 points making its way center and Leafeon dancing around looking for an opportunity to score as well. It looks like this game is all but over. Crustle looking for the score as Leafeon comes in and is able to put another 100 points. 413 to 104 and we also have the Gale and Gunner up here in the top path waiting for their hundo burger as well. Look, everyone's hungry and they need those hundo burgers as it looks like that is going to be the game right here. Uwu takes it and how could they not with this combination? Mean look, Psy Shock, Snipe Shot, Solar Blade. Gross. I'm going to puke. Blah. I did. <laughs> that is a vomit inducing comp if I've ever seen one. And uh, yeah, it delivered here. Plush Keepers are looking to score. They're gonna get some points. Look at that sandbagging of the Solar Blade out of snow, by the way. Just waiting to give them hope and then crushing all four of them with it. Another fair singularity on the goal zone is gonna seal this thing up. What a showdown. And honestly, a great match between these two teams. Yeah, that was an awesome match. I, I honestly though, I'm, I don't know what you do against that combination. Once a team is ahead and they have that combo, what on earth, every time a mean look lands, something goes down. It's just crazy. It's so... Yeah, it, and I was just going to say, the proof in the pudding to that was how quickly they took care of the Slowbro the moment Rayquaza hit the map. I mean, Slowbros don't get eviscerated like that. It's very rare that they do. And this is something that Uwu was able to do over and over and over again. Once you see your Slowbro go down like that, what chance does the rest of your squad have? Look at that, by the way. 70,000 healing on it as well, playing this support Umbreon, taking 122,000 damage, just setting up all of these KOs. Really beautiful stuff right there as they are going to be moving forward in this bracket. Uwu takes that 2-1. I'm seeing in chat, and I don't know if this is true or not, Nouns just lost. They are in losers now. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That is a big, big, big upset if I've ever heard one. Uh, Yeah. I mean, holy, as we expected to see them against Uwu next, but that clearly is not happening. We are not you know, done seeing Nouns throughout this tournament. We're going to be following them through the losers bracket. In some ways, that's, you know more exciting kind of good for us <laughs> yeah it's kind of good for us because we get to see more games and look uh i have to be honest when i was looking at the eu region before um 
you know, before this tournament started, before AOS Cup qualifiers started right here, I was a little disappointed uh, thinking that this was a, you know, one or two team region. And clearly that's being proven wrong right at the start. It, it, it definitely is. It definitely is. Um, you know, definitely you can't count. Uh, how many times am I going to say definitely in a two sentence span? Good Let's find night. out. We learn, can get a stack count. Learn, learn <laughs> other words. Snacks, come on. Um, nouns That's a being stack. down, certainly not out, is a spot that we kind of talk about. It's almost like stitched into their personality at this point. Yeah, that's true. That is a nouns esports thing. And also, it is tough, right? Bringing all of these top players together and trying to figure out how they're going to gel. You know, that's that's always one of the tough things that happens when you have uh, sort of a dream team assembled, you know? Mm-hmm. Do we want to jump to Illusion versus Neo Century Red? Illusion is currently 1 and 0, oh, and if they win this one, they make it into top 8. Sure. Through winners. Yeah, let's see it. All right. Lunder's playing Decidueye. So, I'm assuming the enemy's got Gardevoir. Nope. But anyway, take it away, Italian. Yeah, tell me what which of the two teams are, are purple is Illusion. Oh, uh, sorry. Illusion is purple. Yeah, and then on orange side it is Neo Century Red, but their in-game tag is just NSR. So if you want to just keep it NSR, it's probably fine. I'll of course do the full name Zoinks. I can't just do NSR. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, well. Either way, you two have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, "All right, man, whatever." I'm um, just trying right. to help out, but all right. <laughs> I'm looking at this, and ever since Razmog's Greninja game, I almost wish to see them on that again, but it looks like they're on Blastoise duty in the top path for another go round the horn here, which means uh, Klaus picking up the Venusaur yet again and going to be pivoting into the central, um, leaving Lunder onto this uh, Decidueye. So God, that's kind of where we're at with this Illusion team, as they seem to be just flopping roles kind of all over the map here as they're picking up different Pokemon. I'm happy to see the bird, I gotta say. You know, uh, I feel like Decidueye is one of those Pokemon that in the hands of the right player and the right team looks like there was no other choice that was reasonable. You know, you see that with things like uh, Yeet Fan, currently 2016 fan uh, in NA. You see, I, I remember Adesu on this like insane uh, Decidueye. So I actually love when teams bring this out because you have an opportunity to see some insanely cool plays with this Pokemon. Yeah, they're going to be using... We didn't get to see the item loadout, so we're not too sure which direction Klaus is going to be going this game. I assume it's going to be double range, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, Razmog is going to have to bully up front, though. Blastoise is great at that, but if you're going to be spacing for two ranged characters, that's what they're going to need them to do. It looks like we did have a Giga Drain there, so I don't know if Klaus is looking to get up close and personal this game or if they're going to split their moveset. I think Giga Drain is just to make sure that you're able to, you know, deal with the dive of something like a Blaziken. But you know what? You do never know how they want to build this because they've got the back line with that Decidueye. So they could be brawling more with the Venusaur so that they can make sure that you can hit those snipe shots with the bird right there. In the chat, I see Phil Eumis is here from Team YT. They say, don't forget So Sad Sam. Yes, I am sorry that I forgot So Sad Sam, but I'll tell you who I will forget. Phil is being the Garchomp King. The man never never plays it he's a liar absolute fraudulent fraudulent person is phil doesn't play garchomp actually actively hates it which is something that uh, may surprise a lot of you in chat right now he told me uh, it was just a marketing ploy he was like ah, i needed something i needed a hook you know i didn't have the yeehaw so i went with the garchomp king yeah don't say yeehaw i am spraggle's lawyer and i will sue and then put it on zoinks's tab Lunder moving through. They've gotten a couple stacks and finally hitting Decidueye with that nice hollow air. And we're truly going to see how we're ranging and changing between this Venusaur and Decidueye. These grass-type Pokemon are going to be looking to shell out massive damage into the face of this opposing squad. Here. Ooh, look at those arrows. I'm just so happy to see it. And we saw tons of stacks early. So this is going to be an incredibly strong Decidueye landing another double uh, Spirit Shackle right there. And, you know, as soon as this thing hits level 11 also and gets that next buff from it, you're just going to see it pick off some big KOs. The question is, what are they going to be able to do about it? And is that Blaziken going to be able to dive back and punish it like you would in a solo queue game? Because if I see a Decidueye and I'm a Blaziken, you have no idea how happy I am. But to be fair, if I see a Decidueye and I'm any Pokemon, you have no idea how happy I am. 
Yeah, when you roll out of comp play, some Pokemon truly lose uh, a lot of value, and uh, Decidueye being one of them for sure. Registeel quickly getting worked on. Neptu is using their Echo Spears on it, but, uh, you know, ultimately gets secured because of quality rip and the Inteleon being there with the snipe shot ringing true. Kree takes a ton of damage. Class is moving forward, hits the Solar Beam on the tree, but they just rolled through the pad, so their shield is gone. No HP really dissipating there. Ultimately, game's closer than you'd think, dis despite how the beginning went. Yeah, game is a lot closer than you would think. And we, we were wondering what kind of Venusaur we're going to see. We are seeing that Beamasaur. A lot of people run Giga Drain on Beamasaur, and it feels counterintuitive, right? If you just look at the moveset, why are you not playing the other ranged move that lowers special defenses? It just feels like it all makes sense. But that Giga Drain is going to give you the ability to survive a dive, basically. Uh, if you hit one Giga Drain, it's going to give you the defenses and the healing to be able to survive against something that you know for instance this blaziken is going to try to do for you right there you just saw him hit the drain and it gives them at least enough time to get mm -hmm. another move off and they actually live through that fight i can't believe it happened as i was talking about it it never works like that for a caster never ever usually it's the caster curse you see the exact opposite type stuff go down but look at you fat brain spraggles that's your new branding counting cowboys out the window Fat Brain Spraggles is back, baby, as now Orange is looking for an opportunity. Honestly, taking the Regieleki is a start for them, right? Most of their players were up there, got that experience based off that. But they need to leverage it in some way, shape, or form. They're doing great on their levels right now, Spraggles, but not really finding any value. Uh, I have bad news for you, by the way. Uh, focus grouped Fat Brain Spraggles, and they said it was so dumb that if I used it, uh, no one would watch my content. So unfortunately, I'm sticking with the cowboy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, never forget Zoinks' Finnegan Winnegan uh, type scenario. Not as grief as that. Overheat comes through. Blastoise gets the spacing. Stars looking to jump on Lunder. They have an opportunity here because Lunder has no idea that they're there. Woodhammers are out. And we're going to watch Klaus run down to the bottom. Here we go, heading down to this bottom path right here. Here comes the Slow Bream. Venusaur Unite move. Nice big one-two punch right there as they're going to continue this push. It looks like Slow Bro is getting a little low. Huge. Uh, wow! That snipe shot. I thought for sure they were saved until that snipe shot had that miracle hit on that Venusaur right there. You had the beautiful Unite move from the LD saving Venu, but it wasn't quite enough. Blastoise Unite coming through. Registeel getting down to half right now. As this is turning into a little bit of a flip with snipers on both sides. Reggie is extremely low. The wood hammers are back out. Reggie goes down to the Blastoise. Yeah, great coverage though uh, from Star to make sure that um, Lunder couldn't make a play on the basement Reggie. Regardless, they stitch in an arrow. It's a little late, but it gets a KO anyway. So I guess that's just uh, the level at which Illusion is operating right now. Nice Skull to slow down the Glaceon. Their Icicle Spears are still raining in, but they want to close this goal zone out. They have the opportunity for a big overdone. That's plus 39. Nice little look. Somehow Kree again on the front line trying to score doesn't get touched and their points are the ones that go in. And here we go up the top path Reggie Alecki and maybe it's just me but this Parsec audio feels like it is echoing over and over again. I might have to reload my Parsec but I figured I would just mention that to Mr. Zoinks right here. Up into the top path we see the Reggie Alecki go down. Blaziken obviously able to rip this thing up and just take it easily by itself. It's one of those Pokemon that is just able to make what is going on right here that was felt very scary for a moment there for this blastoise maybe they just wanted to pull it closer to the goal zone to fight it nope now they're just go, gonna go ahead and push it back they're just having some fun with this regieleki i am truly baffled and yeah that noise from parsec sounds like a tiny helicopter like flying right next to my little ear um I'm gonna but... mute it for the moment that's probably the correct call how do we do that i'm just i'm just muting it on my end on this little uh I got a I got a PC over here, so you, know, you get a lot of options. Uh, you know, I don't want to brag or anything, but it's a personal computer. No, I'm not using a shared computer at a library anymore, everyone. It is a personal computer, and hopefully we can get that audio issue fixed as we head into the last moments here of this match. Two minutes, 25 seconds on the clock here. Illusion up one game, and if I remember what Zoink said, it was something about Winnegan Finnegan, and if they win this game, they secure their spot. Uh, in the uh, next part of the AOS Cup right here. Big game, big game between these two teams, of course. Finnegan, Winnegan, Chinnigan, then again. We're hearing all the agains 
right here. Kree again getting in there. Nice little surf spacing. Puts down the early gravity. This is an opportunity to collapse on the Glaceon. And look at Yen Yanako getting their 50. No. Oh. Nice stitch from Lunder from long range. And now these snipers see their target. And if they can take care of the opposition secure, they're in good shape. We're going for another back cap as the Blaziken is on their solo journey here. Adam is up and Adam. Slow beam takes care of Neptune, the Glaceon. Now they're putting through the st uh, Stato. Has to pivot back. And I'll tell you what, that Decidueye Unite did not hit a single thing. The Rayquaza Burn is starting. It's at half HP, but here comes the Blaziken. They're right back up. They're charging over here, but the wrong way. They reset with the, with the eject button, and they secure it. Are you kidding me, dude? NSR is beating the brakes off them now. Three players down, and they're putting the pressure on. Gonna have to get some burgers in. Their lead is high, but not high enough. They'd like to have it more. They're breaking all these shields, and now we've got an opportunity for a counter push, I think. Yeah, they have an opportunity, but more points running in. 159, 330. They need to stop this Inteleon, and they're not able to do it. No. Another 100 points right there. That is one of the things that Blaziken can, can do, and it's interesting. You can actually hold your overheat in any direction you just saw it right there so i think intentionally they cast it behind them so that the enemy team wouldn't see as easily that they were charging it then you can eject whichever direction you eject changes the direction overheat's going to be thrown it's why you can overheat and kind of dash into the enemy team and pick up some surprising ko's and they could pick up a really surprising secure right there but the push is not over they're moving on to this tier two right here with 20 seconds left Clefable Crashlands, Moonlight Gravity is down. No points have gone in just yet, but tons of damage is getting reined in. Here's Glaceon, nice Solar Beam, Adam is down. Now they've got an opportunity. There's two players down, it's up to this Glaceon to do the defense. Can any of these points go in? Some go in, but the goal zone still stands. That's not enough, it's closed out, but there's still a bigger bridge that they have to cross right now. Collapsing on this bottom goal zone, they get a quick 12, they get a quick 10, but I don't think that's gonna close that gap, Spraggles. No, I don't think it closes the gap. They were just too far behind, especially after what happened in that center area there uh excuse me in their main goal zone and uh you see the scores flip around but that is nsr uh taking this game right there what a game it was indeed i'm trying to pull up these because there's two brackets here for eu today so making sure that we are on the right bracket here and yes this as you mentioned would have been a winning game now we're going to a game three for this decider here yeah exciting stuff really really fun I mean, you, you love to see Blaziken get played in that fashion. That's really cool. <laughs> it's I like I thought for sure I saw the overheat go. Obviously, we didn't see the items load in. I hadn't seen the Blaziken use that eject button. But it, I mean, it looked doomed, right? Just right off the rip. Once the overheat gets charged, you're like, oh, no, not like this. Nice reposition eject button for the big pop of damage to secure that for the team. What a play. And I, I like that you called it out. Blaziken is a, is so much fun to watch. New news for literally no one but Zoinks, as we mentioned before. Yeah, someone um, can someone DM Zoinks and tell them that if you're really looking to win again, Finnegan, you need to start playing with the Fire Chicken. I <laughs> Fire Chicken Blaziken. So I'm gonna unionize. <laughs> Th like this is at this point, I, the, the people need to rise up. <laughs> I can't. It's ask just you. It's just uh, yeah. you. Your fake song and not knowing how cool Blaziken is. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Why didn't uh, anyone tell me Mewtwo was good? <laughs> <laughs> hey, to be fair, no one did. Okay. <laughs> um. Uh. So we have a couple of options: Ball Toys Unite and Copy Bob Buzz, which is also um a win and in i'm gonna regret this for life <laughs> situation that is happening their game three is occurring okay. or we could wait for illusion neo century reds game three to start mm. um well do that'll we, take do we, we wanted to jump back and forth or do you want to see the end of a set i think what if we did what if we did like ball toys unite on 2x speed yeah well yeah we'll ball toys unite and run it up okay. to 2x as fast as we can finish that match then jump to the other who, that should be around right sure yeah all right, let's so do, I mean, unless we're... one's like a surrender, but okay, here we go. Let's go to Ball Toys versus Copy Babas. Again, whoever wins this 10 minute game uh, is qualified for top eight. Yeah, and just also, uh, is my parsec any better now? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring the audio up. Yeah, let me, let me check here. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been making that noise again. Oh, has it? Okay, mind. cool. I'll, I'll bring the uh, audio for the game back yep. up, everybody, so no that you can hear where that came huh? from. What's that? I'm so sorry. No, I'm casting. Yeah. I'll be quiet when I get a chance. Once librarians, am I right? Here we go. Adam Whiskers on his skin again. 
Yeah, this is a true Winnegan Finnegan situation that we've got ourselves here. Game three, Baltoys Unite, Copy Babas, which honestly, if you click on there, uh, a lot of their profile pictures for the players are Copy Barras in suits, which I think is kind of cool. Now, Baltoys Unite is certainly favored by in terms of, again, of we kind of mentioned the star power, you know, the noted names on their team, but there's no slouches on the other side. I mean, not Dodo, uh, not Nils, and um, young Leon all show find themselves on this team. My brain's not working. What is the name of the, the second team? And also run us right up to two minutes, 30 seconds. So it's like eight times us right now. Um, the team is Copy Babas. Okay. Ball, ball toys, so a play on Copy Barras, the animal, right? Got it. Thank I guess you. is what they were going for there. Reminds me of that old song. <laughs> it, does, it ha does it have to do with somebody named Finnegan, Winnegan, Chinnigan, Vinnegan? <laughs> it's, you know what? Shockingly enough, it does. As we're getting ready <laughs> here it. for this fight, uh, two minutes, 30 seconds right now. We've got a Dark Bear, which is the first time we're seeing it on our stream today. Uh, Dupe Snacks. This is a Pokemon that I, I have to be honest, I'm always unimpressed by, um, but it does pull out some game wins. I just feel like so much of the match, I'm disappointed that they have Dark Bear. Yeah, very true. Something I want to point out, though, no healing on the side of the Capybabas. Uh, they're going straight into this new Wiggly Tough, this buffed Tough uh, in its Sing uh, loadout here. And they need to leverage it in a big way because uh, they are up against some absolute banger Pokemon on the other side, uh, with maybe the exception of that Dark Bear, I guess. And here we go. Dark Bear picking up a massive KO, getting ready to make a secure on this Reggie Rock. Uh, there's no other way it could go after I mentioned that I don't really love it right now. Of course, it has to do an incredible job. Actually, Espeon being the one to pick it up. Let me tell you, though, a Pokemon that I think is slightly slept on is that Espeon. It's incredibly good. It's just that every Eevee is so good that you almost forget that that one is also busted. Yeah, its Unite move is one of my favorite ones out of the Evolutions because of how it just kind of captures everybody in that range, uh, right? And does like a little bit of CC and a burst of damage. Uh, definitely great as a get out of jail free card for your team, right? Like it can really insulate some of your squishier Pokemon, including itself. Leon Leon got getting picked up, put down, puts to sleep the Clefable, but that's not really the prime target. As we got a quick engage, the Wicked Blow it doesn't hit the target. Not Dodo screaming on all over this pad, trying to keep it standing, but I believe that's Toast that goes down quick. Yeah, it does go down quickly. It's so delicious. And here we go in the top path. 40 points going in. Now we see this Regieleki is open for the side of Ball Toys. 166 to 24. We've got Gotlu already level 10. As I mentioned earlier, one of those players to watch. It's going to be really exciting. Once he hits 11, then the combo is unlocked. It's just so incredibly difficult to do anything about Buzzwool, especially if it has a level lead like it does right now. And and it's almost picking up its big level 11. Two Unite moves coming out from the side of the Capybabas right here as they are continuing to push forward towards this goal. Unite moves being thrown the other way. Gotlu picking them up, putting them down. And this goal zone looks like it's in a lot of trouble right here. Still trying to defend it right here. Dodo on the pad, but it's not enough. And this is going in. Yeah, finally does go in. Fabau comes in, gonna lay in some wood hammers but it's too late. Reggie Alecki is hit, and they have a great opportunity to close this thing, which unlocks what we like, we like to call the win condition, which means a, a, the last Reggie of the game is now a true problem for the Capybabas if they weren't up against it enough already. Yeah, if you uh, missed Zapdos in Pokemon Unite, they have just unlocked it here for Ball Toys Unite. It's, uh, it's the greatest play you can make in a moment like this is holding that final Reggie till a late point, 230, 220, something like that, making a huge play. My goodness, what an Umbreon Unite move. That was phenomenal. And really showing off the strength of these Eevees is four players down for the Capybabas, and they just can't hold uh, a candle to what's going on right now. There's just, it's, there's just so much damage being rained in. They have no actual healing on their side of the map. They don't have enough sustain built within their characters to weather this storm. 
And now anytime they go for an engagement, it just looks awful. Yeah, it's terrible. Their, their level disadvantage is intense right here. And you're just in a moment where it feels like no matter what they do, they're not going to be able to stop ball toys at this point. They, they would have to make some big mistakes. Picking up a couple KOs, but they are on their two lowest level players, their two supports. Let's see if they can make a fight happen here, though, because if they're able to get Sereyu, if they're able to make something big, that could be huge as Reggie does go down, secured by the tree. Things are happening, and as soon as you mention it, all of a sudden, there's light at the end of the tunnel, and it starts to turn around. Yeah, that candle just got gasoline poured on it. They have light a blaze over here. And honestly, it's hard to say that it wasn't just a straight int by Ball Toys Unite. I don't know why we had the eject button, wicked blow on three players into the SB on Unite. I mean, there was just not enough there to close the door. And then once all the resources were expended, Capybabas were like, oh, okay, well, we still have buttons to press. And we're able to get some quality KOs. It's not a big deal if your Clover Hable and Umbreon goes down. It's a huge problem if your Urshifu Buzz will Espeon go down. Fortunately, they clutch out this uh, Reggie Alecki, so the win condition has already been dealt with. But now they're getting KO'd swiftly. Young Leon going to use Sing to try and get out, but they're going to collapse and get three players down here. So a nice counter punch back to try and levelize this field out. And they're going to look escort this Reggie Alecki a little bit. Yeah, now they're in such a uh, difficult p position here for Kabibabas. It's just so hard to do anything when you're put into a place where they have Ray and they have Reggie Alecki. They have to burn this incredibly quick, but it means that anyone in this area is just a sitting duck for them. Reggie Alecki does go down. They're now pushing forward. Nice big snipe shot. They might be able to make something happen because of it. Blastoise Unite only picks up the Buzzwall as they are continuing to push forward in this fight, but this is a full health team that they are walking into right now. Zervis with the follow me. Zervis with the moonlight. They are able to pick up Buzz, however, and now we have one down on each side. That's an amazing snipe shot. We got the horn leech pushing back, splitting Zervis from the rest of the team. Chelvis is over half HP. Now Falbao has to feel peel back. We've got the store powers going through. The wicked blow is charged up. It gets two players in an instant. The Blastoise is down. The Wiggly Tough is off spawn. Now Dodo's still trying to level up. They're low on HP, so the only way they're going to get that back is a reset. Obviously, pivoting to the middle is Paul Ball Toys Unite. They are up on the scoreboard. Sylveon Unite is out. Screamy on Sereyu goes down. Now they can pivot. Chelvin is half HP after the snipe shot. Toast is kind of lighting it up right now. Fabo trying to make a play in the middle, but we've got another gravity that goes down. Hyper Voice comes through. Tons of damage being rained in, but it doesn't look like to be enough. Gatlu is looking to pivot. Toast is gone. Four players down. Coming off spawn is Ashi, but Ashi is getting eviscerated. They're going to get put down. The shell is cracked. They are absolutely decimated. And now it's free reign for Ball Toys, Ball Toys Unite to score. Yeah, Ball Toys Unite. I mean, what a fight for them. For a moment, things started to shift the other way. But as soon as Buzzwool made it back into the fight, picked up that huge Unite and then just had these moments. You look at Gotlu with the eject tech, and we've been seeing him play with that a lot. So he's ejecting into the enemy, getting just enough on the other side of them to use SmackDown to actually throw them towards the team. He's been doing it a lot lately, and it's, it's a really impressive move. It really, really is. Now we're definitely in garbage time here as, of course, Ball Toys Unite has put just enough points in to secure this thing. Ray is no longer a factor for them. So why not ramp up those numbers? There we go. Ball Toys Unite wins this one. And yeah, Zoinks, if you just want to pop us to the next game as soon as we can, that would be great. Ball Toys, and if I'm getting this correctly, they have secured their spot in the top eight, correct? That is correct. Yep, that is correct. Great. Illusion Neo Century Red tied at 1-1 at this point in time. And we're jumping right into, it uh, looks like Illusion Neo Century Red into their game three here. Okay. So this is another win and end situation. All right, all right, all right. Uh, like Matthew McConaughey says, what is it? Mr. Millwickers takes to the winners. I can't remember. <laughs> Mr. Millwickers. Mr. Millwickers talks knickers. about winners. Yeah, it's something like that. So I'm almost positive it's close to that. Here we go, it's heading into game be. number three between these two uh, amazing teams right here. We've got the Inteleon in our bottom path with the Crustle. I saw people asking in the chat earlier, is Crustle really back? It absolutely is back. Or maybe it's really here for the first time. I don't know if it ever really felt competitive. No, it's definitely here for the first time. Um, and what's awesome is the way this meta has shaped itself out. I talked a, a little bit about this earlier today. 
is not that it received a buff, but the way that the meta has developed, it just became relevant. Kind of like Lucario, right? It didn't get a bunch of buffs or anything, but how this top path like dichotomy has broken down, all of a sudden, it's relevant again. And that's what's exciting. We're seeing just naturally shift, but not because of buffs or nerfs on specific Pokemon, because of things that are happening with other ones, which is really cool. Dwooble getting a quick KO on an Eevee on the bottom path. It's interesting because the buffs it got a while back, I think for a bit were overlooked. It got these, it got mm -hmm. like two rounds of buffs that did feel like people still weren't picking up crustal and then you're right with the way the game is evolved wow what a massive skull bash into a water gun we talked about this earlier about how powerful that was and you just saw it right there in this top path i had to stop making my dumb point for a second because that was so impressive that was a great great play and when the whole team is coalesced around, we're not talking about birds right now. We're talking about bodies, and you can flip the script and really surprise the team. That's a great way to get a big advantage. Now, Razmog is already level six. Biggest thing moving in the top path. They're scrapping with Combuskin. Who cares? And now it's forcing weird pivots out of this orange team, NSR, Neo Century Red, to try and cover all the different looks that Illusion is given to them right now. I'm not talking about birds, and I'm not talking about bodies, because I'm talking about Mr. Finnegan, because this is a win and in for one of these two teams, either Illusion or NSR, in this game number three. I didn't have a way to finish this sentence. I just really wanted to say all that. Clearly, yeah. it's fun to say, and that's why it's a popular song, and more people should know it. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <sighs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay, just record it. Put it on Spotify. We'll, t we'll have it be the intro to Overdunk from now on, and it'll be done. Here we go into our bottom path right here. We've got our Inteleon. We have our Glaceon at level eight. Our Fire Chicken still is only level six. It really needs level eight before it can actually come online and fight in one of these big moments here. Leafeon not finding the value that some other teams have found with it. I'll tell you what would really help it is mean look from Umbreon. Nice big X scissor. It looks like they're gonna try to make it home and they just barely do. Yep, nice, but unfortunately came right back through into the X Scissor. Kree again taking tons of damage, however, making their mark felt as they were able to leverage that Rock Tomb X Scissor combination and timed it perfectly for when they rolled back through the portal. Now they have the positional advantage here as they are putting so much pressure on NSR onto their own goal path. Starro looking to go down, they do. X Scissor sorts that out. Now Neptune has to peel back. They get KO'd very quickly with the help of everybody under the sun in a big time snipe shot. Kree again, this X Scissor spacing has been immaculate, Spragles. Kree definitely really leveraging this Pokemon Crustal and showing why it's back. Or yeah. it's finally showed up to the party. Crustal looking so good here. And it is one of those moments at the end of the game, you're going to see that this, you know, Inteleon has 8 billion damage and so does Glaceon. But you see all of these moments set up by a great defender here uh, in that Crustal. You have three in the top path trying to do something about Razmog. And it looks like they're going to be able to make it happen. No, the Unite move from Blastoise. They are staying alive right here against three. Jumping in, trying to take it down, using the tall grass to hide, surfing back to the goal zone, oh pushed my. out with the hydro pump into the berry. They're somehow alive, another Unite, and they finally go down. I mean, credit, holy. What a play to keep that thing up and give their team a chance. Now, only Sazero pivoted up, and they weren't able to close the bottom goal zone yet, maybe holding on to it for a little bit later into the game. But that was a clinic on how to play Surf Stoys. Yeah, that was so impressive right there as they were just fending off three in the top path, not able to fully get away from them because I mean they just had so much damage being leveled against them. Reggie Alecki now going down to the overheat. So they're going to push forward into this fight right here. Huge Blastoise moment once again. Razmog just so mean on this Pokemon. An unknown quantity to me until today, but Razmog is definitely like my upstart MVP. I mean, they've been phenomenal on this Greninja, on this Surf Stoys, and really showing that new players can step up, step in, and make an impact on high-quality teams. Razmog, what a find for this Illusion squad. Yeah, for sure. And you're taking a look at the leveling right here from these two teams. I was just about to talk about Glaceon's level, and then it ticked over again. Level 13 at five minutes here for Klaus. And that is going to be... I don't know. I mean, it's got a point and click move that's going to take three quarters of your health if any Pokemon on the enemy team, not to mention a snipe shot can land. This is just so tough to deal with. Already, Glaceon's gross. Already, Inteleon's gross. But when you have a level advantage, it's just so hard to stop them. 
Yeah, it becomes just exponentially worse. And now you get to have Razmog actually insulate these goal zones from the back cap that we know this team likes to do. We saw them do that uh, a couple times in the last game we watched here. Four minutes, but it looks like they're almost spacing as if Ray was about to hit the map, Spragles. It did feel like that, right? It's just because they have so much control over this game right now. They're kind of holding them to just such a small area right here. Illusion just is in complete control of what's happening. But that doesn't mean that NSR can't do something to get back into this game. They're going to need to make some big plays. Here comes the Hoopa Unite, and let's see what they can do. Uh, well, I saw the Crustle Unite as well. They're looking for a target here. Back on the backside, they're laying in damage. Neptune trying to get out, but they are as a fruitless endeavor as the Glaceon's there to pick it up. Lunder's looking for their next target, and Razmog backdoors Yanako, and they get KO'd quickly. Now this Registeel is all but free for this Illusion team, and don't have any illusions about this one. They are taking it to your face. There's no tricks going on right here just pure beatdowns yeah no tricks all treats right now for illusion it's just so incredible to be in this position for them uh every snipe shot that lands it's gonna be a level 13 in a second every snipe shot that lands is almost a ko every single time glaceon gets some damage it's almost a ko as you see hoopa in the top path uh, excuse me the bottom path sort of hugging this wall i don't know if they're going for a very sneaky score or if we have a bit of a disconnect it's possible it's a disconnect i'm i'm confused yeah, I, unfortunately, I think that's the type of situation we're in right now. Or or their ping is just high, so you know they're kind of being pseudo-disconnected where they're not too sure where they're moving. They do pivot for a score. Not too sure if they're going to get points in. Plus 27. I don't know if that was worth, but they certainly believe it was. We've got a hyperspace hole going down. They're going to reset as we're watching the rest of this team eviscerate Reggie Alecki before it can hit the goal zone. Honestly, that might have just been hugging the wall for a goal right there. I mean, it looks like what they were able to do. 262, 132. Level-wise, someone's already level 15 as we get ready for Ray Quaza right here. A huge match for both of these teams. If either one of them wins, they are in like Finnegan. 10 seconds here until Ray Quaza hits the map. And and now we see, looks like Blaziken looking to make a possible play here on the top path. Blastoise staying there top to watch out for it. Yeah, they love this back cap action, does NSR. And they might be able to jump on uh, on Mog here if they get a little too squirrely. Charging up the overheat, the damage just go in. I don't know if they can get their scores in, though. This Rayquaza is there. It's kind of getting shot at a little bit. Yanako needs to make sure they don't get clipped by a snipe shot because that'll be all but the end of them. As Razmog's still scrapping with Adam in the top pass break. Yeah, we see Leafeon has gone down, so it looks like part of that was dealt with. But they are correct on the side of NSR. Obviously, they don't really need to take Rayquaza illusion so they're just kind of able to try to make some plays like this and maybe get some unite moves from their opponents right here maybe get some sneaky ko's and oh wow not even able to make it home in that moment hoopa goes down venusaur goes down blaziken did get the portal but they're going to be running into a level 15 glaceon right here that just rips them to shreds yeah, and they didn't couldn't even score enough points to get this thing down. Neptune is here, and we're going to need Kree again to lock up this Finn again to make sure that they can win again, and they do very quickly as Rayquaza is getting torn off this map, uh, and Starro just too late to make a play. What a game by Illusion. I mean, that is domination. There you go. Illusion wins this thing, and they looked incredible doing it. That was one of those games that it just felt like there was no coming back from. There was nothing they could do. Teams flip-flopped right here. NSR was your orange team, but you could see that they did lose. They're going to be heading to your loser's bracket as we have uh, a team qualified here. Illusion pushing forward. I, I can't say enough about Cree and uh, Razmog on yeah. the Illusion team. They were impressive that game. Very, very impressive. And like you said, yes, a ton of damage out of Glaceon and Inteleon, of course. That's to be expected. And that's also the two players that we are familiar with on this team going into today. But uh, they found themselves some absolute gamers in Kree and Razmog, and I am nothing but impressed. Yeah. Zoinks, my friend. What do you think we might be bouncing to next? So next up, uh, we could check out the team that took down Noun. Squishy Squad is going up against Team Uwu, and currently Squishy Squad is a 1-0 lead um, against Team Uwu. So we could do that. Or Yala Bingo versus Convicts, which should be a very good game, is about to head into their first game of the match. 
so we could watch the full match of that one if we wanted to. I, I, we are going to get some more nouns on the broadcast, don't worry everybody, but they're still waiting on their game to begin. They're waiting for their opponent to actually make it there. So I'm um, thinking, because this, this game between Uwu and, sorry, what was the team again? Squishy Squad. Yeah, the, between, team, that yeah, the team that took down nouns. I think we watch that because that's another qualifier sure. game, right? Yeah, uh -huh. potentially. Yeah, there are... Um, I have Team Uwu on my friends list and stuff, so and it's 1-0 currently. Bragging. We should be able to get them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, so we should have that up at soon, but currently nothing to jump into at the moment. But shortly, shortly. Cool. Very, very cool. Is this our first team qualified? No, we have two. We watched, well, we just watched two. We watched Baltoy and yeah. Illusion. We, oh, right, we went right. Baltoy for <laughs> fast, yeah. But yeah, so now Baltoy and uh, Balto Unite and Illusion are qualified. And now the game is up for Team Uwu versus Squishy Squad. Team Uwu will be on your purple side, but they are 0-1. Squishy Squad will be on the orange. Okay. Squishy Squad yeah. sounds like they're doing great. They take down Nouns yeah. and now they're 0-1. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, watch out for Burton's Gardevoir. I've I've heard very, very, very good things about this Pokemon in particular. So, yeah. Uwu Squishy, yes. Uwu <laughs> Squishy. Uwu Squishy Squad going up against each other. Squishy Squad up one. This is the the Giant Slayer right here. Dupe Snacks. They took down Nouns Esports, and now they're going up against Uwu, looking to secure their spot in the AOS Cup top eight. I'm not trying to diminish uh, Squishy Squad's uh, run here, but it feels to me a lot like Ignorance from last February in NA, uh, a team that would just kind of seems to be gaming a lot together, stepped up and was able to really surprise some teams and find themselves in the top eight. I think one thing about Pokemon Unite, I I've noticed this throughout the, the life of the game. Obviously, you always have new players, and especially if you're playing in solo and stuff like that, you're, you're always running into... Uh, low quality players, but uh, the the top end of the game, like a lot of teams are racing to catch up with some of these top teams and they're doing a great job. So you see uh, a lot of things last season in NA, this was a huge story of just how many teams got competitive and we may be seeing the same, uh, same thing happen in EU, which is really cool. Yeah, it's super exciting uh, because before this season, just uh, a mere few days ago, we were all chatting about like, who can actually catch nouns? Well, it turns out there's a lot of gamers out here in EU willing to try and catch nouns and uh, maybe realizing that uh, the pace car isn't a race car. It's just got a head start. So they're closing that gap very quickly. I don't know if that's true about pace cars, but it does sound very true from my limited knowledge of how uh, NASCAR works. It doesn't rhyme with Finnegan, but I do believe it to be an accurate statement here as Nuke is taking tons of damage. The Electro Ball hitting the Bunnelby allows them to get another stack in. A little bit of a misclick there by Nyat. You almost never see that, and they don't miss that up twice. The second Electro Ball gets the KO. That was almost so beautiful. If they got another stack right there, just what an embarrassing moment. A Pokemon that we have not seen a lot of, by the way, but every time we do, I think it's really doing well in this meta. Gardevoir back in this game for the Squishy Squad. I'm loving Gardy right now. I agree completely, and I think it's because we're NA players, because NA is all about Gardevoir right now. It's it's not uh, it's not a rare commodity. It seems to be showing up more and more. Glad to see EU is on that train as well, because it is incredibly strong. Has a great level 5, has great impact when it does jump into paths, and of course, it's Unite being on cooldown every 11 seconds is awesome too. Yeah, what a nice buff for this Pokemon. It felt like it didn't get too much, given that it was, uh, you know, the new battle pass is Guardy. But boy, this Unite change is huge while it immediately gets absolutely wrecked right there by that combination from Uwu. Really nice stuff. Yeah, I mean, that was just the, the classic snipe shot into Solar Blade. And I mean, that, that'll curtain any Pokemon almost in the game all, all, all over the roster. Harai playing up front here, just trying to make it back to the team. Unfortunately, screams follow me at a wall. And now they're still getting damage rained into them. Burton coming in, trying to make a play. Can't quite secure it because Snipeshot is there. 
You know, the thing with a lot of these moments that you see when all of the that damage flies out and you get a big uh, KO like that, you can have as much healing as you want on the side of a team, but that burst, it doesn't matter. You mm -hmm. it, it takes you down faster than really anything can stop it. And we're seeing a lot of teams sort of play with this strategy lately where it's like full burst onto one Pokemon. As soon as it's gone, full burst onto another. And there's really no counter to it except bursting the other side you're exactly right and that's you know it's all well and good if you've got clefable uh or eldegoss or blissey but like you said you just can't keep up with that damage output however if you do get to buy some space then those pokemon look pretty terrific a uh, nice little fell stinger to to save themselves from nuke i mean look at that right there it just happened again it was a snipe shot it was some damage from you you had the solar blade coming down and there's just not enough you can do to heal it pollen puff won't give you enough even clefable there's just too much burst and it's really impressive i i've noticed a lot of teams are trying this heavy burst style play and it seems to really pay off if you of course if you can land your shots if you start missing your shots all of a sudden you've lost a huge fight yeah well you're giving yourself training wheels to hit your shots right that's what uh, a lot of value that crustal brings because if you're trapped in a rock tomb that pretty much gives you exactly where you need to aim right it's right into the heart of that horseshoe uh, rock ring that gets put up and it's pretty i mean look i mean it's pretty much called out right it's essentially putting a red x on where these snipe shots needs to go without them actually having vision on a player here we go, looking for a sneaky 40 in this top path. Mew should be able to stop this pretty easily. It's there, it's slow, almost. Almost missing it right there, but the Electro Ball gets it. We have the Unite move to try to stay alive, and they are able to do so. Buzzwool now moving up in the top path for a little bit of a pushback. And Sylveon makes it out. We see in this bottom path here, we have the Slow Beam onto the Inteleon. We have Crustle's Unite move. All right, Dupe Snacks, what's the name of Crustle's Unite move? No idea. All right, he doesn't know. Rubble Rouser. Get out of here. <laughs> Rubble Rouser? That's actually pretty clever. It's good. Registeel's yeah. at half HP. We're moving forward here. Luggy using that hyper voice to really rip through this Registeel. Sox is there, puts up a Rock Doom, lines up the targets, and a snipe shot. I'm telling you, it's literally just painting a red X on where these players need to throw their moves, and it's working very, very well. As now Burton is coming around, we've heard about their Gardevoir, but they just take an absolute water missile to the forehead and they get put down very quickly. Meanwhile, up top, this Regieleki is pretty much free for this uh, for this purple squad. I wouldn't mind Snipe Shot being changed to Water Missile. I actually think that's pretty good. I mean, this uh, this move is so incredibly strong it's one of the things in Inteleon's kit that i wasn't surprised didn't get nerfed but it absolutely could have i think it just took the community a little while to actually catch up with how to play this pokemon as i mentioned before there were only so many people who could actually land a snipe shot especially given that the other move was point and click but now that we see a lot of players figuring this pokemon out that damage is banana lands it's it's crazy it's crazy and uh tune once said in a perfect world snipe shot is the best move in the game uh because players can actually hit it and that kind of materialized exactly as tune said once players were actually able to hit stuff with the snipe shot you realize how powerful it can actually be i mean even in the games we saw lutano have that penta they lost that game because he still missed half the shots in the stretch right in the final stretch so you can see the difference that even just increasing that hit percentage from 50% to 70%, how that changes the tide of a game. Yeah, absolutely. It's two minutes, 40 seconds on the clock right here. Squishy Squad wins this. They are going to qualify for your top eight for this AOS Cup. How do we talk about this? It's because it's not the AOS Cup that happens in April. It's the top eight for the AOS Cup play-ins. What is this? Qualifiers. So this is essentially like a, a February qualifier is what it is, but it also happens to be the AOS qualifier. So the winner of February qualifies themselves for AOS and is also the February champion. Okay, fair enough. That's a, that's a mouthful. I don't know how to talk about it. Finnegan, win again, then again, done again. Hyper Voice Luggy taking that basement, Reggie. When in doubt, just go back to the rhyme scheme that Zoinks has invented himself as a child. And here we go. 
Two minutes on the clock. Ray is here. We have Uwu up right now, looking great. But of course, at any moment, something could happen in this fight. Someone gets caught. The burst is huge from the side of Uwu. But if they miss, we might be able to see a play. We see Buzzle moving to the top. Nuke possibly looking for a score right here. Obviously, the range on the side of Uwu is so huge, they might not be able to make a sneaky score. But if they do, they'd be way up. Slowbro in a lot of trouble. Now they're moving forward. They're, oh, they put the, the slow beam on top of Sox, who uses their Unite move back the other way, but the Leafeon is down immediately, trying to jump in for the support. Harai follows me back to the team to get to Moonlight, and Nuke is looking for their next target. They've got somebody dialed in, and it's Demu. Three players down all of a sudden for Uwu. We're flipping the script back the other way. Squishy Squad is ripping Rayquaza. It's at half. Hirai is looking for a way in. They just need to unlock this Inteleon to give themselves a shot. But Inteleon is down. Leafeon is back. They have enough speed to get back to the middle. Hirai's in the middle. They're pressing their buttons. No. It's too bad. It's too late. Squishy squad running through. They got the tier one goal zones open. They've got the win in their sights. And they, they go, they've got those hundo burgers to eat, Spraggles. There you go. They couldn't get the burst. They couldn't make it happen. Crustle doesn't go down. Thanks to the rubble rouser in that fight. And the points have ran in 156 246 we still have a hundred points possible from this slow bro guardy still has some points available right now the match is close there is something uwu can do but they're gonna need to break some massive shields there's one they're gonna need to do something about slow bro and they're still gonna need to score no one is watching the bro it's gonna put in another hundred as they're gonna make their push here only 15 seconds left and there just doesn't seem like there's enough time no matter what they do to make a play here no, especially with Burton sandbagging their fairy singularity. They're put that able to put that right on the pad and really vanquish all of the dreams in the side of this Uwu squad. And look at this. Wishy squad able to push it forward and upset another team. A squishy squad might be the real deal, Spraggles. Did you call them wishy squad? <laughs> Squishy squad? I thought you said wishy for a moment. And I was like, oh, he's making a he's going for a wish pun here we're getting something set up about how they wish they could win and now they do all right you just said squishy my brain's like see he's going for it he's going for a wishy right here but you're not being wishy-washy at all my friend squishy takes this squishy takes it indeed good game out of them i am i don't think anybody is more shocked than the entire eu region that squishy squad has just run through it you're putting nouns in their path as well um, I actually saw a tweet out of Harai earlier today. Man, to qualify, we've got to beat Nouns. Well, actually, you had to beat Squishy Squad, and you couldn't get it done. So now Team Uwu drops to the losers half of this bracket, and they've got a lot more work to do. If you take down one of the champs, by the way, you know, if you take down the big dog, you're just in such an amazing position. Like, mentally, after they beat Nouns, it feels like it would be hard for them not to beat Uwu, even though these teams are that good positionally as well so nouns lost the round before nouns mm. now has to win three games in the losers bracket to qualify since team uwu lost there they only have to win one so even making it to that next bracket is so so important so team uwu is going to be waiting a while for their next opponent uh the teams down there um Ashramaru, Single Galemo, so a, a few a few squads waiting there, but now Esports has just started their game against Goblins Paradise, I believe. What's interesting to me um, is because Nouns went there, if they were to qualify, they will be on the like in a weird spot in the bracket, right? In the sense that like in this eight team playoff, they'll actually find themselves maybe closer to the middle, um, which means they have theoretically. Um, less high caliber teams to play against than they'll have to play against. Or the other thing we've seen is it'll pit them against, uh, you know, like a, a Yala, Yala Bingo convicts uh, in this uh, top eight, if they were to make it. Um, so that's an interesting dynamic that's just been built in as well for them losing at that spot. Yeah. Squishy squad secured. We've got ball toys. Unite Steve secured. Ball. We've got, um, what was the third one? Illusion secured, right? Mm -hmm. Illusions. Mm -hmm. Illusions. <laughs> Illusions. Yeah. That side of the bracket looks crazy in Loser's bracket as well. Like Giga Chad, ABCD, uh, Copy Babas, Neo Century Red. Like that is a scary Loser's bracket. Where do you think we're heading um, next? So we'll probably try to grab the last winner's qualifier game uh, between Yala Bingo and Convicts. Okay. 
Um, once that pops up, it is they have not. Re- oh, they have reported their score now. The first game is done. Yala Bingo has won the first game. So Yala Bingo up one zero over Convicts right now. Okay, Yala Bingo. Uh, who are on these teams that we should be? Lo- oh, Sixies, of course. Yeah, Marv Potato. Oh my gosh, we got to see Yala Bingo again. Yeah, and then they're going against and- Convicts, which is Navorix, Classics, Iklis, Raytau, Oni. Which oh, is what just- a. It's what a, a great matchup. Yeah. yeah. Dude, EU is hype. I, Dude. I think we underplayed how good EU well, is. Here, here's so the thing. Exciting. And um, <laughs> c- correct me if I'm wrong, but I'll, I'll say it. Like watching EU last year was, it's fun to see top teams, but it was just such a, well, it's Nouns we had a, against yeah. uh, Tally Bobo again. Nouns against we Tally had a Bobo. Top four, no. I would say. I feel like there was a, a definitive top four that kept it exciting. It was. Uh, it's not that it wasn't exciting. I'm not saying that these games weren't exciting, but I'm saying it felt like you could predict what was going to happen, and you were yeah. rarely wrong. Rarely wrong. <laughs> that is true. You know. And now I, I love it when it's like, hey, I don't know how this is going to go because these teams are so unbelievably competitive. That's so much more exciting for me rather than having one team that feels so dominant that. You just know that they are skating into the grand finals, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I've never been more happy to be wrong uh, about a region. I really thought it was going to be like Nouns running away with it and then the other teams kind of scrapping for those next two spots. And that's where the interesting dynamic of the region was going to come from, right? The next two teams. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love uh, that uh, that has been put on its head. Like, that's terrific for us as casters, for the viewers at home. Um, for the story building of these other teams, it's all terrific. I yeah, I want t- I want competitive games. I don't want one team. Like, of course, you want to know like who's the team, who's the team to look out for because that story is exciting. But I want it to be competitive. Like last year, NA was so competitive. You literally saw the world champs getting beat in like not routinely because they still looked incredible, but there were quite a few times where the team that was the world champion and would go on to be the world champion again, were losing in some really impressive games from the region. I mean, they didn't even qualify for top eight in March last year. It's true. That's true. I dropped some Pokemon cards. Sorry. I was, I was off camera for a minute. Everybody. I I dropped a bunch (laughs) of Pokemon cards. (laughs) <laughs> just as you just are you cracking packs i should i mean if we're waiting yeah. for a game i could crack a pack <laughs> people wouldn't be mad what do you guys want to see me open a little paradox rift i got a little paradox rift for you right here do you have the new one pal day and fates i don't i gotta get a box no. yeah, but i don't even a- know why i have these <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna, I'm going to get all these and I'm going to put a binder together and I'm just going to give it away to somebody. Just take it. Yeah, it's a links. Anyway, <laughs> just a quick little handoff. If we see each other again soon, mm-hmm. that'd be great. Let me see. Does this work? Yeah. Energy card. Go. Normal I guess it's energy. Dream, huh? Onyx. <laughs> Nicket. Flittle. Onyx. Knackley. Professor Turo's scenario. Weird. Mind show. Rika. <laughs> Minior, Jirachi. A lot of people want Jirachi and Unite as a supporter. I, yeah. I'm fully mm-hmm. with you. And It'd oh, we so actually good. got a hit right away. Ooh, Tapu Koko EX. Very cool. We got a hit. Are Minior you? and Jirachi are, seem like big wins to me. Minior is pretty good, right? Doesn't it like absolutely demolish that Snorlax stall deck? Yeah, Thanks. bro. Yeah, I'm like not playing cards. Them. I'm collecting pretty cards. What are you not getting here? <laughs> yeah. Well, Minior is a pretty. You have a reverse Hollow Minior there. That's a pretty card. No, mm-hmm. no, no. You don't know things. <laughs> okay. They're only pretty also, if I deem them pretty at the end. Spraggles, uh, I'm pretty sure you could do an okay Professor Turo's cosplay. Mm, you're probably right, actually. I think I think you should do that. <laughs> I think that needs to happen. Yeah, I could do a Professor Turo. Be pretty epic. Please tell me you guys just saw Chelvin's tweet. It's amazing. What is it? Oh no. It's it's did you do it? Yes, and it's like Thanos with Slowbro on his head. What did it cost? <laughs> Everything. And it's his Machamp and Talon plan. <laughs> <laughs> I love Chelvin. It's pretty man. good. Guys group. It's pretty good. Gosh. Okay, so Jirachi for Unite would be awesome. 
If it's it's such a good it's such a good option. I mean, it'd be another wish healer. So you would have to kind of come up with a new um a new mechanic for wish to work, but it's not uh -huh. like unites strangers to that. Yeah, There's I mean what, they've got eight serves different serves in the game. Yeah. yeah. So which I I wanted to, I don't know where I went on this rant, but I'm gonna go out and get here. I think that's one of the best things that Pokemon has done. Um, in terms of I've always said that the design of the characters is really really good, but I feel like the fact that the moves are different and feel very unique to those Pokemon, like how they would do it. I feel like it's a very good demonstration of how Pokemon would look in a application like that. So I think it, I think they do a great job. I think some of the things that happen in Unite are uh, absolutely like under appreciated because you're yes. right like we yes. get to see things in unite you don't see in any other pokemon game well kind of you you get like versions of this with like pokin or something you know but when you get yeah. to see it in a different way like yeah what is surf for 10 different pokemon like what does that look like right what, exactly what, what does like, swift look like for all these different evs it's cool to see mm -hmm. it's so cool Bone <gasps> sweet. scream tail he's so cute man scream tail for unite and garnacle that could be a fun defender. Garganackle. Garganackle. That's, that's how I've always said it. I don't know. You're, you're right. I, I'm. I. I. My talent is pronouncing every Pokemon's name incorrectly. <laughs> remember I when think... you said Pokemon's and we thought you were gonna get fired? <laughs> I do remember that. Uh, this is a true story, everybody. On broadcast, <laughs> I accidentally said Pokemon's. I'm well aware it's not Pokemon's. It's just you're you're speaking quickly, and you know things happen. And on broadcast, I accidentally said Pokemons, and it was an immediate note uh, in the, the our like little shared Discord that was like, it is not Pokemons. Just so you know, you're sitting on the standard match thing. I don't know if that... Is that where they, we see them? That's where custom games go. Okay, yeah. cool. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. They're taking their sweet time getting into game number two. Oh, what's wrong with my display here? Why is this not working? I don't know. Have I had more audio issues, by the way? Is it Parsec been okay? Uh, the only uh, audio fine. issue is you're talking too much at this point. Yep, absolutely. Oh, okay, it's a Metagross game. Have fun. No way, really? <laughs> yeah, so game two. So Convicts will be on your left-hand side of your screen, or purple, and Yellow Bingo are going to be orange. And yes, Convicts are going to be playing the Metagross. All right. And Convicts is old Zephyr. Yeah, minus here I added Oni. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All Very right. cool. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And this is Yellow Bingo's match point. So they are at 1 0. So Orange is up 1 0. Okay. Okay. Looking and they've good. got a hell of a comp, too. I mean, what is That's a I disgusting mean, this is the most... team comp, honestly. I, I this mean, we got Meowskarata and Metagross. Like, they're, they're bringing out that new new, and we're going to see how it works. I mean, this is Zephyr to a T, though, right? We saw this out of them over and over again. And yes, Harai is not there, but their core of four players is. And they were unconventional is an understatement, I believe, right? They had the Zephyr house building crew last year, and now they're just going off the rails with these picks. And across the way, you literally have, like, all of the best Pokemon in their respective slot uh, in competitive sense. Like, just absolute monsters. You know, the interesting thing about seeing this Meowskarata in the center here, but giving up a little bit to the Leafeon, is it actually doesn't spike, really, at 5. So, you're not super stressed about it, you know? It's, uh... Mm -hmm. It, it, you're not getting a new move at five, so you're actually okay giving up some experience to power up your Leafeon. I like that strategy a lot. That's a fun way to work with the fact that it doesn't have the best level five gank. On the other hand, though, they've got, a, I think it's Beldum, uh, which literally just looks like one of Metagross's legs uh, cruise around in the top path here. Iclis wanting to hit uh, Eldegoss quickly because I think they're going to be needed to facilitate these two other Pokemon in their lane. Yeah, they kind of have this tough leveling curve right uh on the side of convicts and we have some earlier strong pokemon but potatoes not five yet so this actually is a little bit of a fair fight it's just about everything goes down to their side they just hit level five they have the ability to push in and they are slowly walking towards that side the red buff doing enough to push them back though they got scared of making the advance which is exactly what you hoped for if you're on the side of convicts. It's, man, I hope they don't follow up here. Eichlis kind of going off the reservation to bully a little bit and A-press to make sure that um, Yala did not step up. But uh, alas, fruitless endeavor as the Gossip Floor goes down quickly because Neverix, the Matang, is on the backside trying to get their stacks into. 
And, you know, I was wondering which kind of Metagross we were going to see because I think both are totally viable. Uh, we obviously have Gyro Ball right here, which is more of a brawling setup. Of course, it has, you know, really good secure. It's very strong, but it doesn't have the secure potential that you would see out of Meteor Mash. It's definitely more of the brawler, and that's what they're looking to do inside this fight. And we also have the Flower Trick coming out from Meow Scarada. The only kind of Meow Scarada that I've seen competitively is Flower Trick. Well, uh, the trick here is going to be defending this goal zone because it's just a Matang Miascarada up here and they've got four players collapsing. You've even got Zvim in the back line ready to just pepper in as the Drizzile with the big heavy rotation up top. Looks like they want to take care of this goal zone quickly. It's 60s gets collapsed on. They get KO'd and an absolute KO streak of two here. And Oni pulls up and they get one. So all of a sudden... This the Convicts crew is coming alive. Yeah, and I mean, this is what I was just talking about. You saw Matang there. It was outmanned, but at the same time, all of the Pokemons on the other side are going to give it a <laughs> shield when it hits with that Gyro Ball, which is huge. You are fired, I think. Nice I little surf by Classics for Spacing Oni comes up with the Solar Blade and gets a good secure. Um, shout out to Convicts. Uh, it's starting to make me a little bit of a believer. I thought they got gaffed on the, gapped on the draft screen, uh, but they're finding a way to make this thing happen. And teams like this that play unconventionally all the time tend to find a way. Uh, look at that four in that top goal zone right here as we head down to the bottom path. Reg Ice looking very, very good here for our orange team. However, we've got the Leafy on right here. It's definitely not over. Big Unite move, and they can hit with another Solar Blade right now, and they do. <laughs> Oni absolutely understanding the assignment, jumping to the back. I mean, that Inteleon had no shot, dude. It was literally so. Was it? Uh, like the Leaf Blade engage, Solar Blade, and then the two step to get the KO. And then after that, you get the free Solar Blade again to secure the objective. Too easy, my guy. Then now they're going after 60s. Raytal showing no fear. Going to have to use that little illusion to bully out as that flower trick was on top of the Venusaur. And now they're going to get all of the Swablu and Altari in the middle. Yeah, and you can see, actually, we've got ourselves a Petal Dance Giga Drain Venusaur, which I think is the first one we've seen today. We had a few moments mm -hmm. where we were wondering if that was actually going to be pulled out and played here uh, a little earlier when we saw some Giga Drains. It's the first time we're seeing it. They're not going for that long range. They want to get in there and mix it up. They really do. Going to have to rely on Zvim to use this snipe shot to secure objectives and rein in that big damage so the Venusaur 60s can take over from the front line here. Marv puts up a rock tomb. They get surfed as they're trying to go for a score, but tons of damage is coming in. Zvim with the pot shots over the top. Cotton Cloud Crash is going to give nice separation and a push on three players of Yala. And Yala forced to scramble back and ultimately Convicts holding on to a tight lead here. I got to wonder what the thought process behind Petal Dance Giga Drain here is. I mean, part of it you go, well, the Metagross wants to brawl. I'm going to brawl with it. But also, if you're near Metagross, you're charging up shields. However, if Metagross is near Venusaur, it's charging up Giga Drain. So I'm not sure if it's good or bad. I mean, part of me thinks Solar Beam might be stronger, but we're going to have to see how it plays out in some of these big fights. Well, there it is, right into the Unite move, playing through. I mean, there are so many Unite moves just hit, but it's two players down for Yala. They're catching the back end of that. Finally, the Metagross goes down after buying back all those shields with its moveset and its Unite move. Only able to score on the backside, and they're going to try and get out of dodge. Potatoes on the chase, chipping them up, putting them down. And that's a nice little suplex to get the KO as Marvin Classics, the defenders for each team, are literally just 1v1ing in the bottom path. Yeah, I think it was a nice little KO there from the, you know, uh, Buzzwell. But at the same time, you'll take that KO every day for a 40 in that tier two. And that's what they were able to do right there. And it looks like Meow Scrod is not going to be able to defend this at all. Nice big overcap in the top path for Yala Bingo. Reggie Alecki getting chipped down right now. No one is here to deal with it on the side of Convicts as they are heading towards the bottom path, getting ready for this bottom objective. Rubble Rouser, the Unite move from Crustle. And we just learned the name to just learned the name of it, but it looks good. Crust been looking good all day. And now that the attention is split, they're going to try and score on the backside here. Eichlis able to just A press them down. Registeel is there. It is quickly secured by Oni. Not going to leave it up to chance using the Solar Blade to secure that. Snipe shot goes wide, but 60s is on the chase. They're jumping out of Ray Tao, who loses the illusion, and everybody falls for it here. As now the Cotton Cloud crash hits four players. Eichlis getting tons of value out of that move. 
moving forward, but it's a nice little block roll by the Clefable to try and see if they can push. Internal can't get any value there as they're moving forward, and that's the Meowth Karate United is chasing now Marv. Marv gets space, Giga Train is there, but now they can collapse on top of 60s. The flower little bomb symbol is up, but nothing goes off as there are no players down right now for Yala. You know, something I think is actually really powerful about this uh, pedal dance, though, is it looks like you're able to heal and proc your Giga Drain and pedal dance off of the double team. So there's a little that you're countering with Meowskarada as well on this Venusaur right here. And it's setting it up so you're not going to be able to flower trick and get the KOs. It's pretty... It's pretty interesting to see this strategy, but it's just really setting up so that Venusaur can't be KO'd by the dive either, which is pretty cool. As we head into the last 40 seconds here before Ray, 146, 123, tier 1's up for both teams in the bottom path. A game that is incredibly close. Yala looking to win this thing and secure their spot in the top 8. 25 seconds until Rayquaza hits the map. Marv just defending this bound goal zone. I don't know if any of these teams are going to try to jockey now. If we're going to go for an early fight, I mean, they were quickly chunked by that Solar Blade forcing a retreat here with just 15 seconds until Ray. These, these teams are starting to posture up and position in the middle. Yeah, they're getting ready for it. They are pretty aware that this game is close, right? I think neither team knows for sure they're ahead. Purple probably knows they're slightly ahead, but this game is incredibly close right now. They were just informed that they are slightly ahead inside this match. Not a close battle. So now it's going to be up to Yala to try to make a decision right here, to try to make a play to see what they can do to win this game. We have Buzzwool walking up to the tall grass on the top path. We have the positioning down here near the tier ones. Obviously no one wants to give up an easy goal near these tier ones. The more the time drains, the better this is for convicts. Yeah, that's without a doubt. However, Marv is like the future site out here in a crustle, just peppering in these rock tubes, finding all the targets and trapping these players. Snipe shots are ringing true as well. Potato's looking for an opportunity. Neverix uh, is looking for a position on Potato. Now this Rayquaza is getting chunked a little bit. They're trying to leash in a play here. The Convicts and Yala just dancing back and forth. Not quite in the action. Rayquaza is at half. So there's a move that needs to be made. That Snipe shot fading between two players. Finds certainly that one. Engagement and then right into the slow beam. They're going for the follow up and this is it. Metagross gets on the backside right on top of the Intellion. They're looking for the KO. Potato picks up, slams down Neverix out of their own Coliseum. They're pivoting back the other way and finally slow bro goes down the right in the middle and you're looking at the Giga Drain pedal dance combination at work right now. They're pivoting up two players down for each side but who's got the more firepower? I'm taking a look and you've got to believe it's on the side of purple as they're looking for more moves. Six is going to get back half of the Oh, they almost got stopped by the, what is it, a Diggers bee? I don't know what that thing's called, but we're scoring on backside both way. There's 10 points separating these two teams, Fraggles. Wow, this is so incredibly close. 30 seconds left, and neither team can know that they are ahead right now. 232 to 223. This is so incredibly close, but they're going to need to do something on the side of orange to make this work. Ray is getting extremely low. The Solar Blade is ready, but it was too early. Secured here by Clefable. We have 10 seconds left, but they need to make something happen. They are dashing towards a goal zone right now. Clefable is going to make it. The points are raining in. Wow. They are able to pull out a victory right there at the end. The Solar Blade just misses. Yo, Yala Bingo hits all the right numbers here, and they find themselves into next week. What a showdown. Of course, they flip back on the screen. We were looking at them in the other optic here, but purple, what was orange, takes a big-time win. Good game. Good yeah. game. I mean, Convicts played uh, an incredible game right there. Again, if you were watching the teams uh, flip at the end because we don't know which is actually purple, which is actually orange. But Yala Bingo pulled off a victory right at the end with that rip. Unfortunately, Oni misses the Solar Blade secure. They were set up for it, but you know, it's tough as it's getting chipped down. You don't know how fast it's going to burn. You don't know who has moves up. You just try your best to secure at the end, but they couldn't do it, and the points actually go the way of Yala Bingo, who secures their spot in our top eight. What a game. That was an absolute show uh, between these two teams. And I'm glad we got to witness it and jump into that one. Uh, and that means that uh, um, formerly, I'm so stuck on Zephyr in my brain right now. Um, Convicts is jumping down, but as Zoinks mentioned before, they're kind of in another winning in right now because of how the loser's bracket works. They drop down and they essentially get another bite at the apple on a best of three. Yeah. They will have nouns in their side of the bracket now, though. 
So it'll be whatever team makes it to the end of this run, it's Nouns and Plush Keepers, who are kind of the two main names that I can see in this run, mm -hmm. are the two teams that'll have to go up against Convicts. So a very, very difficult <laughs> end of that bracket road. Yeah, tough loss. A lot of people saying just bad timing in the chat. It It is tough, but one thing is really hard about a secure like that is you really don't know how fast it's just going to be ripped. It, it's tough. Right. It, Of course, it's easy, uh, you know, out here in the cheap seats to say like, ah, they missed <laughs> the they missed the solar blade or whatever. Um, but it's which, of course, they did. It was too early, but it's really tough. Because had another move land from the opponent team, now you've got the late Solar Blade. So it's a, uh, it's a real small window that you've got to kind of make your make your play in. Yeah. It's a, it's a little different than like in solo queue when you hit the prayer Solar Blade right to kind of bring your team back in it and secure an objective. Um, in these team fights, it's it feels a little bit more chaotic because there's a lot of things you're trying to take into consideration, as you mentioned, Spragles, and of course. Uh, when your team's not in control of the rip, it makes it even harder to judge when to use. Yeah, it's really tough. It's really, really tough. They had to rip. They had to make a play. And from the chat, yes, says I would have won. Uh, <laughs> it's you, you got to rip. You got to make a play. But you know, it's uh, uh, it's hard. It's hard when you're the team not ripping to know where their moves are at for sure. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. We can um we can jump into Giga Chad Gaming versus Team Allegiance. They have their uh, they're in their first round of their losers round five best of three, um and then they're a team we have not seen yet. So if we want to take a look at them, we can. Where is Nouns at in their series? Uh yeah, we can pivot to Nouns. I would love to see, see Nouns. Um, sure. And then I can take a break. I can go to the bathroom too. They're That'd going against uh, Goblins Paradise right now. Goblins Paradise. So I'm assuming they're completing their first game now. Okay. Um, we'll be starting up their second game soon. I can check my actual friends list to see. Sure. Minutes since match start one. So it sounds like they're going into their second game, and we'll have we'll have spectate up with them in about a minute or so. Great. Yeah, uh, we can watch a little they're nouns. In... They're down there with Goblins Paradise in the losers oh. bracket. They've been spending most of their losers bracket living in a Goblins Paradise. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what that looks like. That's an old reference, but I got to assume that's yeah. what they're referencing. Shout out Coolio. Um, oh, well, yeah, as always, sorry. We got to the point of the stream. Shout out Coolio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forgot to shout out Coolio. Yeah. And we know you're watching Coolio. Yeah. Uh, for your hits, uh, you know, from the, from the, what, the 1992 classic Dangerous Minds. <laughs> is, is that the right movie? I have no idea. That is the movie, yes. Um, Goblin's Paradise, that. by the way, going through a pretty crazy losing yeah, no. run to get this. I was just looking at this. They went down round one, and they have carved their way all the way back up to face an ounce. So, <laughs> pretty sick pretty sick run from them so far. I thought this was the case. I don't want to be a downer, but Coolio is dead. They did die two years ago. Okay. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't want to be a downer. <laughs> you didn't want to be a downer? I didn't want to, but we gave a shout out to Coolio, but uh, <laughs> wait, wait. rest in peace. Wait, is, I forgot. Is Coolio dead or just knocked out? Well, I mean, on this stream, technically, they're knocked out. Got it. But like, just permanently, I guess. Yeah, I guess oh so. God. It's had some connotations. I don't know. <laughs> I guess so. A lot of people saying they liked uh, Weird Al's version better. Well, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> weird, weird Al, you know. Yeah, sometimes Weird Al hits. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Is there an update on Team YT? We're in EU right now. Uh, so oh, no. NA has not started uh, gaming yet. What time do they start gaming, Zoinks? Uh, bear in mind that... You don't know. Yeah, four, uh noon your time. Noon, noon your time is what okay. they start. So a few more hours until NA even starts gaming. Yeah. Yeah. We have signed ourselves up for a long day today. I think my capture card's dying, if anyone's concerned. <gasps> no! Capture card? I do. I think, look at this. What is going on with this thing? It's like dead or something. Elgato? It keeps, like, cutting out. While well, we're waiting for our next match. Yeah. I wanted to show people what we were talking about earlier. What? About what? I should just have your stream up, I guess. I wanted to show people the Blaze again. Oh. You can do this with a few Pokemon. You know, you've got the... 
uh, potential to do this with Dark Bear. You got there are a lot of Pokemon that have sort of this combination, but we saw this cool play earlier, so I just kind of wanted to show everybody what exactly was happening in that moment. I'm going to use this amazing tutorial to take a breath, uh, restroom break. I'll be right back. Great. So, this is Blaze again. So you got to check this Pokemon out. It's sick. Um, I, yeah, I keep hearing that. I think I might try it. A lot of people have been messaging me about it recently. I think a few times. So, when you have Overheat, uh, you're able to reposition Overheat with an Eject button. We saw this play earlier. Uh, and the play we saw was someone positioning their overheat this way and you think like, ah, it's just gonna kick that way. It's not gonna do too much. And uh, I'm gonna turn my move cooldowns off just in case I miss this here, because it's a little easy to miss. But you could set up your overheat to be going the wrong direction and then eject button right exactly where you wanna go. So you could be setting up your overheat wherever you want and then ejecting it towards the enemy in a moment like that. We saw that for a huge secure in a match earlier. So when Blaziken is around the pit and has its eject button up you're able to make a play like that uh which is exactly why you kind of have to run eject on this pokemon because the crazy crazy plays you can make with it are just too good you can do the same thing on dark bear you can do the same thing on i mean obviously blastoise unite move there are lots of moves that you can push uh, a lot further with an eject button that people don't even really notice here. Like Greedent Unite, Dragonite Unite, I think is a really cool one that people don't notice. You can actually throw your Unite move uh, further than people expect. Dragonite Unite, one of the toughest Unites I feel like to hit because it's so telegraphed, but you can actually push forward and get some value out of it. Yeah, Lucario. You get eject right, we... with a Venusaur Solar Beam, you know? Oh. Um, okay, so we got it reported on Star GG now. Noun's Esports did win their first mat, uh, game okay. against Goblins Paradise, and their game number two is ready to go. Can Leafy on Solar Blade do it? Yeah, it can. It can. Uh, then, does the same logic follow me here, Spraggles? Tell me if this works or not. Because I know, I, I learned the other day on Overlord stream that follow me can change Solar Beam or Solar Blade aiming yeah. uh, for Leafy on. Can it do the same thing with Overheat? Wow, great question. I don't know if I've ever seen that interaction. Maybe. Can you? Because that would be insane. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> would. would. So I, not, I don't think I've seen that interaction. Follow me's weird. I mean, it was banned for so long because of how weird it is. Are you going to bring us into this game? Oh, yeah. I was just waiting for Kirk to get back. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go into Either it. way, we could, we could wait for it or we could, uh, we could go. We, cast it. we could try cast it, you know? <laughs> we could <laughs> give it a, a shot. It might be a nightmare. Yeah, sometimes it is. <laughs> uh, who are they up against again? Sorry. Oh yeah, Goblin's, Goblin's Paradise. Paradise. GP. Doctor Gallo TTV. Cool name. We got the Lucario coming back out. Mm -hmm, Strong comps mm -hmm. on both sides. We see that Dark Bear. Everyone's favorite. Here we go. I I actually I know I agreed with you um, about Urshifu recently, but I don't know. To me, it feels like the meta game is pivoting in a secure focus again, and it feels like Dark Bear and Dragonite and Leafeon. Like I don't know, they feel very very good. It's not even that it's bad. I don't think it is bad actually. It's just um, I I feel like through most of the game, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's popping off. But then the moments you need it for, it's absolutely the call right here. I'm trying to stop Buzzy Boy uh, from scoring, but Adesu with a beautiful Astonish right there to make sure that Megu could get the points in here in the top half. Mm. Nice secure there from Lucario, but Lucario is getting very close to going down, having to run back. Yeah, if people on your stream regulars are watching Nouns for the first time potentially this year or this season compared to last one, it might be strange to see a Desu picking up the support role and not playing that main damage dealer role that we've seen from them before. But I got to say, a Desu is an incredible support. It has been so fun to watch them play. Hoopa in particular, their Blissey is also really, really good, but their Hoopa play is... I don't know, it's kind of breathtaking, in my opinion. Look at that one, two, three, four, five punch combo there from Grub <laughs> and Toon Slim in the bottom path. We've got a mean look Umbreon, which is going to live up to its name throughout this match. Gets the KO, actually, on Brub right there. Now we have an eject button into another okay. mean look, looking for another KO. Wow, it's extremely aggressive right there. I like the energy, East Stark. Not gonna lie. Here, going up against the Dallas Esports, you've been on a loser's bracket demon run. You gotta make some fancy stuff happening. Maybe a Jack Button Umbreon is the tech. 
It could be. Jeez. And we got Utah mm -hmm. here uh, in the central area of Goblins as we see more points trying to be reined in towards this bottom path. We don't know Bruv's items could be stacking. I would guess so with such a small normally dunk does. like that. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. tree is like, it, it, you kind of require it on tree, it feels like. It's just so good with stacking items. Megu, of course, stacking. Any top path Pokemon is going to stack. You just, you yeah. really have to. Yeah, I, I think tree is a weird one. The stacking items are great on it, but focus band is also unbelievably strong on tree which is it's tough to take that move uh, that item away in my opinion when i've been running it at least at the very least not surprising to see rapid spin on tune i was even going to say i i bet he plays it as more of a spin carry uh, in this situation you could really go either way but rapid spin is actually pretty slept on inside the game it's just because blastoise yeah. is so good with anything it does but Rapid Spin Water Spout is still unbelievably brutal. And against things like Inteleon, it's an absolute, like, devastating Beyblade mm -hmm. into that Pokemon's squishy, squishy heart. Yeah, even the mobility options that Inteleon has, just sometimes you can't can't deal with the devastating pit spinning top. And here we go. They are ripping this up. And with the great secure that you're getting from Dark Bear, I mean, yeah, what a nice partner to have for it. Big, easy secure. What a huge wood hammer as the solar beam is looking to get a secure right here. Lucario barely gets it right there. No, it was Inteleon somehow. Yeah, Inteleon showed up just in time, but uh, I think the, <laughs> the KO of the Reggie Alecki is all they are going to find. It's now it's Esports walks all over the other direction. Megu putting up a KO streak of four, and Reggie Alecki isn't even going to make its way out of its spawn area. And here we go. Points being scored there by Utah. Obviously, they want to stack up as well. Megu already is fully stacked in this situation <laughs> and can sit in the top path and make some sneaky plays towards that tier two, especially with the time on the clock. We are only at six minutes, so there's plenty of time to try to score without a pad for the enemy team to be able to jump on you with. Toon Slim down in this bottom path right here, just continuing to farm up and get very, very strong, trying to secure everything they can down here, considering that these two goal zones are still up. Yep. Level 9 as well, so the Unite move is available. You gotta be careful to not get all your shields just swiped by an Umbreon. However, sometimes it's just the value is too worth it. You gotta just pull the trigger, but uh, you do gotta play it pretty safe around an Umbreon. Seems like on paper a pretty decent counter into your Unite move. Looking at the, you know, team of nouns right here, the Umbreon, I'm not sure, obviously, whoever you catch, it's it's great to catch somebody with it, but I'm not sure mm -hmm. who they want the most. Buzzwool would be a really amazing target if you were able to just stick it in that mean look for a second and hopefully yeah. take it out of one of these fights, especially with that level advantage. We are watching two huge scores going towards the top path right now. Again, there are no pads, there's no one around, and Nouns Esports just put in 80 points. Yikes. Yeah, Easterk not going to be able to make it through the relentless attacks of Toon Slim with that Hydro Typhoon. And Adesu is going to bring the cool crew downstairs as well to fight over the next objective. Big stun on a Venusaur, isolates them for a moment, forces the Unite move, and Utah actually goes down. Uh, Belena able to pick up that knockout as Bruv trying to work on the support side of things. Adesu trying to get some revenge onto the Inteleon. Yeah, nice KO right there, but in general, uh, nice KO on the Urshifu, but in general, I mean, we've got nothing happening right now for Goblin's Paradise and yep. everything happening for Nouns. 305 to 4, and if I could do some quick mental math, that's almost 200 points ahead. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, um, oh, it's, it's not mental bad. math. It's not supposed to be exactly accurate. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll do the get. long form division on paper later, but yeah, so far it's seeming okay. Uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> I'm really glad you brought up the mean look earlier, Spraggles, because I actually think this, on paper, reads as a very good foul play game for Umbreon, and I'm kind of surprised we're not seeing it. I think it's just because mean look is so dumb. Um, I know, but you don't, like, all you have is Snipe Shell. I guess you're running Solar Beam as well to try to play with it. I, okay, never mind. You're going Double Sniper, that makes sense. If you're going Double Beams, it works. However, into Buzzwool Urshifu, like, Foul Play goes kind of nuts. It does, and Foul Play is amazing. The thing about Mean Look, and I, I don't know uh, uh, enough about Goblin's Paradise. I'm not trying to say this in a negative way. But the thing about Mean Look is whether you're high skill 
Umbreon player or a low skill Umbreon player, it's still going to provide massive value because mm -hmm. you are shutting down a player on the enemy team and there's really nothing that they can do about it. Um, yeah, so if there's someone on the enemy team who's insane and you're just trying to figure out a way to take them down, Mean Look gives you that opportunity. Yep. Yeah, it's always going to be great. It works very well in a team environment, like even better than solo cube somehow. So it's uh, it's going to be a great asset to any team that can use it well. Rev scooping the Inteleon forces the eject button. Uh, three minutes, they won't have it for that basement Reggie fight. Inteleon going to have to play even safer than they normally are forced to. It's funny. I'm seeing in the chat, would love to see uh, Nouns versus LG in the World Finals. That was actually year one of Pokemon Unite. You saw oh, yeah, yeah. Blackhand <laughs> versus back. Nouns in the World Finals. That was a that was a really fun series too. I uh, I mean it was it was pretty one sided, but it was uh, it was a fun series. I'll tell you what, uh, Blackhand ascended now Luminosity. Luminosity uh, when they go to the Grand Finals, uh, they don't make it look close. No, I mean <laughs> they just their destroy them. And if you're going to pick a trademark, that's a great one to do. Uh, yeah, winning really solidly do. in the grand yeah, finals yeah, yeah. of Worlds, that's not a bad, it's not a bad yeah. thing to be known for. It's good branding, and they should keep it up. Ooh, Adesu reading Eastark's little ambush position. At the final minutes, this is a very aggressive setup for Goblin's Paradise. They are giving up all position around the ray, and Megu wants to completely rip apart their positioning. Great. Great hole right there from the Hoopa. I mean, incredible. Saving that Buzzwolves. This fight is now going horribly Jeez. for Goblin's Paradise. Buzzwool possibly going down right there, but the positioning of that hyperspace hole let Buzzwool make it out, and now no one from Goblin's Paradise could do anything about it. Just absolutely devastating them. Megu just kind of looking at Ray. I mean, that's what you get to do. <laughs> Give it in a mean look of its own. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure Buzzwell can learn mean luck if we're gonna <laughs> if we're gonna go down that rabbit trail. But yeah, impressive stuff. Nouns Esports keep their losers bracket run alive, taking down yet another team. Goblins Paradise going down. I think this will put them in the top thirty-two of all teams, which I believe still receives some championship points, if I'm being correct. Um so yeah, impressive stuff. Yeah. Really great stuff right there from Nouns, and of course, you would expect it. Yeah, for everybody here on YouTube, smash that like button. I feel like we haven't brought it up, but yeah, go ahead and smash that like button. There's mm -hmm. uh, more of you here than there are likes. That seems insane. That means some of you even. have yeah. not liked. Crazy, isn't it? Quit that. Yeah, hey, <laughs> hey. Get up in there. Hey, quit it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh quit gosh. not liking it. <laughs> I hate that about you. All right, let's find let's find another game. Yeah, what shall are we going we? to next, Zoinks? Well, we're getting into the kind of tricky part of the of the coverage where I'm running out of teams that we have, but we still have some. Um, a B C D is in their first game. We could jump into their first game. Giga Chad is in their second game. Maybe we do Giga Chad versus Team Allegiance for their second game. Sure, we haven't seen uh, either of these teams on stream yet, right? Yeah, we have not. So Giga Chad will be up 1-0 and on your purple side, and Team Allegiance will be on your orange side. Oof, Allegiance. And Doomsnex, are you back? I am back. All right, sweet. Take it away. It's a hard Yay! name to spell, Allegiance. I don't know how to do it. It's uh, some say impossible. A-L-L-L-I-E-A-G-A-N-C-E-R? Perfect. Got close. That sounds correct to me. We're on the side of Giga Chad Gaming, a team that we were introduced to uh, last year. Um, and honestly, put up some pretty uh, decent results. Um, a big surprise to us when they kind of hit the scene um, and then never really went away. Um, so much so that they actually propagated a spinoff team in Giga Chad Retirement Home uh, out of some of their older players that have found themselves now on a different team uh, this year. Blissey invade? The Blissey invade and they steal the blue buff. I mean, just so incredibly cruel. Uh, as uh, I'm sure you know, Venusaur oh, yeah. is not the best secure tool in the game. It's got its boosted, but besides that, it's in a lot of trouble here as Blissey is just bullying this Pokemon right now. Glaceon grabbing the red buff. Oh, man, what a start right here. Beautiful stuff from Allegion C-E-R. Well, that can't be right. Uh, 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 Lee, uh, Lee again, sir. Sounds right. Now we're moving through. I mean, 
Poor Laura has to now pivot to the top path and take some of those bundle bees just to try and catch up to all the experience they just lost. Unfortunately, they're getting dwarfed by their counterparts on the other side here. Big Buzzwool engagement can't quite hit level five. And honestly, they stem the tide decently on the side of Giga Chad, given how this game just started for them. Yeah, I mean, what a start right here. We see the Inteleon in a little bit of trouble. Oh, the Fell Stinger, they make it into the bush. Can we just get one auto attack? They do, one auto attack, and it does take them down right there. I mean, it's a sad start. It's such a sad start that they now have Clefable babysitting this Bulbasaur in the central area. Yeah, it would rather be in path trying to help out uh, Urzaron, but a nice little pivot to keep the defender there. At least it gives them somewhat of a chance. Again, a Scald Bro game. Spraggle's not something I'm particularly excited about uh, just because Surf seems so much stronger to me right now. Scald's great, but it does feel like a solo queue play. It, it definitely doesn't feel like the play that you're making in competitive. But as you can see in these moments, it does a lot of damage. It provides a nice slow. It hits in an area. You can get some decent secures with it. it it does feel like it pales uh, in comparison to Surf, but a lot of teams are out here running it. Yeah, and I mean, maybe uh, maybe it's it's me that's uh, just behind the times, if you will. I've been wrong before, I'll be wrong again. I just, every time you hit a Surf Plus in the end of the game on multiple players, it just seems like the strongest thing going yeah. that a defender can be doing. So it's just, maybe I'm a little jaded by that experience. Yeah, you might be a little jaded right here. Toby in some trouble. Big old snipe shots landing in the bottom path. Clefable eating a massive icicle spear right here as they are going to pull back. Actually able to defend on this goal zone. Buzzwell trying to make that not a possibility. The egg bomb, the ice spear, the follow me stopping it right here. Jeez, I mean, just so much damage being put onto this top path goal, but it doesn't look like they are able to crack the defenses. Yeah, great work by Indigo and Urzeron to pivot around each other to each take their turn taking about half the Icicle Spears. So neither of them really get put in danger of being knocked out so long as they're standing on their tier one goal zone. Uh, so, I mean, this three player push has been stymied by two players playing in tandem, playing very well together. Danny looking for an opportunity to take this Regirock. That snipe shot is not ready to go, which means Laura, who is level seven, takes over to level eight, can secure that with a solar beam. Urzeron's pivoting back, but now Indigo gets poached and put down right in the face of this Glaceon, and their partner in crime is not there to eat any of those Icicle Spears for them. That's a KO. If you're wondering why the Buzzwool's damage at the end of the game is going to be insane, it's because it's been fighting for four minutes straight on this goal. It's just continuing this fight, and somehow they are still not able to crack the code. This safe is just unbreakable in this top path with this Slowbro and Clefable. And something that can't be understated is that Clefable and Slowbro left with the objective. Like they, <laughs> it's now uh, Allegiancers that are dealing with this Regieleki swimming into their direction. Now we've got this Fanry online with these side shocks. Rops is real low, gets KO'd, and a nice little eject button by the Blasto, so they don't get knocked out either. Uh, Giga Chad Gaming again, horrible, horrible start. Like you can't really draw it up worse, but finding a way to stay in this game. Yeah, they're fighting back. They're finding a way to continue this fight. And the top path has just been so impressive. I can't believe it. I guess it's the Skull Diff. And we're just wrong about it right here because they're fighting so well against what should have broken them a few times. It feels like Buzzwool, Blissey, and Glaceon. It's, yeah. Uh, there's there's no way we could have drawn up a different situation for them there um, except for the expected one which is they lose the goal zone. Glaceon Unite is here they're going to be put pressure on. Nice snipe shot eats the Gardevoir very quickly and now they're able to push into the central area. Indigo tries to use follow me to close the gap onto Laura to get the healing there but they're mean look down and now it's up to Toby to get the spacing with this surf stories. nice hydro pump blocks all three. Indigo steps up rolls block on their Unite move and getting the, the shields up from that as well so uh, this goal zone is yet again protected. Maybe the defensive best defensive team we've seen today, Sprite. Yeah, incredible defense out here. It's amazing as tier ones are up for both teams in top and bottom path. Blastoise trying to push them away from Red Ice. We have the Inteleon Unite move. They're looking for a bit of a secure. Venusaur Unite comes right in, followed by a solar beam, and that's the secure. That's a terrific secure, secure side shock on Rops again. Snipe shots rain in, but actually hit the Clefable, which is a phenomenal target, which means Laura can pivot back and push into these mid birds. Um, so Giga Chat Gaming is really 
every inch that they are given, they are taking a mile, and they are, again, keeping pace all of a sudden in a game that started so, so poorly for them. Yeah, this is just a, a real back-and-forth match, and you can see how both of these teams are just expertly positioning themselves in a way to not give up too much of the, uh, to their opponents, even when things aren't going super well for either side. 18 to 57, under four minutes on the clock. Tier one's up for both teams. The brawl never stops between these two, and it's so impressive to watch. We got the Bliss assistance onto an Umbreon. I mean, it's just, as I've said before, you're three minutes 30. You're kind of in a use it or lose it situation. They're hoping they can make something happen right here. But in general, everyone just scraps a little bit and heads back home. I am continuously, continuously impressed with Indigo right here. The way they've been able to step up, get their Moonlights into the right spots, and make sure that they're eating attacks for the other players on their team. Rolls fly, able to crash land right into the Fairy Singularity. That's three players down instantly. They're sieging this goal zone and add a little bit of offense out of Giga Chad Gaming, getting tons of points in here. And I believe that ends up being a, just a 10 over, but they'll take it at this point because that means the lead, Spragles. If Scald wins right here, okay, I was going to say, if Scald somehow wins against this Buzzwall right here, that we have to say we were wrong about everything. Maybe it's a great counter to Buzzy Boy, and that's what we're seeing. Obviously, Clefable in a little bit of trouble right here, as we have a big push up here in the top path from Allegiance. They want to make sure that they can get something after losing that bottom goal zone. The nice thing about Gardevoir right now is you can make a three-minute Unite move. You can make a play like that. Not every Pokemon can. That's the reason that you play something like this. It's the reason you got aggressive in this moment. Reggie Alecki moving towards this goal zone. The snipe shots also moving in. The Icicle Spears trying to find their mark. It looks like they're going to be able to defend this once again. Just the iron wall that they are running into from Giga Chad. Indigo is amazing. Like, they are rotating so well in front of their other players to eat those snipe shots, eat the Icicle Spears, rotating right onto pad to get just enough shield and health back with their own Moonlight. And now they're rolling downstairs with full HP Spraggles, despite literally taking all of the pot shots that uh, Allegiant Sir could throw their way. And here we have the calm before the storm. Obviously, Giga Chad is, you know, in the best position right here. They know they are way ahead. They have an easy goal zone to score on. However, we have a couple easy goal zones for Allegiance. They are making their way up to the top path right here, moving through this tall grass, looking for a play. If they can grab something big, they'll be able to make something happen. Glaceon just charging up its Icicle Spears right here. Blastoise zoning out near the bottom of the pit. Here's the mean look on the Venusaur. Right into the follow me, Indigo goes straight to keep the Buzzwall from engaging here. We have a big Verdant Anger back through. Bliss is just on the Buzzwall, but they get shoved really quickly. Gardevoir comes in and gets the Inteleon, two players down for Orange. Now it's the Venusaur popping off a little bit, finding their opportunities. Glaceon gets one back the other way. Buzzwall United on top of Urzeron, they are low, but who else but Indigo to step up and take that and top the players back off so they can keep scrapping up here. David comes in, Indigo eats another round of Icicle Spears and they get the KO. They're pivoting on top of Lynx and they are looking to pivot now. Laura two Yushi and Fonry are both very, very low. Indigo with a clutch follow me. Indigo is crazy, dude. That was insane, insane support play out of that player. And if Giga Chad Gaming leaves with this win, it'll be off the back of that. Rayquaz is at 50%. Linixie is coming in and so is Vitzer. They're putting the pressure on. They're trying to pincer around this Giga Chad Gaming team. Rayquaz is so low. They go for the secure. The solar beam is early, but it's like Fable again. It's Indigo again, because who else would it be at this point in time? Giga Chad Gaming scrambling to score, and it's Hundo Burger time they just need to get a couple in and they've got themselves a win right here whoa 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 what was glaceon doing what were they doing could, why did they hit ray tell couldn't tell you couldn't tell what you. on earth were they doing couldn't tell you. <laughs> i'm so confused why did they put their spears on ray right there that's so bizarre to me they know they're ahead i i have to assume they have no secure I don't even get it. I'm just, I'm kind of shocked by the 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 end of that match. Um, yeah, I'm just shocked. Why did they do that? Just, just the, maybe the patented, the patented. I mean, look, uh, there's a lot misclick. going on in the moment. I'm not trying to to harp on it. This player and be like, what are you idiot? Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean at all. I'm just so confused why why that happened. Um. Right side was down in points? No, they were up. They were up. They were up. They, they were, were up, up 137 sure. to something else. That's not right. They were up. Mm -hmm. They were definitely up. They were losing? 
Oh, did wait, did somebody peel off and score? I must have missed another score. That must be on there me. There was then. there was a score, but I thought it was to get orange side up. But yeah, I'm almost positive orange too. scored top and they were up, right? 137 to like 10 something. I'm yeah, check right this right out. here. Yeah, right, right here. They were up. Was up. Yep. Umbreon scored. Okay. <laughs> Oh well. Either, Either way, way, it's fine. Shout I, I must have, I must have missed the Umbreon again. score because that that that's what it was then. Okay. My mistake. I, I guess I was wrong there. I was just so confused. Yeah. Yo, Slowbro Attacker, looking pretty good. This is an EU tech that's been around for a while. It's been like one of the best answers to Buzzwell. It's just you play a support and Slowbro in the top lane, and you just scald on cooldown into Buzzwell, and it makes their life so so difficult. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I, just <laughs> this uh yeah. this this combination here from Giga Chad was really impressive in that top path. Yeah. Really impressive. Super good. No, yeah, Allegiance Sir was down, right? And then Umbreon peels to score. Yeah. That which gives them the lead. Yeah. And then Giga Chad has to flip. No, but I think they're I think the chat is saying that Giga Chad scored again, right? Cuz that's what I thought, but I think the chat's saying Giga, Giga Chad scored again. 48 seconds. I'm watching. Um Unless the slow bro peels to score. No, they get knocked out. 40 seconds. The four players left are attacking into the middle and then Blastoise jumps in. No, they're losing. Yeah, they're right? losing by 29. Let me look. I'm looking here too. <laughs> but now I'm, I'm just curious because I, I i i'm there's very it's very possible i'm wrong i, I could have just seen it wrong no they were losing 108 57 137 108 nobody feels to score yeah no no they did not score no i was right they were they were ahead yeah we were right we called it right yeah so, and uh, I don't mean to be weird, to but though. everyone who got it wrong, you're stupid. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you better subscribe and like you you're just, right you're, now. You're dumb. <laughs> uh, you don't know anything. I know everything. So well, take mean. that. No, but uh, I honestly, like in a moment like that, there is a lot of like um, confusion, right? I, I, mm -hmm. I was pretty sure they were ahead. Uh, but so at the question. same time, like... Obviously, we have a lot of people who did not think that. So it's clear that it was very, very close. And uh, coming from that, the chat, did they know they were winning? I think based on the call out they got, they should know they're ahead. But I guess they don't know for sure. My guess is uh, the Glaceon right there thought it was being ripped faster and was just praying. You know, I have a question. Um, is it, I, I don't exactly know how Icicle Spear works in this sense. Is it possible that they targeted onto one of the players and then they stepped behind the Rayquaza? Uh, I didn't, I didn't see, like when I was looking at the pit a second ago, uh, I didn't see that at all. I didn't, I didn't see a player even in their vision. They, they were all below it, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying though. Like, if they caught one and then that player pivoted back to the middle for the whatever for the sake. Oh, of the maybe game, they were looking the... for Venu and maybe they just missed. That's probably yeah. what it was. I think it was just a miss. Probably uh, not. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Okay. No. Do we... No. <laughs> that's not it. I, I think they. I think they just went to to take it. They just went to take it. That's all. Okay. Yep. All right. Do we want to watch? Um... So ABCD is currently up 1-0 in their series, and the winner of that series will play against GigaChad Gaming, and we can jump into their game right now to see the game too. Uh, yeah, we could do that. Okay, sounds good. So this is going to be ABCD on your orange side and Cheeky Breaky on your purple side. Okay, A through L and Cheeky Breaky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who cares? Move on to the next match. All right. <laughs> I mean, All right. Hey, we, we as the folks uh, that are QBing uh, this stream, uh, we cared. Obviously. Honestly, they I think that was to... a good conversation, though. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think who cares. I think it's really interesting to break down like what possibly happened in a in a huge moment inside of a game. Right. So sorry, right. Zoinks. I'm, I'm, I'm done. In your chat. I will turn off my. <laughs> what, what are we? What am I looking at here? What are the two teams? Uh, A B C D on your left hand side. Okay. And uh, Cheeky Breaky on your right-hand side. Mm -hmm. With the Chandelure Jungle? 
Yeah, Perfect. I mean, that's a nice little mix up here. I, we haven't seen a candle all day, eh? Been too long. And is this uh, zero, zero? It is one, zero for ABCD. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. The winner of this will play Giga Chat. Ooh, ooh, the winner of this playing Giga Chat. This is EU. We're watching the AOS Cup qualifiers, the play ins to see who gets to our top eight. We already have uh, four teams qualified, I want to say, for this top yes. eight as we see Lucario. Man, so much Lucario today out of EU. I'm interested to see if we see the same thing in NA. Did we see the same? Is Kello still in chat? What did OCE look like? Did we have a lot of <laughs> did we have a lot of Lucario there too? I don't know. I think it's the only other region that would have already happened. I think Brazil will start soon, sooner than NA, but I'm really curious worldwide as well. Uh, why am I casting? Doomsnakes, this is your turn. Bye. Hey, no, I'm just letting you I'm just letting you Yeah, talk you can hang out and vibe, sense. my friend, if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be a strict cast right now. We could take a, a quick break and just talk through you wanna, it. You want to you wanna mean, vibe it? Let's vibe it. Let's get the three of us and this is uh we'll vibe. Watch watch party vibe. Well, we'll okay, watch okay. party it. But yeah. to the to the point about uh, Lucario, when the other team gets Buzzwool and Blastoise, like what are your other picks realistically anymore? Um, and I think Lucario is a good default. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. what teams are kind of moving to, right? Is this uh, possible slight Buzzwool counter? I still don't love it, but you're right. I mean, you you run out of options, I guess. I think it's good, especially because last hit secure is just so unbelievably strong, and you can play it in lane, right? Like I would love Urshifu in that slot theoretically, but. It's just you can't bring that Pokemon into path. It's just too difficult. So I think Lucario makes some sense in that regard. I do too. Do you think Leafeon I... was banned here? Yeah, yes. I'm guessing. It's cool to see Candle. Candle's great. Mm -hmm. It's just, it is hard to slot into some teams. And, and man, it's so punishable. You know, it feels like another Decidueye in a lot of ways. It's got no mobility. But at the same time, uh, the secure on that thing, the burst on it, if you can land a single flamethrower, it just, you, you convince the whole team to scatter sometimes. Unite move is so unbelievably strong too. I, I think it took like some really top players to pick it up. I mean, Overlord played it in, in Central, just trying to showcase if you aggressively unite, like to make sure you're getting max vision obscurity or whatever the effect will be, or blinding effect on the enemy team. It's really, really strong in team fights as well. So uh, it's cool to see them using it more aggressively and not just two or three times or two times in a map. Uh, the chat's asking, chat's saying actually probably Umbreon was banned, right? That makes a lot of sense. We also don't see a Clefable could have been banned. I, I feel like if I if I was a team right now, I would absolutely have a comp that revolves around Leafeon if it was ever free. Uh, because one, I love the playstyle of a speedster like that. And two, it just feels like it's so difficult to counter its early game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nice, nice rip out of uh, A through L. Man, they are taking them to the task. <laughs> it seems really good. I, I know we watched them take a loss on, on broadcast before, but I, I am really, really high on this team. Yeah, they're uh, great. They're, they're a fun team to watch. Uh, we got to see them play Zarina as well, which was pretty hype. At least they mm -hmm. can deliver in that regard, too. <laughs> uh, Wei Wan is a gamer. Yeah. They are playing yes. very, very well. Yeah, they were our Absol player too, right? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. surprised because in the first game when we had the Zarina game, they were the comfy. Yeah, yeah, which was kind of a shocker. Uh, yeah, when yeah. I came back and they were like Absol, I was like, man, this is some deep switch ups here. But it looks like they're just <laughs> like the traditional kind of uh, melee attacker here, I guess, unless Zarina comes in in the mix. And in that case, they're on comfy duty, I, I suppose. <laughs> hey, get you someone who can do both. You know, <laughs> you want true. someone who can play, you know, E-Speed Lucario when they need to. They can play Zoroark, and at the same time, they can play uh, Comfey. You need you need that variety, I think. Do we feel like the riddle of why no more Comfey is finally solved at this point in time? Like, I, I think these insanely range-focused compositions just make Comfey so tough to I think actually pull off. I think it also just depends on how broken things are. Comfey, sure. Comfey yeah. thrives when something is so powerful that it can dominate. Like, Zorark got nerfed. They weren't massive nerfs, but it did get nerfed. Dodrio got nerfed. So you take a lot of these Pokemon that might normally want the collar, and you nerf them, and it makes Comfey worse. Yeah. I guess a good health check of the metagame, I suppose. <laughs> if Comfey's not there, we're doing okay. <laughs> That's good to know. is just still... It's weird because it's like... One of the worst things in uncoordinated play. Still, it's so it's so yeah. dummy broken. Um, but 
it's nice to not see it as much competitively. Nice little combo there from our Lucarios. They're actually putting some points into that tier two. 274, 73. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, just getting a small over in the top is kind of hurts, right? Because they had they could have gotten any number of points in there, um, <laughs> and only having a break of seven kind of sucks. The chat no. saying, by the way, they're saying Comfey. That is how it's pronounced. Um, it's Comfey. Yeah, it's Comfey. I don't I don't want to be that guy with Pokemon pronunciations because I truly don't care. Um, but having worked on a broadcast, they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they, that's true it's not they like they tell us less but yes they yes. do tell us. well i remember when uh thea sky ruins was announced and the question yeah. was i always thought it was rayquaza i've called it rayquaza yeah. forever and they were like no yeah. it's quay like quasar earthquake uh so you find stuff like that and i'm like is it uh is it comfey or whatever and they're like no it's comfey yeah. so there you go uh at least they don't stop us um, when we say Aegislash. Because if they force me to say Aegislash, I'm going to perish. If they I force Aegislash, then I'm, I'm, I'm just telling teams, just don't draft it. Oh, please, please quit. <laughs> I cannot do it. Don't draft You're going to be hearing Sword a lot more. Yeah. yeah. The Lord of the Aegislash? No, it doesn't yeah. sound right. <laughs> Uh, from the chat, when is though. Phil's team? So we're in EU right now. We're watching the uh, EU AOS Cup qualifiers uh, currently, and NA doesn't start for another like two and a half hours. No, I'm going to be a minute until the North American teams start playing. Timing wise, though, it should actually line up pretty okay. I mean, we're getting closer and closer to the qualification games for the losers bracket, and it'll be right around the time that NA is beginning. Before we get to those, so that's be cool. We'll have to make some hard decisions of whether we pivot to pivot to NA teams immediately, or if we see EU through to the very end. I think we will be pivoting to a degree. It depends on who's qualified and who's not. Obviously, got to give people the fill. I think is what needs to happen. People need <laughs> to see Phil. Last uh, last stream I had, um, Chris and I were doing a tournament. What were we doing? Luminosity. We were doing the Luminosity yeah. tournament. We didn't see Phil on stream, and I know people were very disappointed about that. Mm. Um, well, it's because they did it horribly. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we got Zoics back out here with the team YouTube hate <laughs> for some reason. Fair enough, um, but uh, we I, we do got to see we we got to see all the teams. I got we got to see TTV. We got to see YT. We got to see Nemesis. We got to see uh, Alter Ego. Alter Ego, yes. Viridian's really good, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. they they are a really good team. They've had some crazy good runs in smaller tournaments. Um, so I'm pumped uh, for them to kind of showcase some stuff. Chat's asking if we saw any Metagross today. One it and it lost. lost. Right? Yeah, it yeah. did. It had a cool moment, but it did lose. Yeah. Ooh, the slow beam on the candle. Why was the candle there? <laughs> why, why did they get try to, to try to blind the whole team? Mm -hmm. um, it it was probably trying to blind Inteleon during its unite, right? Because then all those critical it like basically makes that unite worthless um, if it can't auto target anybody. But uh, it was ambitious. <laughs> yes, that that's a way to put it. That's yeah. a way to put it. A through I, L looking to win this one though, eh? Yeah. Jakey Breaky gonna call it quits, so it's Giga Chat and A through L. Yes, no, and then the winner of that one will play who? For Copy Babas. You can pull up the bracket, right, Zoinks, on this screen. Yes. You want to pull up the bracket and talk us through it a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So in this one, we just watched the conclusion of this game right here, BV. Right here. Um, so now Still got it'll be A through too. L versus Giga Chad Gaming uh, to move on and play Copy Babas. And it'll be Red Ping versus Sav. Gosh, EU, please. <laughs> be Red Ping versus whoever Neo Century Red will be going up against. Neo Century Red looked like quite good when we saw them. So I'm suspecting they're going to be making it out uh, through the play ins. Um, the teams that already qualified on this side were Illusion and Ball Toy. Uh, and then if we go to pool one. Let's see. Squishy Squad qualified, obviously, taking down Nouns Esports and Team Uwu, sending them down. It's pretty incredible. Yala Bingo also qualified. Set Convicts down. Um, so, Nouns Esports has defeated Goblin's Paradise. They will probably be playing Plush Keepers, who are currently up 1 0. Plush Keepers is a good team. Who, um, who sent Plush Keepers down? It wasn't Nouns, it was. Uh... 
Who was no, it? It would be on the other side of the bracket if somebody sent them it down. Was the it was Team Uwu. Okay. Yeah. And the 2 1. So, yeah. A close. Yeah. They were good. Game. Mm hmm. Yeah. Volto's a great player. Very, very impressed with them all the time. From the chat, no, Angela. Losers is not best of one. You'll often see that in community tournaments because uh, the time it takes is just like intense. However, for an yeah. official tournament like this, losers is still best of three. Yeah. And especially when we don't have. Um... There's no grand finals or anything. Like it just cuts to top eight. So it's not like the person who makes it to grand through winners is waiting like three hours for their bracket to catch up through loser side. Um, nicer. What? So where do you think we're going next, Zoinks? What do you, What do we got? Um, ooh, do uh, I mean that Giga Chad versus A through L is a very easy one to grab for us. Great. Um, and if midway through, if Plush Keepers Nouns ends really quickly and we want to pivot and see Nouns versus Plush Keepers the full set, we can do that too. I think we would. That would yeah. be my take. I think uh, most people, it, I would guess, as this tournament, as this like plays out, we're like very interested to see how Nouns moves forward here. That's what mm -hmm. I would guess. And uh, mm -hmm. I would I would probably put them as the first thing that we're following as we're continuing through eu cool yeah sounds good to me fortunately no game ready yet so i guess i could check to see if by friends if they're in draft yet or not um i got quotes in the chat noun's gonna end it quickly did we say that who said that <laughs> we might have said it i don't know uh oh <laughs> yeah uh don't it looks like quote me on it <laughs> Ace Roll versus Giga Chad, they're just in the lobby. They haven't quite entered into draft yet. So okay. it might be a couple minutes until we have another game. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Always well, we can take this moment to remind the chat of the moment that I was right about the score. And to like the stream if you're hey. on YouTube. What are you doing I, you I would rather take this yet? moment just to be petty <laughs> rather than talk about <laughs> anything <than> else. <laughs> okay, fair, fair, fair. <laughs> there have been so many, you know, there was a there was a tweet that was posted earlier um, or yesterday when it showed Nouns versus uh, Tally Bobo mm -hmm. um, in that uh, in that grand finals for AOS. And mm -hmm. in the in the cast, I say nouns esports loses like in that moment mm -hmm. um and i talked i tweeted about this but it's one of those things you don't you're not always right about where you are as a caster you know that you're really close right you're really close like oh the score is close i think nouns is up and as i'm seeing the scoreboard tick up i thought nouns took the game but then i see the scoreboard just does one more little bing and all of a sudden tally bobo is so i have to do the horrible thing of i have to say <laughs> The team is the loser, which is never how you announce a game. You never announce a game like, and there you have it. Uh, whatever it is, loses, this team wins. You always announce so-and-so wins. But unfortunately, that clip has me saying nouns loses, which I feel so bad about. I have to listen to that now. I could probably pull it up. I'm just showing everybody the eject button on Wicked Blow. Just like... Uh, you know, the move we saw earlier from Blaziken. <laughs> the <overhead. laughs> you're lucky. Uh, not you're lucky, but I also happen to just be screaming like uh, something. Like yeah, you're just going, oh my god! Maniac. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's what you're doing. So it yeah. kind of gets cut a little bit, but the fact that there's they put closed captioning on it I doesn't, know. doesn't help. I know. Let me find it. I can show the chat. <laughs> I would have never known right that now. if I didn't hear you just break that down. I know. I, I feel bad about it. I really do. Let me see. Wrong <laughs> one. JL just here, instead of warming up, just trolling the casters, making us think we had the scoreline wrong. Okay. Here you go, everybody. Um, hopefully you can hear this, but... If Tally takes this, they win right now. No! Oh, Nouns oh, Esports loses! Tally Bobo wins the Nouns Cup! So I have to yell, <laughs> Nouns Esports <laughs> loses, which I didn't want to, but I, I thought they won. Look at the score. Look at this. Look at how close it is right mm, there. It's ahead, and when I saw that 534, my brain's going Nouns Esports. Nouns Esports! 
Oh, 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 that was a crazy match. Like one that of the best, wild. one of the best grand finals I oh, think we've ever had. Dude, the oh, best. Yeah. It, like it was unbelievable. The best. But oh, I, speaking I, of, I felt bad about that. Working. I felt bad about that for a while. I, I I hate that like they lost and I started off with they lost. <laughs> I feel bad, but it is what happened. Yeah. I was popping off with a bunch of the teams we've been casting in the crowd when that happened. It was like me and Urzeron and a few people. We Dude, AO's Cup. Well, okay, so we had AO's Cup, which was insane. Uh, and then we had Regional Finals NA, which was... Bo like, both of those were some of the best games I've ever seen. Like, just so incredible. Mm -hmm. You know? Land's just different. Like, it's just... It's been proven in esports again and again and again. Just get those players on the stage, get some people in front of them, but just the energy is unmatched. It makes for good games. Yeah, it really does. It really does. I think eject button should be on a lower cooldown. I'm not even gonna lie. Just do you think eject buttons needed that much on Buzz on Blaziken? You don't think full heals the option sometimes? No, no, not at all. You have to inject. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll equip it right now. It's I like Blastoise. Time, the, sure the, it's the, what you can do with it's too useful. Yeah. You pick up so many KOs with it, dude. It's like, it's so sick. Okay. And fine. secures. The secures gross on that move. <laughs> it's really good. No, the games aren't done for today. We're waiting for our next match, so I'm just screwing around in the practice area. Yeah, sorry, everybody. I... Most of the, a lot of the teams that we know, get out of here. Adjust eject is 30 seconds and increase the range. Jeez. Okay, JL. Jeez. <laughs> okay, JL. <laughs> it is pretty cool that like your eject direction repositions your move to face that way. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm trying to think what are the other big eject Pokemon are. Those are a few of them for sure. We're almost at the game. They're three minutes in, Great. so uh, draft is probably... so draft takes like what a minute, two minutes, and then the, they, you have to wait the two minutes on the delay for spectator feature. So probably two or three minutes until we have the game ready. Oh, look, I'm and wh which game are we going to? I'm sorry. A through L versus Giga Chad Gaming. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. A through L. Versus Gigatrad. And then this is zero zero, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Woodhammer tree. I guess you could, huh? Blastoise oh, yeah, is I like the eject. run a direct button on tree. It's so good. Woodhammer Woodhammer eject is amazing. Eject doesn't change and the direction of solar beam. That's true, but you do change uh, your positioning of it. So right. you can pick up KOs with it. But you're Remember right, it doesn't change direction. Was bugged and you could basically have two solar beams on the map at once because of your eject button. I remember that. Cram Unite, oh. yeah, Cram Unite's a huge eject. Uh, Meow Scarada, I feel like you have to run eject. It's too good. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Shedinja Believers are wrong. <laughs> the Talibobo Believers, I think they were right, but the Shedinja Believers, no, they're wrong. Toon came into my chat the other day when I was playing Gengar. Because I had Shin Ninja Doll. <laughs> it's like, okay, what are we Shin Ninja Dolling here? What's the plan? <laughs> and, uh, it worked once when I dodged a Glacier on Ice Shards. But other than that, it didn't do great. <laughs> so I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. What were we playing, Zoinks, when it was like, yeah, we'll use the Hoopa Trick Trap. Oh, is it a Talonflame, Talonflame. Hoopa? Mm -hmm. And we pulled that off, what, once in a 10-minute game? Listen, people just press the button. I did what I could. <laughs> it's like yeah let's get it <laughs> we successfully did it once and i'm pretty sure we both uh got ko'd anyway yeah okay game is ready sprinkles do you have a through l on purple side or giga chat on purple side? i've got let me pull it up here i've got a b c d on purple okay sounds good let's load into it oscar Tar on the blast toys here we go everybody no time to look at the sand tomb eject button tech right now <laughs> i'm getting ready for this next game a b c d e f g i j j k l versus giga chad gaming uh i am really excited to watch indigo play again <laughs> i think they just had that that game we got to spectate them was just absolute insanity Great, great job by them. Oh, man. 
Hey, oh, Wei Wanjo on the uh, Absol. So we're getting a little bit of some throwback action out of uh, A through L as well. Absol, I mean, I wonder who they're looking for most here. Obviously, Guardi is a fun target for Absol. Did they also have Glaceon on the other side? Was that what it was? No. I th They've I got Espeon. Think so. Interesting. They've got three Vs. Yeah, so Espeon, Sylveon, Umbreon is who they've got here. All right, here we go. Venusaur pushing forward right here, looking for that secure on that wild farm right there. Getting pushed back a little bit. Uh, do, do you think they put Absol, they put Weiwan in the middle so Bordy can go get the second rotation just in case they're an invade? They're in for like a rough surprise because it's an Absol instead of a Bulbasaur? I guess it could be. Um, also, yeah, Bulbasaur, yeah, it just has such a terrible clear, so maybe they were worried about that. Here comes the Absol, not able to hit that first pursuit, but coming in with another one right there. There gets the reset, another reset, and they all go down. <laughs> well, that's why you play Absol early. Uh, that's a good old spike for them as they're able to get not only wild the wild Pokemon and, like, collating the team at the same time. Just a sick look. Uh, and Absol is exciting Pokemon to watch when it's on fire, for sure. Definitely. Unfortunate here. Ooh, nice one. They were able to pick up that big bird there. I was going to say unfortunate here for our uh, orange side team, Giga Chad, because for a minute there, they were just not able to make anything happen in that bottom path. Their guardy was still four even after grabbing blue, but they were able to pick that up. Great swing for them. Way Wanjo on the other side of the map, grabbing all of Giga Chad Gaming's buffs as they are populating back onto the screen. Just going to be able to uh, really cut them off from that free experience as uh, you like to think of it because it's on their side of the map. Moving back forward, jumping into the middle here. And uh, now Wei Wanjo can really have a huge impact on any lane they go to. Yeah, it's it's so nice. Once it's level seven, it gets that second move, uh, you know, which I have to assume is Sucker Punch. But of course, they, they could be playing something else. Uh, it, you're just able to outplay so easily that they can head right into that central area and know that they can really win any fight down there. They're jumping to the bottom path right now, looking for something. They pick it up. Yep, they are not playing Sucker Punch because that's what I said they were going to play. So, of course, uh, they're playing Psycho Cut, which is very, very doable as well. Yeah, I think they've been leaning into Psycho Cut uh, the other time we saw them on camera as well. Um, which I believe increases the damage done by your whole team to the players that have the Psycho Cut mark over top of them. Is that accurate? Oh, I didn't know it was the whole team. Is it the whole team? I thought it was just Absol. You might be right, though. Going in right into the gravity. That's a KO bursting into the Unite move. They're going to get to follow up on Toby. Toby is so low on HP. Nice mean look, but don't quite get out of the range of that Absol. They're going right on top of Indigo here. Another gravity is down. The Hyper Voice is going to get spacing, but Wei Wanjo is going to be on the backside trying to score 40. Nope, just a bait and switch on top of Urzeron very quickly as they decide to just stop the scoring animation again to try and uh, get their points in or try and get a KO at least. But by that time, Foundry's back and that pressure is on and Absol has to get out. Here we go. 102.64. Reggie Steel still on the board right here. No one's trying to rip it just yet. We have some damage raining down on it right here from our orange side, but we have a fight breaking out. Here comes the big time Venusaur Unite move, and it catches two. That is sick. That's exactly what you want. Now Bordy can flip its attention to the Registeel and Krinsky can focus on the actual spacing and needs to revive. Rapid Spin Water Spout right into the back line as they were flanked by this Blastoise. And now Oscatar is looking to get the spacing they need to close out this goal zone. Here comes Foundry right back, but there's still a Curlia. Haven't quite been able to evolve just yet and that's gonna be a detriment for them. They're collapsing on top of Weiwanjo, but Weiwanjo says, I collapse on top of you, sir, as they get a KO and are able to get right back. Out. The funny thing is, that's exactly how Wei Wanjo sounds as well. <laughs> really nice play by them. They got caught in the mean look, but they said, yeah, I got a bit of a mean look for you as well. Threw their Unite move, made sure they didn't take any damage right there, turned it right back around onto that Sylveon. Maybe getting a little too bold right here, trying to get out. The Pollen Puff is on them. They're being chased by the entire team, but it looks like Absol with the mobility is going to shake this a little bit. Yeah, going right back in, trying to follow up on the Hydro Typhoon there. Successful. Clefable rolls fly, tries to get the KO on Wei Wanjo, puts the gravity down, but it's still not enough. Absol stands strong. Oscatar is the one catching a lot of the receipts of that damage that can't quite find the Absol, so they get KO'd. And now Urzeron's using this to push past. Solar Beam catches four. Another Verdant Anger right into the middle. Two players down immediately. Urzeron has the Psycho Cut mark, and Indigo Jeez. does not, but they just get Psycho Cut down as that's another Absol Unite. They're jumping on top of Laura. Laura peels back, Sword Power finds its way between 
Takarina Yame, and Wei Wanjo, but that Gozo, my friend, is gone. Gee, I mean, this is just such a dominant performance here. This Venusaur is picking up huge, huge KOs, big moments with that Unite move, and Absol is just putting on a clinic right now, making you think that this thing is actually relevant in the meta, and I guess in the hands of a player like this, it is. It's looking phenomenal. The team is working really well around it to make sure that its engagements are facilitated and its way out is also uh, kind of carved and clear for them. Uh, not getting too, in, like, in too many situations where you really feel like they're in hot water. Of course, I say that, and now they're putting a mean look and everybody's collapsing on top of Wei Wanjo and they're throwing everything in the kitchen sink at them. And that's a quality KO because that was a level 13 Absol at 4 minutes 20. Yeah, that's a great KO for them. Huge catch-up experience. At the same time, Absol's been an absolute force throughout this match. Umbreon going real deep right here. I'm not sure exactly what was going on. I guess they didn't expect that Blastoise to come in and kind of, you know, split the team in that moment because Umbreon was like, hey guys, here we go. I got the meat. Guys? Guys? And then absolutely, and then Umbreon goes down. Yeah, there was, there was, there's clearly a plan that, that was drawn up that was not executed well by Giga Chad here. And obviously, uh, Toby finding the prime target, and now a big Unite move is going to get a KO, KO streak of three for Bordy as well. Four players down, and Toby has to sit on this goal zone and hope that this thing stays standing long enough for the rest of the team to pull up for the support. Here comes Fonry. They are over Gardevoir. They do have their Unite move, so they can pop it right on top of the goal zone. They do. Very Singularity is out. The mean look is there, and that's a quality KO again that Giga Chad Gaming is able to pick up. Well, I'm shocked that LD actually scored right. I don't know why, I just thought the damage would actually kind of stop them. But no, LD gets the points in, 219 to 64. There's another mean look, and they are incredibly mean as the Psyshock is coming down. One of the hardest Pokemon in the game to take down, but they're trying to do it right here. See if they can get rid of this slow bro, and it doesn't look like it's possible. Uh, Yame doing a good job just being there in support, making sure the Slowbro doesn't get knocked out because they need that Slowbro to insulate these goal zones. Giga Chad Gaming down a bunch on the scoreboard, approximately 150 points. Now we have another Absol Unite, which is going to lead into potentially two KOs. Good gravity by Indigo to make sure Urzeron and themselves don't go down. That force is just enough out of Wei Wanjo for them to retreat. Yeah, taking a look at the scenery right here. Nothing wrong with it. There's a lot going on on Thea Sky Ruins here. As you can see, Absol, one of my favorite things about this pursuit build is against these objectives, all you just need to do is jump behind it after it starts to attack. It, it stays in its animation. You reset your pursuit, do insane damage, and rip it apart. They are going to have to deal with this quickly and then get ready for Rayquaza. Obviously, Absol looking to charge its Unite moves back up. We don't know their items, but if they are are running amp they get their unite very fast and it does a ton mm -hmm. of damage i love running amp on absol for that reason they also could be stacking of course i'm not sure uh, how much they've scored throughout this match but it's almost a level 15 so it's gonna be able to pick up a ton of big ko's yeah, rare step map misstep by Indigo right there, taking a ton of damage for no real value found the other way as krinsky is doing a great job using their surfs for spacing Still waiting for that Absol Unite to tick online, as well as that Clefables. Both teams missing one, but I'd like to think that Wei Wanjos is a little bit more valuable in this moment right here. They would love to have it specifically because they're in a decent flanking position here. This looks so <laughs> unbelievably bad right now. Huge Absol Unite pushes in, but they actually are able to save themselves with the Sylveon Unite. Umbreon Unite basically just to run away. No one goes down from that exchange as Blastoise moves in with a massive Blastoise Unite move from the eject button. Looking for something on the Venusaurus. It throws in a huge Unite as well. Two down. A great, great engagement by A through L here as they were able to get tons of value out of their Unite moves and they're still sandbagging two of them. One of which is going to be the strongest one they have available left and that's the Slow Bro Slow Beam. They're going to be able to target down any one they want and make sure that they are gutted immediately. Hyper Voice on Krinsky, they eat a Pollen Puff as well. Nice pot shots by Bordy over the shoulder. They're raining in damage. Everybody's at half HP. They're sitting around this cliff able to get the Moonlight. We got a big time re-engagement here. The gravity is down. Rapids and Water's about traps in the mean look and the Venusaur finally does get gobbled up. Toby's looking to pivot on Krinsky. Krinsky surfs back in on Toby. Toby's low on HP, but who else but Wei Wanjo looking for a target. Fonry's on the backside. There's nothing left in a tank and the whole team is wiped. Spraggles, come on, A through L, putting in the burgers without even taking Rayquaza. Beautiful stuff right there. I don't know if you saw, Absol had the opportunity to go back cap. They didn't. They cleared birds in the top path, got another Unite move, and ran down for a double KO. 
beautiful, beautiful game from them. I mean, just what an impressive showing. And what a beautiful Absol play, man. Holy. 99,000 damage. A little underpowered, I'd say. Yeah, just a little underpowered. And only reason uh, it's not the big flash in the pan that you'd expect is because Bordy, 118k. I mean, this team was all over them all game long. Shout out to A through L. I mean, this Absol, if it plays like this, for any team, it looks like a quality pick. Yeah, it's just incredible right there. And you know, when you're one of the best players out there, right? When you're playing on these top teams, sometimes the meta is what you say it is, you know? Like we see mm -hmm. Overlord on things like Aegis Slash, Slash, Meowskarada, and things like that. And sometimes it's like, yeah, Absol's not very good, except when I play it, and then it's sick. Yeah, it rem you know what it reminds me of? That Absol, like since we're using Absol as the, uh, specifically, Season 1 yep. Nudo. Yep. I, like they were the only person playing it, um, and then they were doing so well with it that other individuals started picking up, and they it was fine. But it wasn't like Nudo's Absol. Um, and, you know, we kind of joke around. We remember Nudo getting uh, MVB. knocked out by a, by a B. But we can't forget that the following game, Nudo put up an 18K performance on that Absol. Yeah. Like, they were a demon on Absol. Taking a look at our brackets right here. That's what Zoinks is cruising us through. What are we looking at? Oh, sorry about that. I forgot that that's on screen. Um, plus <laughs> I thought you were trying to tell us something. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad it was just this page. He's anyway. just looking at his <laughs> tweets. He's replying to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, plush Keepers versus Utopia. This is the team that will go on to play Nouns Esports. Mm -hmm. Um and gets in a loser's bracket. Uh, Utopia has now kept pu or pushed push uh, plush keepers to one one, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, single limo. This is just kind of starting. This, <clears throat> this leg of the bracket has been going really slow. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, pretzel. <laughs> okay, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I'm dying over in, here. In how the, I, I'm so disappointed in how this part of the show is going right now. <laughs> You're cutting to a bracket, and you are you don't have anything to say about it, and you're choking on a pretzel. We have nothing to give anyone. What's with some mad name Michael Finnegan? I'm just waiting for this stream to, you know, start winning. Yes, you know? me too. Yeah. <laughs> you're just, okay, you know. we talked about this last game. Why are we drafting three Eevees into Absol? What, what is happening? I that don't think happen again. you can't consider drafting against Absol. I'm guessing guess. it's picked last. I'd I mean, say may maybe just three Eevees ain't the play then. I don't know. That is uh, that is a, and a Gardevoir, like any dive takes out that team. True. Like a Zero Aura beats that team. I don't know what that draft was from Giga Shed. That seemed suspect to me. Well, that's one of the huge advantages of playing something that's off the beaten path a little bit, right? I mean, yeah, you, you do see these players who get so good at something that you can't ban. You can't ban and you can't counterpick because it's like, wait, do we have anyone on the team who plays Absol? No. Do we have anyone who wants to ban it? I mean, no. You got to get rid of something that's I mean, actually more of a power pick. But against a team like this, we might be looking at a targeted ban situation. Yeah. A ban is a big ask. I, I, do, I do agree with that. I think a targeted ban, I've said this before, th that's the biggest compliment you can receive oh, yeah. in Pokemon <laughs> Unite is a targeted ban. Mm -hmm. And if it comes, if it happens in ranked, oh my gosh, you should, you should get an award. <laughs> Imagine. That's I'm bad. I mean, I am banning Dodrio every single time I run into Spragles on the ladder. Like that is happening. <laughs> Bro, I'm not playing Dodrio anymore. I've already got the badge on it. I'm, fr I'm badging my Mimikyu right now. Get out of it's here. It's more of a, it's more of a message I'm trying to send, you know? <laughs> it's, it's more of uh, I'm not afraid of much, but I am afraid of your three-headed, three-hatted bird. That's true. It's true. I do play a, I do play a mean bird. My Dodrio is pretty good. It is. It is. Hey there, Jake. Why, hello, Mr. Dudo Gaming. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I have bracket up again? Do I have screen? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, yeah, this match has been going on for a while, but I don't have anybody friended to that one. Who's on Neo Century Red? I might be able to. I don't think I any of those players, fortunately. But yeah, we're still at only four teams qualified for EU. We have mm -hmm. not, uh, we have nobody making it all the way to the end of the bracket quite yet. The one we are watching is probably the farthest ahead um, in terms of that one. But 
Yeah, yeah whenever those push keepers game ends, it'll be announced. It takes a ways for the uh, losers bracket, you know, and this is why uh -huh. you see so many tournaments run a best of one losers. Obviously, it, an official tournament, they don't care how long it goes. Nobody's no right. nobody at unites uh, dealing with this right now. They're just letting these players play this tournament out. Well, I mean, they are paying admins to work this event. Yeah, so no, maybe, no. Maybe I, they are the ones carrying them the most. <laughs> I don't. More hours. So I guess them. more hours, but you know, <laughs> no, that's true. They don't. They don't have like an official broadcast going where they have to wait. You know, that's twelve true. hours to finish the whole thing. Let's take a look at North America. Sure. Do we have a bracket yet? Oh my gosh! A hundred and fifty-six teams Let's signed up. Let's go. That's why we that win worlds. Huge. That's why we win that's worlds. Why we win world. Okay. It, there are two pools. It's not a. The, the seating isn't final. Um, can I see the teams in pool one, please? Hello? Standings, pool one. Question from the chat. General question. When running EXP share, how much farm should you take when your lane partner is stacking so they don't AFK? Just let them get a couple last hits so they can stack. Easy enough. <laughs> but at the same time, people don't understand how EXP share works. It's one of the saddest things in Pokemon Unite. It very, it's depressing. It really is. I literally will be like powering up my ally and they ping me like, please let me level up first. And I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I'm doing so. I'm doing it right now. Okay. So we don't have, um, seeding officially done, but I can look at all the teams that have been put into each pool so far. Okay. And yes, so... we will be casting NA everybody. We're going to be hanging out. Mm -hmm. So it's YouTube, Nem YouTube and Nemesis are in the same side. I'm assuming those are the two highest seeds on this side of the bracket. Flame and Hot Dodrios, Onbu, E Kittens, um, Anomaly. It's a good thing. Dependent Solid Team, Skating, Any Chaos. Some of these I don't know. Ignorance on this side of the bracket too. Dark War on this side of the bracket. This is gonna be a buzzsaw. This is gonna be Dude. insanity. Yeah. Which top team doesn't make it to top eight? You know. Well, uh, yeah. There's so many. Good I mean, ones. we still don't. We still don't know that for BU. <laughs> like there. It's true. Okay. All right. Game two is ready. Are you two ready for? Uh, I'm ready. HRL versus Pikachu. Let's mm -hmm. do it. Let's do it. Let's get a game. <sighs> Let's go. And it's not an easy tech. Good stuff. All right. Have fun. <laughs> we have uh, Giga Chad saying, "Well, we can. We have an Absol too. Amazing." However, I don't know how much value they're going to get into a tree and a slow bro, but we'll see. I mean, it's exciting to see. Uh, it's the caster curse. I literally say it's not like you can counter pick it, and then they did. <laughs> so here we go. Game number two A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Your purple team, Giga Chad Gaming. Your orange team. We are here in the losers bracket of the EU AOS Cup qualifiers, Dupe Snacks. I mean, back against the wall, A2L is looking for an opportunity here, and um, they've certainly got a good one. If they can play anything like they did in game one, they're in good shape. Oscatar taking the tree into the top path, I haven't seen that in a minute. I love a top path tree. No zoinks. <laughs> <laughs> no zoinks. I had to move it. I did, there was no good time to do so. <laughs> I, I can think of a few. Uh, maybe 40 seconds ago. Here we go! Uh, as we see Absol taking this farm, getting their level 5, they're gonna head up to the top path right now. I wonder if they're gonna play a different Absol, if they're gonna run Pursuit, or if they're gonna run Night Slash. I don't know which kind of Absol they like to play. It is Pursuit here in this top path, picking up this first KO. Yep, and Indigo doing a great job again, keeping uh, Laura topped off here by eating the Icicle Spears on its behalf. Oscatar is low, that's a quality KO for them. Moving back, and now Laura can really engage because Weiwanjo doesn't have enough Icicle Spears built up to do a ton of damage. Who else but Indigo getting so, 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 so well positioned there. Spraggles, I can't say enough about this player. They've impressed me. They've yeah, you've been uh, very without. impressed with them. They've been playing fantastic. They have they have been playing so well, so... I'm fully with you right there. I think that is the first foul play we've seen, right? Um, I think mm -hmm. in the tournament, we've got Umbreon finally on foul play. They're not looking to look mean. No, they are looking to play and run a foul here as Oscatar wood hammers through both targets. Laura getting stunned is not a good, good look for them. However, 
Wanjo isn't here for the follow-up, so you're just dealing with a Trevenant and an Eldegoss, and that's firepower that can be mitigated by a Moonlight. Here comes Wanjo, level 7. Charging up their spears right here for this fight. Down in the bottom path here, we can see this Intellion in a lot of trouble right now, and it does go down. Fonry well played here, getting them down with the Electro Ball, using another one on top of uh, Krinsky. Uh, Weiwancho was hanging out in the middle for those birds. I can't really tell which direction those may have gone. But now Laura is getting Icicle Speared in without Indigo to take any of those on their behalf. Luckily, not fully charged up. It's fun to see the tree in this position. Kind of play it as this all-rounder top path, like a Blastoise mm -hmm. or a, a Buzzwool in this situation. I actually love this call. I think tree is just so insanely good. The stuns from it are amazing. I agree. I agree. And especially when it's double stacking in the position like it would be right here in the top path. It has, I mean, so much self-sustain. Partner with an Eldegoss, and it's going to take everything in the kitchen sink to put that tree down. Interesting to see Urzeron here on the rapid spin build. We've seen a little rapid spin. We've seen a little surf. Basically, Blastoise can do it all. And we're going to see how well they're going to be able to take this fight in the top path. Tree also level 7 now, so it has both of its moves. Yeah, I'm taking a look. Nobody willing to pull up for the support, and I think they would have uh, if they would have sent at least one player at the top. They would have been able to deal with the tree and crash this goal zone. But alas, it is a two v two. Glaceon United side. Weiwanjo targets down Toby, but actually ends up hitting Laura as they went for the engage, and that's a quality KO. Mew United is out. They're looking to pursue. Bordy's there. They fell Stinger away, so Fonry pivots over to Krinsky. And now Fonry goes down because Weiwanjo is right there with the ice Whoa. spear. Nice snipe shot before Toby can hit the pad and get themselves a shield. And now this red ice is just going to be free for A through L. Can I say, I mean, the the play there by Bordy on that Inteleon, like just standing there for a minute, and they're like, I know the timing of the Mew Unite move. I don't think you're throwing Electro Ball early. I'm going to fell Stinger in the last possible moment. That was a uh, chef's kiss indeed. Oh, it was terrific. And it forced that Electro Ball to go straight onto Krinsky, who's sitting on pad, and of course is a slow bro, a much better target if you're A through L for that move to hit. Weiwanjo now putting tons of pressure again on Toby, but they are already level 10 Spraggles. They've silently been able to climb this experience lead. Yeah, it's just been uh, incredible to watch right here. Level 11 on this Glaceon right now. And you have to wonder, is this Absol pick the right pick? Can you play it at a high enough level to actually get the value out of it right here? Or are you just trying to shut down something that you didn't expect to see today? It, it's starting to feel like they just picked it so they didn't have to deal with it because they couldn't respectfully ban it. Um, however, like I said, in the face of two uh, defenders, it doesn't look awesome. Trevenny comes out, kicks up two. You got the eject and the hydro typhoon. Toby playing far forward. We got rapid spin water spout right on top of the heads of A through L, forcing out the Glaceon Unite back the other way. However, it's the tree, Oscatar, that's on the backside, causing tons of static in the back line, allowing this Reggie Alecki to come really close to hitting. Indigo is almost down. Follow me hits, but the Reggie Alecki, more importantly, also hits. And now they have a huge overdunk of 34 points. Nice slow beam, easy KO. Spraggles, A through L, is not afraid of an absolute. Yeah, I think they're going all the way to Z right now as they're looking to possibly push this tier two. We saw a super unfortunate Unite move from Clefable right there. I have to assume they had some snapback on their close combat that they just got one of the saddest things in the game when you see what has to be a parent snapback and you miss a huge move absolutely it's just it truly gutting truly gutting shout out to fonry though holding down this bottom pad has maybe been one of the few bright spots that we've seen out of giga chat this game so far uh as they're looking for an opportunity to leverage that big five player crash in the top this is going to be good for them in terms of bringing the score lead somewhat to parity if they can get back and insulate this bottom goal zone before it absolutely disappears that'll be even better it doesn't look like they've got the opportunity to make that pivot as we've got a plus 34 in the bottom path just like in the top Reggie Steele going down right here, 228, 144. Absol coming up to this top path, looking to see if they can make something happen, but no, they are going to end up backing out right now. Nice experience up in the top as well for the side of our purple team, ABCD, who just needs to win one more game right here, and they're well on their way. They are. They are. Now we have Rapid Spin right on top of Ayame. However, the Icicle Spears from Weiwanjo are just too much. Weiwanjo already level 13 Spraggles. Biggest thing moving, and they've almost got uh, an Inteleon online at level 13 as well.
Yeah, I mean, look at these levels. I mean, their their highest uh, their tank is the same level as uh, one of the highest uh, levels on the enemy team. I know it's being played as their all rounder, but just when you when you look at it like this, it, it it's very uh, stark the difference in experience right here between these two squads. It really is something silently uh, pretty clever here that I haven't seen a lot of teams do, but it is pretty intuitive. Is you know Eldegoss putting a heal right where the uh, Reggie Alecki stun is going to be, just putting the puff there so that the two players can keep hitting without having to pivot out of that area of effect. So uh, making sure that their HP is up. I haven't seen that happen too too often, but I thought that was a clever little play. I wanted to call it out. Up in our top path right here, they're having to deal with this Reggie Alecki. 40 seconds on the clock before Rayquaza hits. It feels like they've just been getting shut down really at every opportunity right here. And I wonder what we're going to be able to see from this squad as we go towards the later part of this match. It's uh, do or go home right now for Giga Chad Gaming. And I know they want to keep their dream alive and move forward here in the AOS Cup. This tournament means so much. It's crazy that it's... The first qualifiers of the year have so, so much riding on them. They really do. I want to commend Bordy's front positioning here with eight seconds left to uh, Rayquaza as Bordy is just going to be able to ice in these snipe shots. And I like how Krinsky's right over their shoulder to be able to take uh, take the heat off of them if Giga Chad Gaming does decide to collapse. Here we go. We have Trevenant watching this top path. Umbreon kind of moving down through here to get some positioning right now as all five members of Giga Chad are up top positioned above Rayquaza. Absol moving around with Blastoise right now, and it looks like they're moving around for a bit of a fight right here, if they can seem to find one. Glaceon obviously just being able to zone them out pretty easily as soon as someone gets near that Glaceon. However, unfortunate, Snowcloak just goes down right there. They just lost their passive. This could be a moment that they could look for a fight. Yeah, going straight in is Toby the Umbreon, but there's no one else on the team there to follow them up. Toby takes a ton of damage, forces out their Unite move, tries to gobble up any, anybody in that move, but nobody is there. Surf back the other way, everybody's forced to retreat, and now they need to group up around Indigo to get the heals to make sure that they can re-engage. Boosted Auto comes through, Oscar eats that on the chin. Surf back through, Glaceon Unite is there. Who's gonna get that thing roped in? Hydro Typhoon right to the Trevi Unite. Now we've got a Cloud and Cloud Crash right to the back line. We're moving through Rapid Spin, Water Spout is spinning to win indeed, as we're pivoting back. Just a Yame down for A through L, make it two. Now Weiwanjo's down as well. This is Orange's best opportunity to rip if they really want to. Oscatar though, the sustain is there forever. Nice little Horn Leech pit if it's back. We've got a slow beam on Toby. Oof. That's not the target they want, but it's the target they're gonna get. Six snipe shot there. Pivoting back the other way, three players down for Giga Chad Gaming. I think their window of opportunity has just slammed shut Spraggles and they need to take a deep breath. They've only got 30 seconds. Laura is able to reset. If there's not going to be enough time on the clock unless they make a big time prayer play. They would have to have a full pocket score right now and I just don't see a reality where that happens at all. Absol is looking for it. Only 20 seconds left. We have three members of the moving bottom but here we have 40 points going in the top path. Umbreon is not able to make it up there in time. 14 in this bottom path. It looks like Tree is going to score as well. I don't think the points are going to be able to go in here but no they are not. They had an opportunity to rip. It was a bit of a flip, but I think they probably are kicking themselves that they didn't go for it and they instead re-engaged. What a game, A through L. They're gonna take this one two to zero, push forward in the bracket. And I believe now for them, they are on their win and top eight game coming up next against Capybabas. Big, big plays right there. Nice game. I um I, I I have to I have to take my my bow out now. Unfortunately, my friends, a lot of a lot of family stuff going on for the rest of the day. But I want to take a quick moment and thank uh, thank you, Spragles, for having me on your channel. Thanks, Zoinks, for doing all the spectating and who will carry the torch for the rest of the day here. Um, I appreciate you both, and thanks everybody in chat. I had a lot of fun. Love you, appreciate buddy. It. Thanks for hanging out. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Doritos in chat. Doritos in chat for the dube snacks. <laughs> we've claimed as our global email all right so shall we check in this quick nouns check i feel like we've been doing quick nouns checks all day yeah here comes zoinks cats with a quick nouns check of the day <laughs> okay but real talk you and i would have an incredible shock jock radio show <laughs> like, it's we about would kill time that. it's about it'd be time. so awesome Ooh, okay, so Bounty Sports now has their next opponent, but it just locked in on Star GG. So it'll be a little bit until they have their game ready, but it will be Utopia versus Nouns Esports. 
Um, Plush Keepers was taken down. Wow, Plush Keepers are looking great today, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm excited to see some of this Utopia team. Utopia, ever since the second round of losers, have been down here. Um, and so, able to take down Plush Keepers. Definitely a, a good shout from them. We're going to be doing all day vibe and me and you, zoinks. You're... <laughs> It should gonna, be fun. We're going to be vibing it, buddy, as we get mm -hmm. ready for our next game. I will continue showing off the eject button tech. While oh, we're good. For it. I'm then, glad. That's what yeah, people yeah. are most interested in seeing is eject button tech. <laughs> well, I, I honestly am. <laughs> I like watching eject button tech. Very, very cool. Um, From the chat, I missed the super chat earlier. I'm sorry I missed it. Thank you so much for the support, by the way. Whether you're super chatting, becoming a member, or sub today, I am seeing those pop up. So thank you so much, everybody who's doing that. I really do appreciate the support. Uh, Super chat from earlier. Hey, Spraggles. This is a good question for you, too, Zoinks. Who is on TTV now? Dang, Zug is gone. Do you want to tell them what TTV looks like? Sure. So TTV is going to be Ender at support. Um, it will be Otter at attacker still. It will be Pikadiff playing tank for them now. It will be Hitman in the top path most of the time. Hitman uh, used to be a Latam player, but is actually going to be playing out of NA for this season to play with TTV, it sounds like. Or at least for these first couple of tournaments, because Vin will... Not be playing for blah, blah, blah. But anyway, and then the um, last one is, of course, Lutano, who will be playing the central area. Unless they go into a Leafeon draft, and then I think Hitman will play Leafeon central, and Lutano will play something else top. Could be cool to see. Yeah. The fan favorites, TTV. I actually, I, and they might do that swap more than I even said there. It might not even just be in one comp. They might do uh, a lot of Lutano top this season if they're playing with Hitman. So this is Greedon, everybody. Um, and this is, a, this is a, in 40 years. a tech that a lot of people don't use too much. And it's just the fact that you can move your eject button. Uh, you can move your Unite move with your eject button here on Greedon. It's not a, the easiest thing to do. You've got to wait till he like leaps in the air like that. And then you can actually move where you're going to land with it. I screw it up too much. <laughs> I don't actually run it. Like there. One of my favorites is still just Snorlax Heavy Slam. Oh yeah, Heavy Slam's eject. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Ooh, uh, coming Pikadif from the chat, Lutano has been playing Blaziken lately. I love that. Ooh, okay, cool. I know they were hard grinding Buzzwool because they hadn't played very much Buzzwool because they played a lot of jungle last year. Um, so that'd be cool. See, I keep screwing it up. You got to be midair. But once you get the hang of an eject button tech, uh, what was? of it doing there once you get the hang of an eject button tech it's just uh it's hard to ever give it up it feels like a float stone you know yeah that's what i always say i always go back to that item <laughs> it's so hard not to it is it, it once you get the extra move speed it's like dude i never want to i never want to go back how long mm -hmm. is this stream going oh my gosh guys <laughs> we haven't even started Whoa. the second region <laughs> yeah we're not even halfway. <laughs> That's insane. It is insane to think about. Yeah. And a little sad, but, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. We're still a couple hours away from North America starting, though. Mm -hmm. Still a few hours away from NA. We're going through mm -hmm. some of our EU teams. Yep. But we're now at qualifier games for EU, yes. theoretically. Yeah, we're so... <clears throat> Uh, Copy Babas versus A through L is happening right now for a qualification match. Neo Century Red and Red Ping are playing up against each other. I don't think we got to see Red Ping at all during the broadcast, but they are going to be playing uh, for qualification against Neo Century Red. But we saw Neo Century Red do some really good stuff. And of course, on the other side of the bracket, I think this is Nouns and Uwu's side of the bracket. Um,. Ooh, still waiting on their opponent, and Nouns has to beat Utopia for the opportunity to play Convicts to make it into top eight. And it'd be crazy if Nouns wasn't in top eight of our first monthly. I know, right? But that, that be, happens sometimes. It does, it does. Yeah. You and I these. guarantee no one will be as hard on them as they were on LG, but it, it's fine. It'll. <laughs> it'll well, crazy. I mean, LG, they are the world champs. 
Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> it's a little the tough. They like, are. I, the bigger I, they are and all that, I, I guess. I, of course, felt bad for LG the way people were, you know, acting right. towards them. But. Mm -hmm. So the tech with Wiggly Ooh, is that you can do this double rollout. So you can roll past something and roll it again. Oh, I like that. It's very stupid. Kokido is playing for only friends. If you do it okay. right, you could bounce twice. You could. Oh, wow. you could Have, Spragos, have we talked about more um, held items that we'd want in the game? Uh, probably a little bit, but what were you thinking? I, well, I always think about, like, Pokemon items. The one I would love, but I don't think will ever happen because it would be too strong, is Choice Scarf, uh, like a stacking move speed item. Uh -huh. I think would be very fun. I don't think that'll ever happen. Um, but uh, I always thought Heavy Duty Boots from the game would be really cool. It's like a new tank item. It's just like a additional hindrance resistance. Maybe it's like a basically a instance of Umbreon passive. Like you just kind of ignore mm -hmm. uh, one little instance of hindrance. But that could be cool. What's the move? Like What's the boost. item that lets you only use one move? Any of the choice items. Okay. So choice are scarf, choice band, okay. choice specs. That's what which I we thought. have a couple in already. Yeah. They each just like boost a different stat. Mm -hmm. So scarf boosts your speed, choice specs boost your special attack, choice band boosts your attack damage. Rollout is the only true skill so shot, says the chat. It's true. Any is this the new update? No, uh, we are casting the Aos Cup. We're just waiting for uh, the next game to start, so I'm just messing around, just showing some eject attack on dumb Pokemon. I'm assuming we want to get into nouns first. Is I would that say right? so, if possible. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. I think it theoretically should be up sooner than the opponent. Someone wants old rod in time. the game. What would you do with it? Ooh, I I like the idea of a, a fishing rod though. That's a fun. Maybe it's some kind of wild Pokemon damage bonus or something like that, like a like a pseudo fluffy tail, but it's a held item. That's cool. Like, what if it's like Charging Charm, but only to wild Pokemon? That's fun. Like, uh, it just has like a little stack counter, and then you get like a big of a boosted smite attack. So you could see junglers equip it, and then like be waiting even more time to try to get their big burst because they'll have old rod bonus. Bro, what happened? Ah, old rod bonus. Ah, I missed my old rod bonus. <laughs> ah, dude, old rod. Ah, I didn't have my old rod bonus up. Yeah, didn't work. Dude, old rod's so broken. <laughs> I do. I, I run old rod on basically everything. Honestly, I do. Honestly. It would be awesome if they added both, like, Old Rod and Super Rod and Good Rod. Like, all as three different items that did something else. <laughs> that, that would, would be, be cool. That would be pretty sick. This tech is wrinkling my brain, says Aaron. It's not the most... It's not, like... You gotta run Rollout Wiggly first, you know? <laughs> I like that description. You gotta. Uh, you already gotta, like... <laughs> Commit to losing. You're, you're committing then... to a, this build. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> That's so fun. But it is fun. It's super fun. And, we, mm -hmm. like, look, you can play anything you want, you know? <laughs> you're not, That's true. I, I say this, and I'm not trying to be mean to anybody, but you're not playing in the AOS Cup for 99.9999% mm -hmm. <laughs> of your games. Right. Play something you like. You're fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's okay. Spreggles, you got to try one of these Iron Mon challenges that I've been doing on my stream. You I've heard do of it. this. So this fun. does sound fun. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. I, I'm doing the ghost types, but you could really do them. I've, I've been trying to get Curios to do it for even longer than I've been doing it. I was in his chat coming up with ideas because Curios used to do a lot of fun stuff like uh, challenges and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like one he would do like where he was blindfolded and then his teammates would tell him what to do. And he tried to see if he could win a ranked game doing that. I think a that lot of my solo queue teammates are doing that. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good I'm pretty bet. Pretty sure that they um, are. Those were so fun, but I thought like if he tried to do like an attacker Iron Mon, he could do quite well. Because obviously, very very talented. I guess you can eject during waterfall. That seems useless. Can you eject? Ooh. Can you eject during Aqua Tail? <laughs> you cannot. Can you? Eject can you during... eject during Azumarill's Aqua Tail? I guess you could. Oh, Probably, it didn't even right? work. You can eject during the second part of Aqua Tail, but it didn't count the damage. Yeah. 
right. man. <laughs> this video game. I feel like the timing on this is a little tough. You can do it, but the timing is just a little tough on uh, the Gyarados one. On Gyarados Unite. What are these mechanics? There it is. It's a little tough. You have to like you do pop up. And then you eject. That's what it is. It's like right there. Mm. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, I see the play. I see the vision. See, like right there, it doesn't work. You have to like, you do pop up, then eject. And then you get the hit. Okay. That's tough to get. And then you have to play Aqua Tail, which is terrible. <laughs> you don't have to. This is the thing you don't have to do. Aqua Tail, man, that's such an unfortunate move. What were, the, what were they doing? What are they doing with a lot of these new releases? Why aren't they good? Mm. I've only seen this Pokemon in tournament once because the Underdunk, the weekly tournament that we've been casting, or bi-weekly, I guess, in the evenings, they have a rule of which new Pokemon are technically not allowed, but if both teams agree to use them, then you can't. Um, and Gyarados, the one Gyarados we saw ran Aqua Tail Bounce. Went all in on Objective Secure. But it was also like day one of that Pokemon. Sure. Like, I think it released that Thursday. And I think it was the player's like second time playing it, so... I like Gyarados a lot. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's like every uh, Pokemon of the last five Pokemon released. It's just not that strong, which is kind of weird. Mm. For all the pay to win, like, ah, Pokemon, like this thing is so powerful. Like Pokemon Unite's had moments of that for sure. But right now, every Pokemon released is, is pay to lose. They you all don't think Gyarados is a, uh, like a Dojo or Masquerada situation? Where no. it's just taking some some techs? No, it's not terrible though. It's it's all the Pokemon have been fine, but there's no question that all of them have been a little underwhelming, a little bit. Yeah, I think Mimikyu is probably Ooh. the closest to just it was fine on release of the gotcha. most recent ones. Blaziken wasn't too bad either. All right, Spragles, we got Nouns Esports ready to go. Let's we got them on do deck. Do it. Nouns Esports versus Utopia will be this game. And this is game number one, so we are tied 0-0. Zero, zero. Okay. Oh, Megu Blaziken. Toon Slim and Teleon? Okay. This is going to be a good game. They're going up against a Garchomp. We got that Garchomp on there. All right. Looking I mean, good, looking Utopia's good. had a run. All right, everybody, here we go. Back into the tournament right now. We are in our losers bracket. Here is Nouns Esports, who got knocked down a little earlier. They're looking to secure their spot soon. They're going up against Utopia right now. Nouns Esports, your purple team. Utopia, your orange team. Boy, Spragos, I am very excited to see more from Nouns. Obviously, I really want to see more from Squishy Squad as well, the team that sent them down to losers and qualified in doing so. So luckily next weekend, we'll get a bit more vision of them. But it's going to feel so wrong to not have Nouns there. So I I got to admit, I am cheering a little bit for Nouns Esports in this specific match. Well, I think it's hard not to, right? I, I, uh -huh. I guarantee there are plenty of people who want to see Nouns Esports lose. There's always, you know, the feeling of like seeing kind of the big dog get taken down, right? There's something Absolutely. exciting to that. There's also something exciting about the region being so competitive that something like that would happen. But I do yeah. think you want some of the big names around too. I definitely would like to see nouns move on but you know if if multiple teams can take them down then hats off to them yeah it would be a crazy precedent to set of a uh, set of nouns esports going down early so we'll see they are not out of this tournament yet in fact they just need to win two more matches and they are qualified but the first team standing in front of them obviously team utopia we only have a gibble so far evolution giving them some iframes dodges a couple instances of the side shock but utah closes the gap nonetheless a trade of knockouts in the top side yeah and it looks like this war turtle's in a lot of trouble right here nice magician right there and skull bash mm -hmm. to get out of that situation situation pikachu by the way something i didn't notice in the bottom path i've seen team youtube running pikachu uh quite a bit in some of their squim uh i almost called them squims in some of their squims i've seen a little I pikachu and i actually think uh <laughs> it's better than uh people think i think pikachu still yeah. has a place in the meta I still think them and Glaceon are the two best cursed incense users. Uh, if you want anti-heal options, I think Pikachu and Glaceon oh, yeah. are Glaceon's incredible. amazing with it. Pikachu too? Yeah, you're right. And if they have a, a high-quality speedster on the other team, uh, you're just so upset to see Pika. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> also, Electroweb for some reason was one of the best moves in the entire game. Isn't I don't it, know though? why. Oh my god. It's so strong. It's one of those moments where I hate hitting my next level, so I have to leave it. I, I don't want to because it is such an incredible maneuver. Yeah, it, it is so, so incredibly oh. good right here. Blastoise with the rapid spin. We've seen a lot of different looks of Blastoise today as we've been talking about. Oh my gosh, that eject oh. <laughs> barely saving him right there from that psychic from Gardevoir. Gardevoir also has been crushing it today. Not shocked yeah. to see that. The buffs were really nice. And Guardi's Unite move now not being so do or die is just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. We have the Gabaika win pretty hard from Rezu. Does not find any KOs, but now it's Esports is looking a little low. ZV is going to find the KO on a Combuskin, but Gardevoir, again, just a great balance check. Uh, being the central area Pokemon, those Psy Shocks doing so much AoE damage. Even the Blastoise and Gabite defenses can't hold up. I'm wondering what was banned here. Obviously, we see no Leafium. It doesn't mean it was banned. I'm assuming Buzzwall was banned for sure, and that may Clefable, be why. Clefable, maybe? Yeah, Clefable as well. I'm guessing it would be maybe Clefable Buzz, something like yeah. that. This could be options. Registeel getting very, very low. They have incredible secure. Here's the snipe shot, and it takes it. Pretty easy lineup for them. Batasu on the slow, but doesn't really have any great last hits options anyway, so they're just going to try to retreat to this goal zone and decide to try to protect it. Huge fairy singularity is going to grab two, and Bruv walks in on cleanup duty and immediately seals the Blastoise shields. Oh, what a slap in the face. Yeah, that's such a beautiful play. I mean, Umbreon is so disgusting for that reason. If you have any Pokemon that has a massive Unite move, you just take mm -hmm. so much of its value away. Uh, you can't play Wiggly into it at all, obviously. And something like Blastoise's it's shield deep. is huge, and it's gone immediately. Nouns maybe pushing a little bit too far. They're going to pay for it with a couple of KOs. Umbreon does go down here. They're not able to pick up Toon Slim or Adesu. Points looking very, very good for Nouns. And Megu right now needing to take this time to stack up, obviously. Yeah, that, that's the trade-off, right? Maybe they give up some experience on the other side, but at least Megu was able to farm a few attack weight stacks. However, what a collapse from the rest of Team uh, of Team Utopia as they absolutely shut down that push. And finally, we have the guard shop available. This Unite move could be devastating in the hands of Utopia. They just got to avoid those Brov mean looks, or at least outlast them. Yeah. Got to wait for the mean look to pass, and then as soon as it does, you can move in on Guardi and pick, pick up a big Unite move. If it wasn't stunned right there, that was an immediate Dragon combo into a Unite, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you best believe it. Pikachu going to run all the way back to their side. Trying to play around this portal. You got to avoid wow. a huge overheat, but they do reset. They're able to live through that damage. I got to I gotta say, that was really impressive. That was a scary moment. Uh -huh. They had to play right on the edge of that overheat. You knew exactly what he was trying to do with it. You, you all saw the play. They needed to get back through the hyperspace hole, and they do. Really impressive stuff. Nice Thunder Thunderbolt. I, I really do love Pikachu uh, in this situation. Huge slow beam, yeah. too. Uh, I think it's a great call. I, I do. Extremely strong. Its Unite move is great because the composition that Nouns Esports is going to be trying to play quite split up. They're not really death ball -y at all. And you're going to have a lot of targets who are tough to find with your composition that's more focused on brawling. Pikachu Unite will be hitting a few targets. However, there is a whole lot of final bosses you got to make it through if you're going to try to defeat Nouns Esports. Two of those, Yu Tao and Toon Slim, the two uh, long-range damage dealer masters on this squad. Yeah, I mean, just it's it's superstars everywhere you look on yeah, Nouns that's Esports. True. You know, it's uh, it, there isn't a single player that you can discount. Every single one of them, uh, the best at what they do, and some of them moving into new roles that we have not seen them really play mm -hmm. before, like Adesu. Adesu on that Hoopa, and then Megu on the top lane, uh, where previously we saw them be basically a, well, let's call it a Slowbro one-trick. So <laughs> exciting to see them on some more, um, I'll call them invigorating Pokemon. Fun to watch in that way. Yeah, 175, 123 right now. This match is really, really close. Level-wise, yeah. obviously, it's skewing slightly onto the side of Nouns Esports, but, you know, they're not absolutely crushing this game either, and we look mm -hmm. like we're getting ready for a massive 5v5. I don't know if everyone knows that every single member of both teams is here right now. <laughs> the Unite move coming out from Gardevoir. We have Garchomp moving in. Huge Garchomp Unite move, but is, can it catch anyone? He's looking for Toon. He's really not able to do much. Now he's caught in this oh. Flux Zone, dealing with an Inteleon and an Eldegoss. Pikachu throws down some Thunder, but nothing happened. Beautiful defense right there from Nouns. 
Oh, and they don't come back through the portal. Good read by the rest of Nazi Esports. They don't see that portal glowing. They immediately run past to try to get some value on the goal zone. Well, that's shut down too. Just take those Swablu Altarios for your time and immediately back. Reggie Alecki will be slightly stronger, of course, with that tier one broken on Nazi Esports side for Team Utopia. It could be a good option to rip through. And they've already ripped through one before. Having Garchomp and Pikachu gives you a lot of wild Pokemon rip damage. Not, not great to secure in the world, but at the very least, you can get it down quickly here we go massive snipe shot oh, oh and the double up jeez i mean you knew where it was you know and uh you <laughs> fired it quick and you got it buddy Double tap, a Toon Slim specialty, I suppose. Now, the good thing uh, for Team Utopia, they know where Nouns Esports is. They are all bunched up together, and a portal is going to reset. However, that's not going to bring the Blastoise with them. They go down 20 seconds, 15 seconds of the final stretch. The Blastoise will not be available. Yeah, huge. Slowbro going down as well. You would assume that Nouns might even start here, and they are. They're tapping Rayquaza at the same time they continue zoning them out. They have a Hoopa, and for that reason, it looks like they backed off of this fight for a second right here because they know they can bring the team in they're still zoning them and it looks like they're looking for a small score right here but of course this is going to bring the ire of the entire nouns esports team down to the bottom path garchomp in a lot of trouble right here eating a massive snipe shot garchomp now down and it feels like they just can't catch their footing here on the side of utopia at any moment right here they have a player of theirs down so they can't mount a comeback garchomp back in seven seconds they're going to need to make a play it seems like Team Utopia is just waiting for the perfect situation, but I don't know if that will ever arrive against a team like Nouns Esports. This Hoopa has been holding on to the Unite move for so incredibly long to try to bail out their team, but it feels like we're just constantly forced into frequent resets. Utopia still completely bubbled outside of this Rayquaza pit. I mean, Nouns Esports has complete control, and now we're even swinging around for some potential back caps as ZVBT is going for the score, but Bruv is responding in the same way. It looks like we're back capping. We've got to be back capping into a Hoopa unite and this is it right here there's no time left yeah here's the hoopa unite they're pushing in rayquaza is getting chipped up right now they know they're behind they're looking for something blastoise unite move trying to knock them up rayquaza is at half right here but they don't have incredible secure on the side of utopia we see one member down on utopia two down on utopia garchomp unite move onto the rayquaza will it be enough doesn't look like it and now secures it right there Toon Slim literally unite moving right in front of Rayquaza's face, firing left and right with those finger guns and demolishes Team Utopia. I think they walked away from that team fight with a KO streak of three and Rayquaza included in that as well. And all right, that is the Nouns Esports that we know and love, Spraggles. They are here. They might be in loser's bracket, but it seems like the energy is still behind them. Yeah, I mean, Nouns Esports, we're giving them our energy, apparently. <laughs> They're looking fantastic. <laughs> and, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's what you would expect from a team this good. <laughs> it's what you would right. expect from a roster like that. Exactly. Yeah, we, we've thrown the word super team around quite a bit. I, I definitely have hard committed to this roster with that with that term. But, uh, I mean, things get a little scary when they're down there in loser's bracket. But we got to remember, of course, the organization's curse of playing out of loser's bracket. Normally, they start that trend in top eight. But it seems like today they're starting it in the qualifiers as well. Can I ask you, what, what are your thoughts on uh, Blaziken here? Because I don't love it. Uh, it's yeah. not terrible. I just didn't. It's not. It wasn't amazing either. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly my thoughts. I think it's absolutely fine. I think it gets you some good objective secure options when you're going into Slowbro, Blastoise, um, and even if Pikachu goes in a specific way, having a triggerable unstoppable is pretty nice mm -hmm. um, with yeah. that overheat, so you can kind of play around the Hydro Typhoon or the Surfs. I mean, obviously, you're there, your Night Moves from Slowbro is going to stop you no matter what. So I think the, the math is there. Even Garchomp, I guess, if they get a good push into you. Mm -hmm. Um... However, I do think, man, I'm getting kind of Lucario pilled. I'm not going to lie, Spraggles. I, every time I see this Blastoise matchup with no Buzzwool, I'm like, well, maybe Lucario's the play here. It would be pretty good. but You do have to um, be careful about getting Lucario pilled, obviously. It's, a, it's an epidemic <laughs> right now. I think, okay. you know, Washington needs to do something about it. But those fat cats in Washington, they just line their pockets. <laughs> line their pockets. It's true. That's true. All right. What do we want on screen? Bracket or the spectate one? <laughs> what are we at? We can do bracket. Why not? Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's just check to make sure no games have kicked off. Nope. Not quite yet. Let's open this up.
All righty. So yes, Nouns Esports is obviously tied, or sorry, not tied, obviously up 1-0. Oh, it's the game we just watched. And Convicts is going to be their opponents if they do win this one. Of course, Novorix, Classics, Iklis, Raytau, and Oni. Uh, a really, really good team. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Oni versus Toon, I think, in the bot lane, like attacker mashup is going to be very exciting. Also, Ross, uh, speaking of role swaps, Iklis on a support now. Uh, I guess that's just the trend in EU. It's Attack surprising that they have allowed a group of convicts to play in United Esports. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, have yeah. seen some players banned out from competing this season, but the convicts somehow not? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't agree with it, but again, the fat cats well, in Washington don't care. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. you got to think about the crime. I mean, they robbed Big Pharma. And if they're going to pull off a heist on a Big Pharma, then it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. A part of me even <laughs> wants to stick up for Big Pharma right here against the convicts. <laughs> Let's take a look. So we've got, what What do we have? Copy Babas against ABCBGBGBGB. So that yep, side of the and, bracket's actually moving a lot faster, huh? Yes, and Copy Babas is up on their match tournament qualification point. Copy Babas 1-0 against ABCD. Uh, that'd be hard. I mean, it's gonna be heartbreaking either way. One yeah, of those teams is gonna be dude, going home. They're both incredibly strong. Honestly, I I uh, I have to say I'm so impressed with EU today. Um, yeah, I know. I all they're of course a great region full of great players, but I today I feel like they're just really competitive. Whereas mm -hmm. before, I feel like uh, it it didn't feel as I don't know. It didn't feel as diverse. Like the the amount of yeah. great teams, I guess. I completely agree, which is super exciting. Obviously, the offseason was well spent. Some teams grinding, getting in the lab, learning how to take down some of these top teams. A lot of big eject yeah. button tech everyone's working on, clearly. That is true. Yeah, yeah. Any more eject button techs you'd like to share with the class, Braggles? <laughs> nah, I'd like to keep a few to <laughs> myself. Keep them under your belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I gotta have a couple <laughs> that I don't tell people about. All right, fair enough. All right, let's get into game two of Nouns Esports versus Utopia because the games are ready. And this time, a very similar draft for Nouns Esports. But take a look at this. We have Inteleon on Utah and Sylveon on Toon. So we're going central area Inteleon this game. They're committing to this Blaze again, which I got to say, I do love the Pokemon. I'm just... Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure that I'm seeing it, you know, as a huge difference maker in a lot of these games. That being said, you know, we're seeing Dodrio uh, right now, and that's something I think to talk about is the state of speedsters inside competitive Pokemon Unite, which is there is one, it's named Leafeon, and everything else really doesn't get a ton of play. You see very, very little Meowskarata, which is a bummer because I would love to see it more. You see very little Bird now. They nerfed it for some reason. Uh, they nerfed Zoroark as well. These Pokemon are interesting because Speedsters, I feel like, are on a razor's edge of being viable or not. And then a little yeah. nerf can just send it out of play completely. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, they're tough to tough to balance in that way. The scales can really tip either direction. I do think, though, the, the big part about speedsters is they're just so metagame dependent. Like, there are there is no role more easily counterable than mm -hmm. Assassins, yes. right? In any in any MOBA. This is not just Unite. Um, they are so feast or famine. So if you were going into a metagame where there is a lot of crowd control and a lot of just, like, bulk, it is very difficult for an Assassin, or in our case, Speedsters, to really thrive. Um, however, in this metagame that we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of double mage, like double, uh, even double sniper, uh, which are great for Speedsters to thrive in. So I, I don't know, I feel like you're, the hard times you've been experiencing might be almost over, Spraggles. I think the return of the Speedsters is upon us soon. I hope so. <laughs> I, I really hope so. I think we're getting yeah. a little bit of that echo on Parsec again. I don't know exactly what causes that, oh, but really? a little okay. bit of a Parsec echo. I'm not sure. As we're watching this Dodrio, Tri-Attack obviously has become the thing in uh, for, for Dodrio players. It's always been good. I want to point out, Tri-Attack has not been buffed. <laughs> it's just that Drill Peck was nerfed. Tri-Attack could always do this. People okay. just didn't give it a shot. <laughs> Already fighting the allegations. I hear you. <laughs> like, just, just know, I always knew. I always knew it was good. It was. It was always good. In fact, I my agree. first favorite build was Tri-Attack Jump Kick. What, does that oh. make me some sort of genius? Maybe. <laughs> Hipster. Maybe. <laughs> Hipster. I like Tri-Attack before it was good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm a Dodrio hipster out here, and I've got three <laughs> cool hats. Oh, dang. That's so many cool hats.
Okay, so this is the central area in Teleon that we were talking about. Obviously, we normally see this in paths just because of how incredible the last hit secure is for this Pokemon. It's not that it does bad in the central area, it's just that you basically single-handedly win the bot lane if Inteleon is there. So a bit of a shocker to see Utah there. However, at 720, they're already level 8. So I think uh, time well earned. Here we go. Megu pushing forward right here with the help of Utah on that Inteleon. They pick up a massive KO, pushing, pushing, pushing towards this goal zone. They need these stacks early. We don't know what exactly Megu's playing. Uh, on Blaziken. Uh, oftentimes in solo queue, you're playing double stacking Blaziken, and you may be doing that right here as well as Dodrio missed it a lot of times, but finally got that boosted to take down the Combusken. Meanwhile, Registeel has been getting paid some attention by a few members of Nouns Esports. Tune in, bruv, obviously trying to play it. However, Batasu has been discovered in that tall grass. Krustle waiting on the far wings as these two evolutions try to break it down. Sylveon, notable rip, but Toonslin trying to save that hyper voice for a last hit secure. And they do take it. Red buff going onto the side of Nouns Esports. It was actually a scary secure there for Nouns. I mean, Rock Tomb's a pretty good yeah. secure. It has crazy range, and you know, you're ticking with that hyper voice. So you're just trying to get a little bit lucky right there. Dodrio moving in, seeing if it can get anything done against this Blaziken right here, dancing around a little bit up in the top path. We have a bit of a fight breaking out. Zadesu was caught right now by the Buzzwole, picked up, set down, but somehow makes it out of this situation. Here comes the overheat, landing on the Crustal into Ooh. the Rock Tomb. X Scissor pushes that Blaziken for a massive stun. The whole team is grouped up, but it's not like Inteleon is able to do damage in a group. It's a single target Pokemon, so it doesn't really pick up any big KO right there as they continue pushing onto this top path. And here comes Toon with the Hyper Voice trying to clean this thing up, but instead has to use a Unite move of its own, united Ooh. back by Buzzwool. And that was a real back and forth fight. I, I would say it looks like our uh, orange team Utopia maybe got the best of that one. In terms of experience and knockouts, absolutely agree, but at least credit to Nouns Esports for being able to hold down the fort on that goal zone and not allow a score lead to be increased via that fight. So impressive stuff from Nouns, at least in that regard, but Utopia, absolutely, showing some signs that they can hang with the best of the best in EU, make it with jet button combos, but in the end, it's the Eldegoss auto that takes that Reggie Alecki. And here we go. We can see them looking to defend this Reggie. Toon's just going to be able to burn this thing down as well as Megu quite literally burning it down as we have Dodrio running towards this bottom path. Hoopa bringing the team through. We're going to have to see what they want to do here. And it looks like Dodrio was trying to score, but maybe got stuck on the outside of that pad. Didn't start oh. it at all first and then got picked up for a big KO. All right, another chance for Nouns Esports to really take an advantage in this game over. Buzzwool is a jack button comboing into Megu. That Unstoppable going to allow them to get through that portal and reset. A Dezu drops a very aggressive Unite move portal, but Toon Slim, the one to really take full advantage of the space created. As they are carving through enemies with this Hyper Voice. And here we go, Dodrio just looking for these moments. Nice big oh. Unite move. Can it get... No, it could not take down the Blaziken at the end there. The Boosteds... We're finding their mark, but they didn't stop Megu, who gets a nice 30-point overcap into this bottom goal zone, while at the same time picking up some of this experience and now being able to rip this Crustal apart. Level 12 there on the Blaziken. And it looked okay. all right last game, and some of these fights it looking pretty beautiful this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I think we're starting to see the idea of why Megu wants to be playing this Pokemon. I mean, the versatility, obviously so important, and that overheat burst damage is tremendous. So, leveraging big moments like that, as well as they're able to take the Regirock in the bottom path. Now they've got a defense buff, Toon Slim can be a little more aggressive. Yeah. Absolutely, as they're heading up towards this top path. Ooh, we can see a little bit of a catch here in the center, but there's the snipe shot by Dodrio. It just takes one, really. It just takes <laughs> one. Point blank range and still is just devastating enemy HP bars. As Megu yet again starts another forward fight. Toon Slim takes up another as Buzzwool goes down. Crustle shows up, but I'm afraid you're a little late to the party, although you are well dressed, as Crustle is gonna have to retreat as another goal zone is shattered. 26 point overdone. They do have quite the hat on them, don't they, Zoinks? Reggie Alecki here a lot of in hat. this top path, going down easily here. We're missing the snipe shot a little bit, no big deal. Dodrio looking for their stacks. They're doing everything they can to get these here. I mean, inting quite a bit, but they know how powerful Dodrio is if it can get a couple of those. It is going to go down here. Uh, I don't know if one stack and a little bit of scoring was worth it, but it could be if it's the difference maker between a KO and not. 
Sure. Yeah, I, I would say so. Especially a Pokemon that is so all in like Dodrio. Obviously, you have your initial engagements with the Tri Attack. I guess your Unite move adds you a little bit of extra either bail or get another chance at damage option. But. Sport Eldegoss trying to duck, dip, dive, and dodge every which way, but at the end, Blaziken will always find a way to KO you. Megu, almost at level 14 now. It was a beautiful KO right there, using that Blaze Kick. When you kick him into the wall like that, you stun them briefly for a moment so you can easily hit that overheat, which is what they did right there. Picking up a nice KO. Two minutes, ten seconds on the clock right now, which means Ray Quaza is about to hit the map. Nouns is up, and once again, it does feel like they're in a great position. They're just able to... Gosh, look at these snipes, by the way. Just able to zone the enemy team out. They're going to have to reset here because they're just getting absolutely chunked. Just over 100 points separate oh. these teams, and yet another snipe shot lands. Utah is simply not missing in this fight in particular. Is now with only a minute 40 left on the clock. Team Utopia is sent scrambling, desperately trying to find another answer to this noun squad. You can see the mean look just putting him in such a horrible position right here. The snipe shots can really land true. They know exactly where the enemy is positioned at. Toon Slim actually ripping apart this buzzwell as it sits in a mean look trying to unite to save itself but it's not going to work crustal also using the unite move umbreon straight through the portal right here running up getting a nice stun on the hoopa but i don't know if it's going to be enough as bruv comes in takes the shield from it with its unite move the mean look oh. under the dodrio unite it's never been more cruel than in a moment <laughs> like that glaceon in a ton of trouble right here nouns is up they don't need to take ray they can move back and try to score which is what they are doing right here one minute left buzzwool trying to make a defense happen but it can't even really use its moves because of mean look yeah i think nouns esports has got this one in the bag if you will i mean it would take a literal miracle for utopia to find a way back into this match and nouns esports are now going to put themselves at one match away from qualifying into your top eight uh against a very very tough opponent on the other side though i hope copy bobas has been uh Practice in their game as well. Another eject button tech showcased by Megu. Obviously, they knew they were on stream. They had to show it off for you. Yeah, they were like, look, are we doing eject button techs today? Okay, we can show a, just another look at the Blaziken tech right here from one of the top players in the world. You absolutely love to see it. Points continue to rain in. It's Nouns Esports. They're so tough to beat. I mean, they're one of the best in the world, or at least that's what we're thinking right here as they have been for the past couple years especially with a few new additions it looks like they are still looking amazing would not agree more spraggles i love watching this team when they are making runs like this utah with 13 knockouts in that last game 111,000 damage as well i mean that is a whole lot of damage flying the other way when Utah honestly felt basically uncontested in the back line, I mean, this poor Dodrio having such a hard time even making their way back there or becoming a relevant threat to the Inteleon, Utah was able just to sort of free fire from back there. Yeah, I wonder what we're going to do about Inteleon. I, I don't, I would be surprised if it makes it to the end of the season this powerful. Hmm. It feels too Oh, powerful. the end of the, like, UCS season? The end, the end of the UCS season, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this Pokemon definitely needs to be toned down. Something with something with the snipe shot scaling, I think, needs to chill. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, it is way too strong. It's just crazy. It is. It really is. Right, let's take yeah, a let's look. Let's take a look at uh, our bracket. Bracket was oh maybe we can jump into the last game between Copybabas and ABCD if we sure, have it. Up, yeah. Let's see. Mm, nope. Okay. <laughs> not up, unfortunately, or at least not yet. Uh, so, yeah, that is uh, a qualification game. It's tied one-one. That's, that's and, wild. And top and bottom, by the way, tied one-one. Oh, Neo Century Red and Red Pig as well. Okay, very competitive games on uh, this pool, specifically in pool number two, uh, between all these squads. Very, very exciting. And then, of course, we have been casting from pool number one in our last matchup, which I believe is, yeah, now it's Esports versus Convicts now going to be our next coming up game, which is a qualification match. Yeah, this is going to decide whether or not Nouns or Convicts is heading into the top eight. I think a lot of people would expect Nouns to be there, but of course, course this is a strong team convicts is very very strong mm-hmm 
Yeah, incredibly so. Uh, I'm really, really excited to see this team play uh, against a team like Nons Esports because it'll be a true test, I think. Because where, where else have we seen Convicts play? Um, against Yala Bingo, I think it was the only time we got them on broadcast, right? Where they, they looked good, but Yala Bingo just sort of clutched it up in each moment. Mm -hmm. I wonder um, if, if it was you, uh, would you rather be in Noun's position right now or Convict's position? I'd rather personally be in Noun's kind of coming off a nice win. You're almost like warmed up, ready to go. But I don't know if maybe you're overplayed at a certain point and you'd rather have the rest like Convict's. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, if I'm Convicts, I would rather play Nouns on a loser's racket run because there's a chance the mental's broken, right? There's a, there's a chance that they are frustrated and you can maybe take advantage of that. However, yeah, it is tough to face the other side of that coin against a team that is very excited and very pumped up that they're having a great run, mm -hmm. uh, which I would say, yes, I would choose Nouns in this situation. I would really much, very much prefer to be in their spot. Yeah. I think so too. I think so too. I would just want to be. I would just want to be warm. I just want to be going mm -hmm. with anything. Yeah. Just like keep it moving, baby. Keep it <laughs> moving, baby. I don't want to be sitting waiting. Ugh. It is crazy that we are we're cutting to top eight in in brackets like this because it is uh, so so exciting seeing what these teams can truly truly do. I know, right? How many teams for EU? Ninety two. It looks like is that right? Ninety two signed up. Eighty five checked in. So we had 85 total teams actually participating today. Pretty cool. Just really incredible. Um, NA currently, I don't know if you were here when we talked about it, currently signed up is 150 teams. It's a lot. Uh, when you, when you look at those lot. numbers, they're different numbers. Yeah, you know? <laughs> That's true. We haven't done the long division again, but we're, we're working on it. Uh, but at the very least, I'm sure even with like no shows and stuff like that, we'll probably still be in the like at least 120 plus. Uh, which is a ton of people. It's a ton of people. Yeah, it's like almost 600 people wanting to participate. In Dude, region. a lot We're of just... people pumped for Unite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just another showcase of just the competitive part of this game really is one of the best parts of this game. Oh, it's uh, so good. It is. And it's so uh, fun to I'm watch. I'm excited. So you know, we play. have draft coming to the game, um, mm -hmm. and you've got an opportunity for Ranked to start to more closely resemble competitive play you know especially i play a lot of solo uh i also will from time to time play some duos some trios it's it, lately it's been mostly solo but for players who are playing in five stacks um yeah i mean you can now queue on ladder and practice right which is awesome I think Muck put out a tweet about it. It was this was quite some time ago, but basically that one of the best times for competitive unite was right at the beginning of UCS season one, when every top team was just playing ladder. Yeah. Before scrims really started, because it was, I mean, you were just jumping into a bunch of different teams. You were playing constantly. Five stacks were good, but it was because you were playing the same format that you would be playing in a UCS event. Mm -hmm. um, but now you're not, which makes ladder yes. really difficult to use as a practice tool. This is why I um, I know EX licenses are banned from this tournament in particular. Uh, however, I think if EX licenses are allowed back in ranked, I think they should allow them back in tournaments. Um, they should allow them back just, in tournaments in general. I, the, the game, right, they should be right. more balanced, and they should but be allowed back But if they're not in allowed in ranked, I, I just want the ranked season, if they're going to do this different thing, where you know where they're like, oh, this season, it's this, or this season, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, this season, no emblems, but EXs are in, or whatever. I want that to emulate the tournament play all the time. I just want tournament play to be a exactly the same as ladder play, so that it is an excuse, it's a spot that you can practice it, I agree. in my opinion. Totally agree. Totally agree. I think that would be great. It'd be really awesome. Really, really awesome. Oops. Okay, so it looks like we unfortunately will not have um we will not have the opportunity to watch that qualification game. Oh, what happened? Um from what I could tell. Well, I just it's not loading into my game. Right. So I'm just sort of assuming that it's um sort of assuming that it is just not available. Uh let me check. Yeah, I mean, it's been going on for 42 minutes, and I still don't have it populating. So I'm I'm assuming they just, it's almost finished, if anything. Okay. You can check my friends list, too, I guess. Sounds good. Uh, I'm going to grab myself a water real quick, Zoinks. Do you want to entertain everybody while I'm gone? 
There once was a man named Mike Golfin. I mean, yeah, you, I can, you I can, can do that if you want. You're allowed to do whatever you want. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Yeah, I'll, I'll right talk back. to chat. What's going on, chat? I hope you're all doing well. Will AOS Cup be online or LAN? Hot Mom's asking. Um, the AOS Cup uh, finale, like the top eight in EUIC, will be on LAN. It will be on LAN. Um, the top eights to qualify for that event, though, happening next weekend, will not be on LAN. Those will be online tournaments. Yeah, Pidgey, don't worry. I'll make sure Sprinkles grabs you one, too. Sponsored by Water. Love Water. Shout out. Respectfully, my trainer card needs work. Pimsky, it's okay. I yes, it does. This is our Unite Mics account, the one that we use for um, the one that we use for spectating. So I have my own personal account that's different than this one. Please, please don't meet me too hard for the Unite Mics account. I promise it's okay. No, but my fave team uh, in EU. I'm a huge fan of Ball Toy Unite. Honestly, I really, really like them a lot. Hope we get some ghost types to satisfy Zoinks. Healthy Chatter, I completely agree. Yeah, Kate, listen, it's the Unite Mics account. It's level two. What do you want me to do? Here, let's go to the closet. I don't think I have anything. I can put on the sporty set. <laughs> I can put on the purple Unite set. I don't have much options. As you should be. Yeah. Yo, what's up, Perma Sneeze? I'm glad you've been enjoying watching. Look at the jackets now. Okay, okay, go into the jackets, go into the jackets, go into the jackets. Jackets. No items found. Oh, no. <laughs> you saw the Unite Mike's account online at like 7 a.m.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started EU like literally right at the start of the day. We've been casting all day long. I surprise you with your ghost Pokemon Enterprise. <laughs> oh, expertise. I thought you said Enterprise. <laughs> yeah. All right, chat. Let's check. Let's check Spectate again. See if we have any, uh, see if we have any friendos getting into some games. Oh, we see NA warming up. We got Viridian with Barnwell and Dark Aura with Get Yoshi playing some ladder. Hype, hype, hype. Yo, can my boy Sableye get a buff? You have that power? Yeah, no problem. I'll make sure to let the appropriate people know to nerf it. Uh, <laughs> are you going to cast the entire tournament at NA tournament as well? Yeah, children, the plan is for Spraggles and I to continue all the way through NA. It is going to be a long day, but it is currently the plan. Uh, we'll see how long we make it. We might, I mean, we'll for sure do the winner's side. Who knows? Maybe when loser's side hits, we'll chill. I'm not too sure. But the plan is to, yeah, keep up the broadcast going. Chelvin, by the way, I saw your tweet about the what, what What did it cost? That is one of my favorite tweets ever in the United community. That was so funny. Get your G Fuel ready. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what the heck? Spreggle sponsored by G Fuel. We're going to send some in. It's so good. Buff full heal. Yeah, I'm down for buffing full heal. I think full heal buff would be good. I think that'll be good. <laughs> Sableye buffs are uh, illegal. Yes, yeah, we don't want that one. What if Seagulls never comes back? Will it just be me and Chair casting then? And I'm pretty sure you all are a pretty big fan of Chair, if I remember correctly. So I don't think that's like the worst thing in the world. Okay, Chair, I know it was a meme earlier today, but I don't know if any of you were here, like right at the start. D did any of you, d did seriously none of you know that like children's song? The once was a man named Michael Finnegan? Did really none of you know that song? Had some whiskers on his chin again? I really feel like you all do it. Buff potion? If they're going to buff any tank item... Is it Canadian? No. No, you can't all have not heard it. This is a crime. Um, If you're going to buff any tank items, I want a Rocky Helmet buff. Rocky Helmet and Leftovers, honestly, both could use uh, could both use some some great options. True. Yeah. Preach it, dude. Oh, God. Okay. You know how norm sometimes, I don't know if you get this, you get like teams being like, hey, do you want to cast our games? And they send us a message, you know, to like, just be like, yeah, you should cast our games, blah, blah. Well, I just got a message that said, do not cast our games. It's not worth it. Who said so, that? I won't. I'll tell you privately. I'm not going to tell chat. All right. Message <laughs> me right now. And I want to, I'm going to put my face on screen and everyone can see how I react when I see that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, wait, I guess I'll just text you. It's easier. One sec. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was funny. It's Team YT, Chess. <laughs> that was oh funny. Gosh. That's okay, not what I expected. Doing... All right. We're doing nouns, esports, I assume, right? We got to see them through. 
Uh, Spragles, do we want Nouns Esports on purple side or orange side? Mm, purple? Purple. Sounds good. And then, of course, they are going up against Convicts on the orange side. Now, th these are huge matches, Zoinks. Uh, I know we're having a lot of <laughs> yeah. fun here, but it's time to really... Yeah, enough of that. Enough of that. Stop. <laughs> no one likes it anyway. Um, yeah. It, this is huge. I mean, one of these two teams is not moving forward. It could be Nouns not making it to the top eight. And, of Ooh. course, they are a lot of people's picks for the, the team. And an Absol has appeared on our screen yet again, this time from Raytel. What is with EU picking up the Absol? Well, basically what happened is I complained about speedsters, and then they're like, <laughs> no. You're wrong. Yeah, that's no, essentially what happened. Is what I tried thinking? to make a point about speedsters, so I'm immediately proven wrong. Here's <laughs> here's what I'll say: No one's playing Cinderace. You'll never see it. You're about to see six <laughs> Cinderace games in NA. Yeah. Oh man, I know you don't have a camera on to stream right now, Spraggles, but I could hear a giant wink out of Spraggles towards the camera when he said that out loud. Wink, wink. Sometimes I actually say wink, which I think is <laughs> overdoing it. I also think saying sometimes is underselling it, how often you do it. That's true. That's true. It's, <laughs> it's all the time, baby. I mean, come yeah, on. Frequent. <laughs> We're having fun here. Yeah. Toon Slimothy, Toon by the way, uh, playing the Del Fox. I've been liking Toon on the Fox. They're jungling mm -hmm. at this time, so I wonder if they are going to be, uh, you know, dashing or if they are going to be spinning. I'm not sure. Feels like a dash game to me. Uh, Fire Spin is incredible into Buzzwall. It's like one of your best options in a Buzzwall. How I feel like you, the rest of your composition kind of covers for it. So you could go all in on it, I suppose, but I don't know. This game feels pretty good for Flame Charge, Mystical Fire to me. It sets up some delicious snipe shots, though, for sure. True. Oh, that's a good point, though. I do like those. I know Utah likes them even more. Water Gun and two critical hits from, of course, our favorite emo fan, the Drizzile. Yeah, they love it. Boy, I was disappointed with that Pokemon's evolution inside the mainline games. <laughs> ah, water types and disappointing final stage evolutions. Name a more iconic duo, really. I'm a Qu -Qu Quavel fan. Okay. I'm I'm on board. You and maybe one other person. Keep dancing, baby. You do you. <laughs> I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, the, the hair is just too good. It's way too good. Um... Oh, Spraggle's mic is lower. Okay, I can I can definitely chill my voice. Uh, too. Sorry, I can. Everybody. If I'm way too loud, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'll, I can lower you. Okay, you sounds good. It sounds like chat has been campaigning for me to be lower. Um, mostly because they don't want to hear me anymore. But I, think I will just, take it. Like, you know, okay. at some keep talking, Zoinks. We'll see if the chat. All right. Might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that looks we'll better. I, I'm looking at the levels right now. That looks better. Okay. And it is fire spin. So yeah, you're correct. It's gonna be there for the setup and. Uh, it's going to be powerful. That goal zone left at two as well. Early game going phenomenally for Nouns Esports. Already setting up for a huge overdunk. And that last critical hit auto attack is going to set it up perfectly. <laughs> Rub even finds a way to get another sack in and put that goal zone at one. I know. Don't you absolutely love that? I mean, in a solo queue game, a person's walking down there with three any minute now. It's but of me. course, yeah, these players are not going to pull that. They're deciding how they want to break this up right here. This is for a stack for sure. Yeah, um, and for Reggie Alecki, right? They, they obviously are not rotating at this point in time, so we may as well send that towards tier two. Yes. So nice little uh, zoning out there from Toon, just making sure that they can easily get that Reggie Steel and no one has an opportunity to steal it right there. Of course, that Unite move is on basically zero cooldown, so it's able to make <laughs> that happen. I like the play there from Absol running to the bottom path, looking for a sneaky move, but Nouns actually maybe sussed it out or just decided they weren't going to move in with it. However, we've got a big goal zone open right here. Jumping on in, there's 30, and we have two more members of the team running to the top path. Yeah, I doubt Navorx gets out of this, but I say that as they unite move in and somehow Bro finds a way to do an instance of damage to KO them before their damage can even really be done. Raytel gonna retreat level 10, but we do have Convicts walking away with a sizable score lead even before the six minute mark. So this is the other Absol, by the way. We're looking at Night Slash, I believe, right? I think that's what I just saw in that moment. Night so Slash Psycho Cut then? So now we're seeing two different Absols. Nights, yeah, Night Slash Psycho Cut is great for uh, like that quick burst on things you'll also get that of course with the unite move but you get a yeah. massive burst onto enemies and you know uh, objective pokemon with it 
<laughs> also, I'm so terrified of your chat because I see people saying justice for jo Zoinks and we love Zoinks, and then a bunch of messages deleted by moderator. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's happening there, but I, uh, I gotta keep my head away from it for a little bit, I think. Yeah, I'm also not sure. We're, it feels like we're on a uh, <laughs> message deleting spree on Twitch. I'm not sure exactly what's happening with it, to be honest. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Here all we right. have what? Bruv and Toon pushing towards this goal zone. Interesting to see uh, the pain split on Trev, which I think is still an option. You know who runs pain split is everyone's favorite, Phil Umas. He's a fan. <laughs> and I am too. I, I, think it's a, I think it's a solid move. However, it was kind of nerfed pretty quickly after it was buffed, and I think since mm -hmm. then everyone's kind of just been on the Horn Leech train, which is a, a weird train. The tickets are wildly expensive. Yeah, it feels like, I don't know, it just the train got set up in a good neighborhood and all of a sudden you can't take it anymore. I don't know. It's a bit of a bummer. It is weird, uh, but that's what happens when a train, you know, they start getting too big, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it before. It was cool for sure. Uh, Bruv lets the wood hammer onto the Absol, forces out the full heal at the very least. The Vork's going Ooh. in 1v4 and is going to fall. <laughs> Man, that's so unfortunate. I mean... They, they really had an opportunity to pick something up right there. Unfortunately, that Unite move just barely misses, and they're not able to pick up a KO right here. Noun's in a great position for this fight. Big absolute Unite move. Takes some damage onto a Desu, but, you know, that's Clefable. Able to really heal a lot of that back. You're going to need to do Burst very fast if they have a Clefable on their team. The Hoopa Unite bringing him right in a perfect spot to actually just get taken down by Noun's Esports right here as they have a complete command of this fight. Yeah, like, let's try to hold on to that hyperspace fury, the big fists from nowhere move that Hoopa gets access to when they're uniting. So the last moment to try to find the secure, but unfortunately they didn't get the Delphox in the stun. So Toon still able to secure very easily with that Delphox, of course, having uh, their own host of burst damage options available to them with this specific build. You know, one of my favorite things about... Uh you know competitive play and when the season starts coming around and people have to make big moves and big choices is when you see a pokemon that you didn't expect to see in comp actually make a difference and it's really cool to see absol here today i you know mm -hmm. I, you didn't see a lot of teams running it you don't see a ton of it in acl or anything like that uh it's been in and out of competitive play for a long time and i'm just really happy to see something like that i was very surprised to see Leafy on. Now I'm pretty surprised to see Absol. It's just great players on some of these Pokemon can really start to make uh, the meta shift around them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, securing Reggie's and Ray's seems like more important than ever. And having Absol Unite for that option is, is pretty good. And a lot of players are becoming to rely on it. It might struggle at parts of the game or against very popular choices on the other side. But if it still has some kind of value, it's at least worth considering in draft. Yeah. And it's always great to have a power pick, at least what you would play as a power pick, and have it very, a very little chance of you not getting it. That's such mm -hmm. an advantage, you know, to have a Pokemon that you are great with and it's really hard to counter uh, in draft mode. That's just such a, mm -hmm. such a strong uh, thing to bring to a team. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally with you there. All right, Glaceon hanging out on the top side of this map. Buzzwool roaming as well. Absol actually looking to see if they can make their way all the way to the enemy goal zone for a bit of a back cap. And Megu is actually abandoning their post a little bit. So Absol might have the potential chance to get a sneaky hundo burger into that goal zone on the top side. And they're going to want that. This game is incredibly close right here. Klazik's getting caught a little bit by the fire spin and the snipe shot right there. Buzzwool also getting caught. Glaceon charging up at Spears, unfortunately getting its passive taken down by the uh, Rayquaza Whirlwind right there. Looks like Megu has gone to the top path to deal with Absol. Absol is going to have to peel back, but it is being chased down super hard right now. The hyperspace hole sending it home. Nice little play right there as we have Bruv moving forward. Bruv is just in command of so many of these fights. If you watch Bruv, you'll just see everything from Nouns Esports kind of uh, take place. You, you, he sets up all of these massive engagements for a lot of the carries on his team. Looking for something on Hoopa right here. Missing his wood hammers. Nice big damage going down. A full rain of the Icicle Spears. It's gonna have to peel back into the moonlight as this team is gonna continue pushing. Hoopa Unite move is out, eating a snipe shot, but someone's gonna need to make a decision. This game is so close. I don't think anybody knows who's ahead, Zoinks. 
Good call by Classics to just run up and eat that fire spin so none of their carries get targeted by that one. Megusar is getting to work at the back line, and Barov is protecting their own back line as Plus Wolf goes down. Rayquaza finally about to be secured, and it's Nouns Esports that finds that takeaway. Utah on the Inteleon, the one to find the secure. And now Nouns Esports in pole position to start this series 1-0. and Yeah, they are going to do that. And it's one of those unfortunate moments. They didn't know they actually were ahead when they start that rip. I'm sure they thought it was close. You know, obviously mm -hmm. they looked for that back cap. But yeah, they were unaware uh, that they actually were ahead on the side of Convex. Yeah. Well, there it is. Now it's Esports 1-0. and oh, Now one game away from qualifying for the top eight of the AOS Cup qualifiers. And Convicts in a situation with their backs against the wall currently. Yeah, I, and I think there's no way you can know, but also that is a razor thin margin, you know? Seriously. Mm hmm. They're looking to make something happen, but it is tough. I mean, you are ripping Ray into a, an Inteleon snipe shot. It's scary. Yeah. It's true. No matter what Ours you're doing, it's pretty scary. I am going to uh, mute for just a quick second. I got to make a quick phone call, but uh, I'll leave you to take care of the stream in my absence. Zoinks is muting for a quick phone call, everybody. And what I'm doing right now, I'm going to pull up my Pokemon Sleep. So I didn't get to do my sleep today. You can take a look where how I'm doing here. You guys want to see? We're on Lapis Lakeside, for anyone who's curious. Right here. I got my Char. I think my bag is full right now. Yeah, I can't gather ingredients currently. I need to make some breakfast. That's what we're going to do here. Some beautiful music. Are you guys playing sleep? I'm a big sleep head. I'm a sleepy boy. I'm going to cook some contrary chocolate meat salad. Normal energy. Throw a ton of ingredients in there. That's what that looks like. Beautiful. We didn't get a critical hit dish. That's okay. 12k on the dish. Not bad. Not bad as we're feeding them up. <laughs> Pokemon sleep isn't for you. Apparently sleeping three hours a night is not great. Yeah, I can feel I can feel you there. I can feel you there. Any Pikas in the tournament today? We have seen Pikas, Pichu. We have. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? My team right now, I haven't caught all the new Pokemon in the new place yet. I've got Char, Venusaur, Meganium, Feraligator, and Blastoise. That's the squad. That's who's hanging out with me right here. It's okay. It's okay. We're not amazing. We're doing pretty good. I have tried Slay the Spire. I love Slay the Spire. Big Slay the Spire fan. I don't remember what I have the most things unlocked with... Slay the Spire. One of my accounts has, like, everything unlocked. You know, all the characters and all their cards and stuff. But, yes, I do like Slay the Spire quite a bit. What are your five favorite teams? Uh, for Pokemon Unite? That's a good question. There's so many good ones. So many good ones. Nouns is up 1-0 against Convex right now. This was our screen we were watching it on right here. Nouns is one game away from qualifying for the top eight. And we're about... Yeah, that was Shiny Venu. And we're about... Um, we're about halfway through the day. Not quite, because NA is going to be longer than EU, but we're about halfway. That is crazy to think about. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Are they scrimming? Or did the tournament start? NA didn't start yet, did it? Well, you could be an hour off on everything. <laughs> That is true. Check. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. North America. Yeah, it's in. No, that's Europe. In progress. Uh, no, it looks like it has not started yet. Might just be a scrim. Yeah, probably. Probably get into some quick scrims and do your thing. Who people watching? <gasps> the Intel. <laughs> These teams are trying to find. You know, Mimikyu is actually... Uh, I'm surprised it doesn't see more play. We've got a few teams in NA running it. Mm -hmm. I think Mimikyu is pretty yeah. good. 
It's a good tank buster, I think. Like into yes. those double defender comps, like Blastoise Slowbro. Yep. Shadow Claw is just crazy. I know the so the rip on Shadow Claw is amazing. And the self sustain it gives you, like you restore so much HP whenever you're using it. Gosh, I love I love Mimikyu. Coming from Ken in the play. chat, Mimikyu is more popular in Asia. Yeah, they were playing Trick Room in there though. So what? <laughs> yeah, did you not see this? There was a Trick Room Mimikyu player. They're not serious. That's what I'm saying, dude. I don't know. They're not serious. It was fine. Trick uh, room? You're not serious. I, I am? Well, they're not, but I am. It was... It was something. It was certainly something. You're playing trick room. You're not serious. Trick room popped off? Look, anybody can pop off when everyone's playing silly goose time. <laughs> when everyone's being silly gooses, of course, anything's popping off then. Yeah, that yeah, okay, I can completely agree with that. <laughs> oh my goodness. What off meta Pokemon would I like to see? Well, there are some I'd like to see that I know there are no chance of seeing. Um, you're not gonna see any char. You're not you could see T Tar. Um I don't think you will. I bet Mime could make some plays. Oh yeah, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen any mime in a year. I think Zara Aura is pr is primed Ooh, to do good. well. I actually think Zara Aura is is not as bad as people think. I like that one. That's a good shot. The leveling has been fixed on it. I think Zara Aura has actually been solid for a while, but nobody plays it. Okay, yeah. So we just got the notification. NA registration has closed. So now they have an hour for check in. So that means Zoinks, you and I can't compete. What? Oh, if you forgot to sign us up? Bro, I did. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. We got alarm clocked. <laughs> NA Classic. We actually did get alarm clocked in a way. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up to a DM. Well, I didn't wake up. I saw it, but I saw a DM from Sprackles going, hey, did it start already? Oh, no. Okay, we got game number two ready between Nouns Esports and Convicts. It was uh, it was this morning at four something my time, and I just went to look at the EU bracket, and then I see like uh, it looks like games are going, and I was like, okay, <laughs> we missed it, we missed it, everybody. It's not our fault. It's too early. It's it too is early. Too to start early. <laughs> um, what is your prediction here, Zoinks? Not a, not just a, a win or a loss here, but I mean we're seeing a few Pokemon we have not seen. Uh, on yeah. the side of uh, Convicts, we've not seen Alolan Ninetales yet. We've not seen them bring out the chicken, I don't think. Uh, what do you think uh, about their contribution to the match? I'm excited for it. I, I think A9 is going to be a very, very difficult Pokemon to get on top of. Buzzwool is going to really struggle in that specific engagement. Uh, the Unite move from Alone the Ninetales is really just the best anti-dive tool, tool I think that exists in Unite right now. So a great option. However, uh, Megu is not really known to show up in the bottom side of the map very often. Uh, they are kind of one of those top path players that loves to just stay up top, grind their stacks, and uh, just make sure that they're like very very high level uh for the final fight that's where they prefer to exactly how i love to play top path by the way i know yeah. it's you of course want to you know work with your team um but when you're dominating top path dude i mean i'm setting up camp i live there oh yeah i don't want to go <laughs> anywhere i every time you do see me i'm two levels higher than you think i should be it's very fun <laughs> but you rarely see me i'm, I'm kind of like a, a hermit up there in that top path I like that sage style top path play. I think that's a good look from you, Spraggles. Thank you. Ike looks brought out by Megu, super powered. However, there are both a Leafeon and Combuskin here to defend the goal zone. One of those Pokemon is beautiful. One of them is the ugliest thing ever created. I'll let you decide which. Yeah, Leafeon looks like trash. Good thing we have Combuskin <laughs> around to look really, really beautiful. I swear, there is something so fun about so many mid, uh, like, three-stage evolutions. So many of the second stage is such, like, an awkward teenager. It's a very fun it's choice. So yeah, I'm glad they fully committed to it because they nailed it with Combuskin. They really that's did. What they were looking for, yeah. You love, you, everyone loves their first stage, right? Yeah. Their Most second stage, everyone's like, everyone. get me out of here. And then their yeah. third one is varying levels of it's trying to be cool. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. some of them nail cool. The, here, the thing about being cool is it's hard. Okay? Take it from someone who is never cool. Uh, it's yeah. hard to be cool. 
Uh, when you try to be cool, it almost always doesn't work. However, every once in a while, you get Greninja. Yeah. <laughs> That is true. Do you think Frogadier is hot? Whatever. All right. And Frogadier is <laughs> actually okay. Really... Frogadier is okay. Yeah. You're now right. Z-Sports off to obviously an incredible start. Adesu immediately pivoting away from the goal zone. Good mental math from them in particular. Not want to break that evenly. And Toon Slim on this Blastoise again. The last time we saw them, they were spinning to win, of course. And why change that up? An early water spot. You get that cooldown back and you swing right back under the fray. Blastoise is going to have to walk away from that engagement, though. Cannot chase down the chaos at this level. Blizzard Avalanche is still ridiculously good. Uh -huh. I mean, the uh -huh. amount of damage it provides is insane. The push on it, I feel like, is underrated how good that push is. Although, seeing Utah on Espeon really uh, brings a smile to this cowboy's face. Because, as I was mentioning earlier, I think this Pokemon is great and a little slept on. Just because of how good all the Eevees are. Yeah, busted. Uh, I really do think so. Espeon, incredibly strong. And now the Registeel buff has been earned by Nouns Esports. Classics and Oni trying to defend this spot into your goal zone. However, it's probably not going to work out in the way they intended. As then we have a few dunks in. Goal zone left at eight. Make that even three. But at least in the meantime, Convicts were able to take the Regieleki and set it towards tier one. Yeah, but now we have the team porting up into the top path here. Eichlis going down. There's really nothing that this is going to do. They're just going to have to peel away as Nouns is continuing to push towards this goal zone. They've got 30 in the hands of Bruv, but they also can just pick up these KOs and continue to secure in this bottom path. Right now we see Raytau on level 9 for this Blaziken, which is a great place for it to be. Once it hits 8 and it gets the ability to switch between its stances, it's a completely different Pokemon. So we're going to have to see if it has more of an effect on this match now. Yeah, because so far it's had basically nothing. Uh, so you're really hoping for at least some kind of showcase of what this Pokemon can do, because obviously you and I both quite big fans. Blastoise just taking all that damage in uh, in change, walking away from it. So much defense boost when you're in rapid spin. But Blastoise able to really hang with the toughest of them. Blastoise already level 11, by the way, just hanging uh -huh. on that bottom path. Experience-wise, Convicts are getting diffed pretty hard right now. Um, yeah. And it's not going to be a good place for them to be. They're getting score diffed, experience diffed. It looks like they didn't get Buzzwool or Blastoise, so maybe they got draft diffed. I mean, it's just not a great position to be in. Blastoise looking to make something happen right here. Here comes the Blastoise Unite move. On to nobody. They're already gone. We're looking for a huge overcap in this top path. Who's going to take it? It is Buzzwool with the 40. Meanwhile, Bruv is just winning a 1v1 onto the enemy goal zone. Like, this is the hardest I think we've seen Nouns Esports win a early game uh, from yes. any of these squads in EU. Like, this is the best showing we've seen from them, and I guess it's a pretty great time to do it. That's <laughs> literally one game away from qualifying for top eight. Convicts, though, not out of it yet, but their win conditions are shrinking, like, by the minute. Isn't it classic nouns to make it here into uh -huh. this loser's bracket for this? It's just exactly what they do. Huge wood hammer, huge <laughs> unite move, massive rapid spin. Everybody is just kind of gone. Blaziken's like, yeah, look at me. I can kick with my big fiery chicken leg. It doesn't mean anything. You're all done. <laughs> Oh my word. What a sick showing from Nouns Esports. Literally, it was all those moves you listed in tandem one after another in perfect timing. Espeon picking up four after that Woodhammer is criminal. I mean, if I'm Convicts, I'm putting up the controller. I'd be like, yep, that was a good run, guys. We had a great tournament. Uh, let's let me pack this one up. Here we go. Some points raining in. They need this, obviously. Four minutes on the clock. The game is far from over, but boy, experience-wise, they're quite a bit behind, and now we're just watching another big fight as Megu just decides to kind of be mean right here. Gonna see if they can take down this slow bro. It's only level nine. What a massive level advantage here. Level 13 on the Buzzy Boy. Blastoise just hit 13, which means it has Rapid Spin Plus, which the defense bonus on that is absolutely absurd. It's like plus 300 or something dumb. That is, that is very dumb. In a world with double experience share, you should never be seeing supports on the enemy team basically catching up in levels to the enemy central area. Um, <laughs> that should not be existing. And now Esports was accomplishing that like a moment ago. Raytow was 11 and Bruv was 10. So extremely close to these enemies. I mean, now Esports is just, they're off into a whole different world, it seems like right now. And it's a good one because they are currently leading us with 319 on the scoreboard. And like you were mentioning, levels for days. Yeah, it's just 
the the score lead is great for them because they don't need to be the ones to make a play and the level lead just makes it almost impossible once you have this kind of a level lead all nouns needs to do is just zone you out of ray right. and it's pretty easy to do when you don't have uh the ability to catch up because your pokemon are just so much weaker in comparison even if you get a nice big pick on an enemy you just can't do enough damage to it you know you're only a level 11 alolan nine tails as opposed to a level 14 on the other side so it's gonna be tough gonna be really tough it's great for announced esports as well like you were mentioning they have a advantage at that final ray fight because they don't need to be the ones to initiate that's awesome it's a very difficult composition to initiate into clefable slow bro but we're starting a little bit early slow beam onto the buzz while mega is going to unite move back the other way emerald two step from Navorx, but the solar blade goes wide and mega is actually going to take full advantage of that and takes out that ko and now they're just buying time four members of convicts has to chase down megu it's a trade one for one megu gone for 30 seconds seconds the rest of now's esports just defending the ring yeah i mean that was a huge play if they get that without a player going down i think that's massive with a player going yes. down it's it's good still because it's a bigger ko right but it's not as huge ray Tao, on the other hand deciding that it's time to fight rayquaza is getting ripped right here they have great secure here comes the hoopa unite move buzz will back in two seconds massive unite from the espion everything goes down before buzz will even comes back three members down rayquaza is at half there goes the blaze again the only one left is the leafion hiding in the reddit bush i don't think it's gonna be enough as actually nouns doesn't even need to hit rayquaza right here they're just waiting for leafion to come on in too early, it goes down, and Nouns heads to your top eight. Good work, Honey Desu, getting up in the face of Alephion with a Registeel buff. Even a Hoopa can have enough threatening damage to force Alephion to make a tricky situation. And yes, Spraggles, you are correct. Nouns Esports will be playing next weekend in the top eight of our AOS Cup qualifiers. And unfortunately, Convicts will be going home. Yeah, I mean... Look, you would expect this to play out like this. Not that Convicts isn't a great team. I mean, right. if you look at those names on the other side, these are top tier players. But we are talking about the expected kings of EU, Nouns Esports. Uh, and they did look fantastic in that game. And what match are we looking for right now? Uh, there's a lot <laughs> it seems like teams are warming up all of the na teams are starting to fill in uh, onto our squad uh gatlu's playing right now i'm assuming ball toy might be helping one of these na teams warm up oh these are uh, all we're all seeing a bunch of scrims right here interesting yeah getting i think i think gatlu's getting in there so i'm assuming ball toys or he's just filling in for some scrims but, but yeah these are the t this is a bit of a look at what teams we have a chance to watch we have also Ooh. alter ego luminosity gaming god squad uh kira was on oh i forget the team name i'll have to look it up but dark aura as well and of course we got a lot of other teams um all competing today it's gonna be awesome that's right everybody if you're just joining us where the heck have you been you jerk come on yeah uh but if yeah, you're just joining your us we are basically finished with eu here we're gonna be mm -hmm. heading into na very soon the day isn't even half over because na is bigger than eu that's right we eat them for breakfast lunch and dinner over here in na mm -hmm. eu has been an absolute barn burner so far we've seen so many Great teams, some upsets when Nouns got sent down to the losers bracket, which is, you know, pretty wild. Some great teams have qualified. And NA, yep. a lot of your fan favorites are going to be seen on stream. Team YouTube, TTV, LG, all the big ones. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Dark, uh, Dark Aura, GT, um, LG, like we already said. Oh, uh, gosh. I, we have a lot of – we got a lot of them lined up. I'm quite excited. Uh, but just as a reminder, we are almost at the end of Europe. I don't know. We can – we still have 30 minutes, I guess, until NA truly starts. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you if you want to watch this last qualifier. But um, Team Uwu will be having their opponent chosen very, very soon. And that will be the last qualification match. So for everybody watching, if you're just tuning in, the EU teams that will be playing next weekend are Squishy Squad, Yala Bingo, Nouns Esports, uh, Illusion. Who else is I'm missing here? Ball Toy. Uh, Ball Toy Unite and Illusion on this side of the bracket. A through L, so A, B, C, D, E, G, they were able to take down Copy Babas. That's pretty crazy. That's uh, a big one. I've got Cookie uh, Dough in the chat. I think she wants to watch their team. She says, oh, yeah, I yeah, beg yeah, you yeah, not yeah. Well, to watch me. Oh, those. that's obviously a joke. We can watch Cookie oh, okay. Dough. <laughs> yeah, we'll watch some Cookie Dough games for sure. <laughs> and Red Ping beat Neo Century Red. Interesting. So this is a team we didn't get to watch on, broad on our broadcast at all. 
So very, very cool. Red Ping, Moogie, Anesthesia, 9 a.m., Sunny Love, and Nine Apple. It's exciting times, Zoinks. Exciting Ooh. times. What what would uh what happened in this bracket that maybe you didn't expect? I feel like Convicts is a team I could have seen qualifying for sure. Convicts is a team I could have seen qualifying. Absolutely. I think um I think ABCD, I mean, I'm very high on ABCD's team. However, I think it's still somewhat of a surprise for them to make it through. I, I think, if anything, it's that Nouns Esports went down to losers to qualify. Sure. That's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a pretty big surprise. And, oof, I mean, maybe end of list. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know much about Squishy Squishy Squad, do oh, I? Oh yeah, and then Squishy Squad qualifying as well. So Squishy Squad, they have they have been a roster. They were a roster last year too. However, they have quite a few new players mm -hmm. on their team, if I can remember correctly. I think Nuke, Senpai, and Burton all played together. I don't recognize Geo Glitch or I think it's Lugi. Is how I would pronounce that. So I um I'm not too sure, but either way, I'm very excited to see them. They will be. Uh, on winner's side of the bracket, but I believe they seed one through four and five through eight, depending on CP for it. So they will most likely be seeded fourth place okay. um, on the next weekend, which means they will be on the same side of the bracket as Ball Toy Unite, I think, because they will most likely get seeded first just because of championship points from last year, because this tournament is the only one that uses CP from last year. Okay. That makes sense, right? Everything else starts mm. fresh after this. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, everything else after this will use only championship points accumulated from uh, UCS tournaments. And I could look it up. Uh, I forget. Let's see. Unite Championship Series. <laughs> Something uh, Lutano asked me about when I was doing my podcast um, that I'd love to hear your opinion on after we finish Price, this. The uh, CP for AOS Cup? Yeah. It, and I uh -huh. actually didn't know what he what he was uh, like alluding to with that comment. I was like, well, yeah, it's a big, big tournament. It means a lot. But now I understand what he was kind of asking about. Yeah. Uh I'm not a huge fan of it awarding CP. I think the prize money enough um, would be worth it for players to be interested enough to sign up and be involved in it. And the AOS Cup qualifiers also give championship points themselves. So I think they could do it with no CP. However, that is the path they've gone on. Does it really benefit teams who are willing to travel to play in this event? Maybe. Um, that is true. However, that's how every other Pokemon title functions. Is it really rewards players? Oh, who it are does. To travel. Yeah, if you're like, if you're like bouncing if you're around. talking about Unite Pay to Win, oh my gosh! <laughs> the other games like TCG, VGC, Go, you are forced to travel for events. They do have local events, but they are not enough to earn yourself a World Championship invite or anything. You still have to participate in regionals and internationals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, it feels like a little bit of a side effect of Unite existing in the same competitive sphere as other Pokemon titles. Um, but I would like in the future to see that CP just toned down. You could give some championship points. I think that's fine. But let's not make it as much as a regional. Yeah. Like, that is a lot of CP. That is a lot of CP. While you're here, everybody, by the way, if you're here on YouTube, go ahead and smash that like button. If you're here on TikTok, just tap your screen a whole bunch of times until your fingers bleed. And if you're here on Twitch, well, I don't have anything to tell you to do, but do something. Come on now. Twitch. And um, we can take a look at this, too. The, uh, the championship points for placements go past just the top eight for... Players, of course, participating in in-person events, but same with this event. So, yes, it might be kind of heartbreaking to see a team like Convicts go out at ninth, but they're still earning 70 championship points for their team, which is at least going to help them in seeding for the rest of the tournaments. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're going to be they're going to be set up a little bit better. But even seventh and eighth getting obviously not getting top eight today is a heartbreaker for sure. Yes, absolutely. Oh, but sorry. Don't think they're Hold walking on. away with nothing. Sorry, something happened. Hold on. With me? It's time for the real star, the chair. Chair, 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 chair. I'm saying chair, chair. I'm saying it weird, but I'm saying chair. The chair is the star of the stream.
All right, Zoinks, you there? I am. I very much enjoyed the break. Chair happened. Chair in top eight. Let's go. <laughs> Chair happened. Teams are getting ready. Um, do we have this last game? It's not ready yet. Uh, we might not get we it. Can... Well, it depends. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, NA still starts in 30, I think 30 minutes. I'm checking so again. So we should now. have I'm time. Paranoid. Probably. Now I'm so paranoid. Yeah, no, the circle is still blue. The uh, bracket has not started. However, they might have seeded bracket now. Let's check. Gosh, 158 total teams that sign up. 133 teams so far have checked in. Okay. For NA. Okay, so no, the uh, the bracket has not yet been seeded, or at least started. Okay, you wanna you wanna duo a game? Oh, should we just check the Europe? Let's see if we're not. <laughs> gonna... What are we doing? I just wanted to check the Europe game to see if they had uh, started quite yet. Oh, not not this, not AOS Cup Europe, open qualifier. Mm -mm. Oh gosh. Mm -mm. What do you guys think of my purple background? I made it purple. I like it. I like it too. I wasn't sure what to do with it, but I was like, you know what? Let's make it purple for this. I'm a big fan. I want some new cool official art like this. I love when they do yeah, that. Yeah, they've been doing a better job of the like Pokemon release ones. Um, like they on Twitter and stuff, they have like the the cool full big picture spread of them. Um, but yeah, some actual big epic artwork would be awesome. This is like kind of a big version of it right there, everybody. But yeah, yeah, we can um we can do a game. I it looks like they're in bracket ready to play each other, so we could wait for the Uwe game, or we could just duo until NA starts. I'm down for either. Yeah, just pop in a game with me. Okay open the, the video game we'll do something fun okay 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 y'all i'm so set my car won't start so that's a bummer what yeah i know that's the phone call i had to make whoa what my, happened my wife tried to eyes we need a new battery again uh mm. which is <laughs> sucky sucky thing zoinks but. battery fund Please. <laughs> that would be awesome. Let's get it going. <laughs> NA starts in 30 minutes, Dan Marsh. <laughs> yeah, this is this is why EU so sleeper, huh? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> we got a gifted in the chat. Thank you. <gasps> well. Is there something you wanted to see me play, Francine? Thanks for the gifted, by the way. Thanks for the support, everybody. Appreciate you very much. I keep losing audio. On my from Elgato. the capture card. Yeah. No A button pressers. Play Leafeon? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Azumarill, eh? Maybe. What are you playing, Zoinks? Um, well, I thought you were getting a request from chat. I was just going to play around you, but. Uh, I'll play whatever. Play Mimikyu. Maybe I candle. We've got candle. I don't want to be hovering that. We've got candle. Go. I'll, We've I'll got go Cinder. We've got Gudra. I mean, I could support. We're probably fine with double tank. You play a one under if you want. I could play a rounder for sure. Zara. I can play Zara here. Ooh. Zero Crustle bot lane. Is there a different tank or a support maybe you want with your Zero uh, lane? This is fine. Okay. Is Candle bad in lane? Asked the chat. No, it's not terrible. It's got a weak level four, right? But uh, it's okay. Like it's it's weak up till five, but it's not terrible. You just gotta get it to hit its five. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good anti stacker. Mhm. Mm Great anti stack. For burn yeah. damage. Which is like a benefit. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Even I like that Here we go. 
Enemy team looks so mean. They have a Clefable <laughs> and Slowbro and <laughs> Oof, Dragapult. Yikes. Uh, you're, pu you're pulling me into your stupid high elo games. I know. Everyone, <laughs> everyone's tryharding. Yeah, your good gamer games. Don't like it. Have some fun, everybody. You don't need to play Clefable every game. Are you stacking? Yeah, no. Okay. Should I? I this is a Pokemon that I have not played like at all um, until this season. I was like, oh, yeah, Ooh. Ooh, who do we got here? Bird. Herb. Got it. I lost Got audio again. I just keep losing audio. I swear, I think my capture card is dying or something. Oh, no. Uh oh. Our Cinder was going to come join us and then abandoned us. Didn't feel like it. Got bored. It was an early rock to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just prevented a, prevented a What are you talking Pretty about? Pretty early. I got to save for that yeah. rock to him. And then I have another one on cooldown. What do you want? Probably should have let the rock tomb go so you could get the KO and a trio, but it's okay. We got it. We still got it. True. I think I have another capture card around here. Just got him lying around? Well, I had this thought one day, it was a genius thought, where I was like, what if my capture card goes down and I need to work? Um <laughs> ah, yes. I better have a capture card. I think I have it around here somewhere. Okay. I think so. Because right now it's just uh, Zara Aura with no audio. Oh. That's the best part of Zara Aura is the audio. Yeah, everyone loves it. Oh. Did I do it? Hmm. I think I did. They're going to get me. They're going to get me. Let's see if I can fix this. There's some audio. Yeah. Mm -mm. Make all the sound with my mouth. Zomp, 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 zomp. Meow. Nailed it. That was nice. a lot of. You think Zero was a cat? It's a little cat like. Oh, I know, but. Top Pass having some trouble. Good thing they got the jungler every time. <laughs> Isn't that how it goes? I don't know yeah. why that is, but your team that gets every advantage is like, ah, we lost. We lost every time. Uh, I'm le level six at Ray. You're dominating, so we're all good. I'm going okay. You got like three of them. Yeah, I know, but there's five of them. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, good job, guys. Getting the oh, un uh, uncontested Regielecki up there. It took two of you, apparently. <laughs> Great. Great. Oh, I. This is not going well. Cinder <laughs> and I were defeated. I got stunned and I couldn't eject onto the Dodrio. I get that if I can eject onto Dodrio there. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure our team will uh, eventually fight with us. One day. One day. Cinder's uniting him. I don't to capitalize. Rubble Rouser Unite. Oh, oh I'm running. YouTube is, YouTube is practicing uh, Pikachu. Yeah, they've been, they've been running Pika. Oh, God, 
reunited. Gujra is scoring 22. All right. Something. <laughs> I, I, it's on. something. Yeah. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. Feels like nothing when you're on their team. But it ain't nothing. For us to take down. Uh, the Uru game just came up. Do you want to jump into it after this game we're doing? How could I jump into it? I'm popping off currently. Chaos Streak of four? I don't think I get this. I think there's a Chaos Mirror in here. Ooh, just barely. Hypertech. Just barely. Where is that bird? Nice. We somehow get that. Gudra's fighting Regieleki, not on goal. He's gonna get KO'd to Regieleki right now. This is not real, dude. I don't. We don't live. We don't live in a reality. We, this is a simulation right here. <laughs> it's gotta be. Name. Yeah. There's no other. Answer. This is a simulation. It's just seeing how much I can take. <laughs> Crazy. You know how we saw Samba Urshifu in EU? Uh huh. I think we're gonna see even more in NA. Maybe people are liking it. YouTube plays a lot of it with Fui. Uh, God Squad plays a lot of it. Alter Ego plays a lot of it. Utana plays a lot of it. Do we have any... We don't have an objective coming up, do we? And then we do. Uh, yeah. Okay. How are you feeling about it? I mean, I think our team's going to fight over it. Betcha. Some Mimikyu and a Dwarf, they're all down there. Well, it means we get this for free. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Cool. That's not bad. This goal's at 26. Oh. I mean, that's a massive over if they let us have it. You're, uh, you are at level 15 as well. Uh -huh. Alright, I'm running center. Bird's the word if we can get him. Dang. I didn't mean, of course. Twice. <laughs> they united me twice, both unites. Oh, monsters. Pocket monsters. Both unites that stop you from moving. I ate them both. Double slow beams, basically, is what I'm dealing with here. Oh, X's are counts in gravity? That sucks. Mm, <laughs> I'm like cinder. mashing X's there. Dang, our cinder just jumped into that in the queue. I think Gudra can buy you enough time. Uh, I don't think so. We're going to try to get that up. Uh, three quarters. Now it's going down now. really fast. Can't get there. Well, that's what happens. They eat both unites. Not much else I can do. I KO'd Dodrio. I ate two unites. I scored. And our team is AFK. <laughs> They're not even trying to defend. Oh, really? I feel like that was it's so stupid. The way people play this game, they wonder why they lose. <laughs> People will be like, ah, my teammates are not good. And I'm, I'm watching them play. Watching them. Walk out I of the goal zone and try to defend. We already scored 100 top. Imagine if you stopped them. Imagine. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. 
GG. GG. Mm-hmm. Clefable diff. That was a big part of it. It's true. Uh, I would say the diff was uh, getting united twice. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big tip. I got and I, locked I wasn't down United near twice. You, you jumped across that wall in Ray, and I was like, oh, no, I can't catch up. <laughs> I was, like, running around to the circle. It took me too long to get to you. did okay. If I had was able to unite right beside you, maybe we maybe we make that work. How close are we to NA? Ten minutes, huh? Ten minutes, or we can jump into uh, the final game at EU right now. Okay. Um, It's happening? Yep. It's happening right now. Maybe. We can do that. <laughs> okay, let's just wait. Let's just wait for it. <laughs> well, we can see it. Oh, okay. Yeah, or if you're down, let's do it. Yeah. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. So this is Team Uwu versus uh, Cinco Golemo, or CG. <laughs> like okay, that. CG. And is uh, Uwu up one? No, it is... I think it is tied zero zero. Oh, it's zero zero. Okay, we might not see the end of this, but whatever. No. Yeah, it might be true. But hey, there's a Metagross on screen. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Do with that what you will. You know. Fun to yeah. see. Metagross hey, heading center, huh? Okay. So, oh, I think that's where you need to put that Pokemon. I think you probably you could play it top. It's level nine. It's so bad early. I don't know. I think if you're going to play this competitively, I think Metagross should go center. You might be right. I think it's five is fine, though. Yeah, but it's so hard to get five. <laughs> Feldum and everything. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not a non-Metagross believer. But that's Well, it, has, it hasn't it uh, has done insane stuff in comp at all. Mm. And it, it got that weird buff nerf, you know? Oh, so. yeah. So it's like you buff, you over buff it, but then does it need slightly more? Well, it's hard to say. When is the next time they're gonna touch it? it could be a long time. So yeah, that's true. You know, big push from Snow. Here I able to escape for the most part. Just early game shenanigans. Outside of the uh, everything pretty normal. Outside of the fact that N is actually playing top path Inteleon. In this game. Yeah, I guess you don't and see that much at all, right? We've got kind of yeah. two insane secures, top and bottom. You got Leafeon and Inteleon. Yeah, okay. Cinco Valema. Interesting. They are they are running Gyro. I was thinking that if they were playing center, they might be playing Meteor Mash. I mean, Gyro Ball is Ooh, great. Yeah. But I thought maybe you come to path, because the burst on it's insane. So the secure is, is really, really great. Good. Um, mm -hmm. You could go either way. I think both are totally viable. Especially with how we were talking about how, like, Double Burst feels so, so strong right now mm -hmm. <laughs> in our current metagame. So, yeah, having Leafy on and that would be a cool tech. However, it seems like Galaxy going to take the KO anyways. If you're watching on TikTok, make sure to send one of those to Spraggle's way. Beautiful. I don't know how much a Galaxy costs. I think it's, like, a billion dollars. Oh, yeah. Send me a Galaxy <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now, please. Yum, yum, yum. Here we go. <laughs> Fight at eight. Let's see how this goes. They sent Intelli on center, so they just... They traded center with it really quick there. Oh, we have Icy Wind. Okay, so yeah, and not going with the more, I would say traditional Glaceon build um, when they're playing from the central area. However, the popular one has certainly been Icicle Shard as of late, but Icy Wind great for good burst damage and taking out these squishier targets like Leafeon or even Inteleon. It's just so, Icicle Spear is so dumb. You don't have to think about uh -huh. anything. With uh, yes. Icy Wind, you at least have to kind of like hit one move. Well, you have to hit a single skill shot. You can hit it on anything. Get it on a wild right. Pokemon. You just need to hit it. That's all. Yeah, it's true. Galaxy, oh, nice to get three people with that Gyro Ball. It gives them a ton of shielding. And then they're able to keep themselves up as well as wears constant support. This Metang able to keep on fighting despite so much damage from the other side. Yeah, I can't remember... I believe it's two. I think when it comes to enemy Pokemon, like literally players on the enemy team, uh, yeah. I believe you only need to hit two for max shields. When it comes to wild Pokemon, I think you'd need to hit three or maybe even four. I can't remember exactly how it works on wilds. But yeah, if you manage to hit three enemies, you're without question getting your max gyro ball shield, which is massive. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Here we go. Registeel being started right here. Snipe shot's coming in. 
hitting the... Ooh, Sylveon got pulled right into that. That was not great for them. Unite move coming out from the Inteleon right now, trying to push this advantage. There's the Solar Blade moving forward with these auto attacks. Snipe shot instead, actually, as Registeel is going to go ahead and leash right here. The Horn Leech pushing the Umbreon back in. Glaceon's still in a possible steal position if they decide to rip this Registeel. But, of course, there's four members of our orange team here in this bottom path. The Woodhammer's keeping them out, and there's really no one around to do anything about that. Nice secure from the side of CG. And this Registeel attack buff would give them kind of the tools they need to hit one of these goal zones if they want to, but it seems like a pivot towards the top side is more in their strategy, as Galaxy has hit the Metagross, I think, large, largely in part to that team-wide experience from the Registeel going in their favor, and now they can throw hands against this Metagross, or against this Blastoise, knowing that no Unite move will show back up. And here we go, Galaxy in this top path right here, already level 10, which is huge. And they're going to be able mm -hmm. to just brawl in some crazy ways, especially if their team sets them up for it. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, such a tough Pokemon to take down as well, especially with the tools they have available to them. Like Sylveon, maybe one of their best answers, but you're dangerously in close to Gyro Ball range whenever you're trying to Hyper Voice. So they don't have many options to really whittle down the HP bar of this Metagross. Yeah, now we have Sylveon pushing up towards this top path, trying to help stop them as Snipe Shots are just raining in towards this goal zone. They're able to get Blastoise with one of them right here. It's going to put them in a tough spot. Here comes Metagross looking for that Gyro Ball, caught in a mean look, but it's actually not the worst Pokemon to get caught in a mean look either as yeah. they move in and they break this goal zone. I'm not sure if that could have been a 35-40. Uh, I didn't actually see what was in that goal zone, but that felt like a small overcap. Yeah, I always want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but... Uh... You know, I think that could have been much, much larger on the side of CG, but that's all right. They are currently in the lead over top of a team like Team Uwu, Woo, who only went down to this part in the bracket when they were on their win in previously. So for the second time today, they are playing with their backs against the wall. Pretty stressful tournament day, I would say, if you had to line it up. But CG, having their own crazy tournament run, wants to make it into that top eight. We said they're relatively unknown, except for maybe a couple of players on this team. Obviously, that could all change if they make it into the first top eight of the of the year. Here we go. Clefable getting caught right there. Big X scissor into the rock tomb. And that's going to be a huge force of healing down on the side of CG. We have the Metagross Unite pushing in. Here comes the Blastoise Unite. Sylveon Unite right back. Leafeon goes down. Crustle looking to make some plays happen right here as Metagross is barely hanging on as well. This is getting extremely low. Secured somehow by Inteleon. Looks like an auto, I think. It must have been. I mean, when that Pokemon has crit, it, like the B button's a better secure tool than Snipe Shot sometimes, it feels like. So, <laughs> and able to find that one. Yelling Gunner gonna th show up for the goal zone defense, but I think think otherwise quite rapidly. 50 points goes in from the Inteleon. And Metagross still just infinity amounts of brawling. I mean, Trevenant, Metagross, Clefable. Like, this is such a bulky front line that so far, Team Uwu has just not had an answer for. Yeah. Great stuff here. 196, 72. Heading up to this top path, getting ready for this Reggie Alecki. They're not in a great position to uh, to take it here on the side of Uwu. So we're going to have to see if Blastoise can make anything happen here, or even if they want to. They've got eyes on it, and they just kind of go for a... You know, a prayer, a little bit of a water spout. Yeah. Can anything happen? We'll see. Trevenant in a lot of trouble in this bottom path. It takes eight Pokemon and a mean look to take down a Trevenant. <laughs> it really does. So much self-sustain, so much defense, and even shielding if it can really find it. Team Uwu, though, on their rapid response to defend this Reggie Alecki, they're going to be able to KO it as well as a couple of members of Team CG uh, at the same time. So Greg on this Leafeon is going to hit level 13. Also, shout out to just my friend Greg. I love that that's their gamer tag name. That's awesome. I'm kind of surprised you don't go by just Jake sometimes in game. You know? I've thought about it, but, you know, the it's just too risky. That's true. That's true. That's true. Also, there's a very, very talented Overwatch pro named Jake. So, well, I wouldn't want to be confused. I wouldn't want to presence. sully their good name, of course. <laughs> right. Of course. Of course. Of course. Oh, well, they retired and actually became a caster. So, who knows? All right. Crustle. Ooh, swiped out of that tall grass by the Trevenant. Great little wood hammer tech. And by tech, I mean, I mean, it hits the whole map and pulls the opponents wherever you want it. So, good play by Fizzy to create some space. But seems like both teams drawn a line in the sand, and no one willing to cross quite yet. You will see. 
players with wood hammer, they can position it really well. You see how he was throwing that wood hammer. It's actually not only going to stun them, right? But it does swing their pull towards that the middle area of the wood hammer right there. Mm -hmm. So you can reposition enemies in some really interesting ways with this move. We see at the top path here, Metagross, just using that to see who is in that bush right there. Nice play. They get the shield, so they immediately know that they've hit something inside that bush as we go, or we're going to have indicator. ooh back out here. I love that indicator. Did I get shields? No? Yes? Okay. <laughs> there might be someone in there. It's tough to tell from just the sound effect. It feels like the Delphox, right? When you're just throwing yeah. the mystical fires every time you hit one, you're like, all right, my cooldowns got reset. Somebody's in there. <laughs> exactly. Oh, where takes a whole lot of damage on this Clefable, but they are going to follow me all the way in. I think they're on the Trump Unite move at some point, but the Metagross has now created an arena. Galaxy is brawling, but Galen Gunner is actually still able to fight. The amount of healing has been solid up until this point, and the Sylveon has taken two so far, Jake. Wow, I mean, this is, whoa, huge snipe shot. So back and forth right here. If Inteleon can land these, it's kind of lights out. But it looks like Inteleon caught in this mean look. Hopefully Glaceon is going to, no, they are not. That's four down from the oh. Inteleon. They are now looking for a score right here. I don't think anyone's going to spawn in time in this top path. Crustle's coming out, but I don't think it can make the pad in time. If it does jump, it's going to miss the Leafeon, and they are already behind. 163, 296 as CG is going to take game number one here. Oh, devastating for the side of Team Uwu is, yes, CG pulls that fight out on the back of an Inteleon. KO streak of four from N, and you can see them even celebrating a little bit in the tall grass. What a showing from them. Great stuff. And uh, I just saw a DM in the official Discord saying that Bracket will be, re will, will be released in about 10 minutes. So okay. if the next game is ready, we could probably jump right into it. I'd say let's do it. I mean, that was an exciting series between these two. Yeah, yeah, that was really fun to watch. Okay, spectate, friends, standard battle. Nah, <laughs> they have not started quite yet, which I'm surprised. I feel like we joined that game so, so late, but unfortunately, not quite yet. Muck, Aquilo, what are these team YouTube players? Pikachu, Eldegoss, so we check a little scrim, a bit of a, just a peek at the comps. A little peek? A little peek. Uh, oh, up against Brave Birders. Come on. Okay. Smash that like button, everybody. If you didn't like that joke, get out. <laughs> yeah, that, enough is enough. Why are you here? <laughs> enough is enough. If you don't like that, can you please just get out? Yeah, that was a test, and you all failed. You know it. You know it. Oh, NA is coming up. No, this is not our first NA game. This is just some uh, pre- Tournament uh, scrims that are happening. Brave Birders versus Team YouTube. Colin Tang, the OG one trick <laughs> of the North American scene. Yeah, not ladder, but just just scrims. All right, I mean, leave that game. Wait for the next one to actually be up. But yeah, I just wanted to see comps. What's mm -hmm. going on there? Just letting everybody know. Ah, Christine's misspelled brackets in your chat. <laughs> when uh, when NA drops, yeah, hand it to me and I'll switch the bracket up. When NA... Oh, when the bracket seated? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me? And I'll, I'll, oh, okay. I'll switch our command up. What happened to EU? So we're just about done with EU, Skippy. Almost every... Feels like I'm talking to someone... Uh, and I'm being insulting, being like, hey, Skippy, we're just about done with EU, but that's really your name. Uh, Is that really? It's Skippy, in, your Skippy in the chat. A bad connotation. Uh, like, well, like you, you, know, you know, someone's like, uh, they're like, um, hey, what's going on? And you're like, hey, Skippy, give me a second. Okay. <laughs> you know, it feels okay. like you can be, you could be a little curt. By calling okay. someone Skippy. But this is really Skippy. So EU is almost done here. We're watching the last game that's going to decide our top eight. So uh, Nouns Esports has qualified for our top eight. So is Yala Bingo, Squishy Squad, Ball Toys Unite. Um, I'm blanking on some of the other ones, Zoinks. Who else? Illusion, Illusion. Uh, is also in there. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L is also qualified. A lot of letters. Uh, Red Ping. Also qualified. I think that's it. Yeah, I think we got yeah. it. And it's just it's just either Uwu or CG that are going to make it out. There we go. In this tournament. Yeah, I'd obviously CG up 1-0 after the match we just watched. And that Inteleon play was actually so sick. Yeah, it was. Like, Huge very, moments. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Breathtaking, even. The Metagross Unite is 
very cool when it works. Oh, I, so I think cool. that Unite move is very, very interesting, especially competitively. However, not this game, but the last time we saw it, I kept noticing that every time Metagross would set one of those up, Buzzwell would just pull him out. <laughs> Buzzwell would just pull him out of the rock circle. I, I know. Was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I'm excited to see Metagross. I wonder if we'll see more of it competitively. It's, you know, whenever there's a new Pokemon, it does take a little while to decide yeah. whether it's something you want to bring into competitive or not, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know I kind of was uh, opposed to your top lane uh, top lane theories, but I do think it it can hang. It can do a good job down in the top lane. It's Look, just... if we're putting Blaziken up there, we can put that. Yeah. You know? God, so good. I mean, Blaziken at least has that, like, Blaze Kick at level 5 that can pull farm. Like, it's, like, one of the only redeeming parts about Garchomp's early game, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, both of them have that, which is great. It is really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. True, 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 true. Okay, here we go. Next game, and ooh, a Delphox is a part of it. Uh, Galnagunner on the Delphox. I wish I was more excited for Delphox. I don't know why. Oh. There's something I'm just. There's something about it where I'm like, yeah. It's not that okay. it's bad. It's been doing better, especially Fire Spin. But I don't it know. It is comp, though. I think it looks okay. I mean, you need any anti-heal option you can take into Slowbro, Lapras, Metagross, Clefable. Like, that is so much bulk. That is insane. It's a great point. So I think having some kind of anti-heal, even if it's just in the Unite, is at least an okay option. Seeing Lapras, I mean, it's it's rare that we see a Lapras, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, wow. It sure wasn't for a while, so this is exciting to see it now when it is... Uh, Hey, I was watching your Maridon videos. I don't know if it ever got clarified. What does weakening the goal zone mean when Maridon does it? It lowers the amount of healing they receive by 30%. Oh. I'm not cool. sure if it's That's shield. not as broken as I thought it would be. No, it's not like fully disabling it, which sounded yeah. pretty broken, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be absurd. Uh, and here we go. This is what we've seen from Leafeon a few times today, able to make it all the way to the enemy central area and steal their farm. So... Not even early on that. Really nice stuff. They're going to get punched a few times by this little weird thing, but it's not going to do anything, really. <laughs> Leafeon is so nuts, man. If every so speedster strong. evolved... Over, like, if Dodrio evolved at four, you'd ban it out every game. It's crazy. I think it's time we tell the people who are making this video game that the Evolutions can get their United at nine. I think it's time. <laughs> let's let's move that down the road. There are a lot of things we're dealing with. We had to we had to stop pay to win. There's a lot of stuff going on. Okay, <laughs> That's true. we're fighting a lot of battles. Fighting a lot. There's a lot, of, of, there's a, on a lot of different fronts. We're I got people dealing <laughs> with the EX situation right now, and now you want them to start dealing with the evolutions? I don't know. We just need to be a yeah. united front on some of this stuff, Zoinks. <laughs> that's fair, 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 fair. We can't fix it all at that moment. I think that's true. And here we go. Seeing this. Uh, Metagross now, level 5. It's got the gyro ball. It is a war zone out there. It says Silver mm -hmm. Tepig in the chat. That's right. It's a war zone. Oh. It's Call of Duty War Zone for Pokemon. Are you streaming on TikTok? I'm on TikTok, I'm on Twitch, and I'm on YouTube. Oh. Yeah, what's up, TikTok chat? They're my homies over there. Zoinks we all know we're the best chat on TikTok chat. Zoinks likes TikTok. Come on now. You're streaming on TikTok. <laughs> I like TikTok, but they're my oh. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> That's fair. Ooh, nice little eject button by Leafeon. The only way you're going to be escaping the Metagross at this moment in time. Rock Tomb keeping N from following after their teammates. The Crustle may go down, but at least they saved the Delphox Drizzt. I don't know why, but when you said the only way you're going to be escaping the Metagross, it just... I, it felt like an advertisement almost. <laughs> it's like, the only way you're going to be escaping the <laughs> yeah. Metagross is with this right now. Get yourself a Rock Tomb. If you buy a Rock Tomb now, we'll throw in a Stealth Rock for free on your next order. That's right. Rock Tomb and Stealth Rock for the price of yep. just Rock Tomb. It's never been better <laughs> to start playing Rock Tomb Crustle with an EXP share in competitive. Here we go, big telekinesis. They're moving in for this fight, but they're picking up a Crustle. Not a lot you're going to be able to do with it. It's a massive brick wall that they're trying to get through right here. We do see the Fire Blast there for yep. the Delphox and the mm -hmm. Fire Spin, which is... I think the best build competitively for this Pokemon. I think 
It, it's a little surprising. It's a double defender plus Clefable. I feel like Mystical Fire, you could rack up huge numbers, though. Absolutely. But I, yeah, I think the option, you're right. It's just too powerful to really ignore. Ooh, snipe shot hits, and Leafeon swings in to finish the job. N does not have level 9, does not have the Unite move to really contest, and that means that it's going to be a pretty easy pickup for Team Uwu. Oof, and look at these snipe shots, too. The other thing about that fire spin is, you know, it's just another way to set up clean snipe shots, and I don't know if you've noticed this, snipe shot actually does a lot of damage. Yeah, from time to time, um, it can really get some value. Uh, and you know, having a really good showing on it as well. Hitting a lot of their shots. Of course, capitalizing on whenever Gunner is lining up those fire spins like you were just mentioning. And making sure to take full advantage of that surprising amount of damage it can do. I swear, it's like you're advertising this to me. It does a surprising <laughs> amount of damage. You're really going to want to pick up one of these snipe shots. Listen, I gotta pay for this car battery somehow. <laughs> That's right, yeah, you're selling snipe shots know. out here. You're trying to get <laughs> pawn off some of these rock tombs. Anything to make a buck. Ooh, ooh Lapras Unite move. Uh, does nothing. Uh, Galaxy gonna have to retreat a little bit. Interesting to see the roll swap, by the way. Galaxy on the Lapras now, and Metagross actually in the hands of N. So, I don't know, players swip swapping all over the place. Uh, and picking up different Pokemon where they see fit. Lapras is a, a weird one too. That feels like in the Mew camp for me. It probably was slightly over nerfed. I don't disagree, especially when Umbreon, they were like, what if we never nerf it? But at the same time, uh, it does feel like maybe we just kind of gave up on this Pokemon a little early when Lapras is still pretty dang good. How do we feel about Bubble Beam? Um, people really don't try it at all. But the thing is, like uh, the combination of Unite into Ice Beam is kind of broken. Because yeah. you're able to, you get a huge knockup, and you can't get out of that knockup in time to avoid the freeze of Ice Beam. So it's mm. sort of just a, the stun is maybe too good, you know? Yeah, that's that's absolutely fair. I really enjoy Bubble Beam, but I think you're right. Every time I play it, I'm like, yeah, I probably should just be picking Ice Beam in this scenario. So not really an option. Galaxy, the only one to hang around, maybe take a couple of players from the side of Team Uwu to have to deal with this Reggie Alecky push, which is, of course, going to allow a free start on the Registeel for Team CG. Yeah, and we got a snipe shot moving on in here, but as long as this Metagross just positions itself in a reasonable place where the Inteleon would be, there's no way they're going to be able to steal it away. They don't. Delphox Unite move, trying to push them off this goal zone. Looks like it definitely could work. Crustal yep. using that rubble rouser, pushing forward right here. Massive rock tomb uh, X scissor play right there as the snipe shot's just barely not hitting where the Clefable mm -hmm. player here for CG. Oh, yeah, she's able to make it back to a retreat towards the slow bro and the company. And in that entire time, I don't think Galaxy went down on this Lapras. I think they were able to withstand all that damage. I don't think Reggie Alecki went in the goal zone, but hey, the Lapras uh, staying alive. Here we go. Inteleon continuing to farm up right here. We have Inteleon and Leafeon at 12 here on the side of Uwu. Level's actually pretty close for both of these teams, but we do see a bit of a level advantage to our purple side. 172, 169. Score zone, or score, you know, spread so incredibly close between these two teams. And experience really, really close too. Yeah, they, these teams seem evenly matched, Spragos. Like, I, I don't think it would be uh, unfair to either side to really say that. CG and Team Uwu seem like they are face-to-face, -face, level wise score-wise throughout this entire match. Macro-dependent, I don't know. It seems like they are... They're going to be a very fun set to watch again in the future as UCS continues, I think. Look at this. These are small scores, but with a game so close... Never mind, the scores are getting less and less small. But with a game so incredibly close, that actually just put them in the lead which is really oh amazing word. here. Normally, you know, you throw in 14 or so points here in this bottom path, it doesn't really mean a lot, but there it actually does mean a ton. We're now 192 to 169. However, they are getting punished for it uh, with a few KOs. Delphox will be back soon, and with just a little bit of farm, it should have its Unite back. If they can continue to chain these KOs, they might be able to make something happen here, but instead they decide to reset and get ready for the fight themselves. 
Good rotation by CG. I love Metagross getting in there. They use their Unite move and they literally capture three opponents. But maybe most notably, they actually captured Herai's Blissey on the other side of a wall. So the Blissey couldn't even Unite if it wanted to. It probably wouldn't at this time of the game, right? But it didn't even have the option to give a lot of support to the other side. And poor Delphox and Inteleon trapped in that terrifying Colosseum that Metagross can create. Here we go. The final stretch. We have a possible sneaky score here happening from Lapras. Everyone's just kind of waiting for this. Obviously, the purple side must know that they're slightly ahead by now. As the 40 goes in, Leafeon not able to stop it. That's going to put him up 192, 249. Leafeon also not the best Pokemon to possibly stop Lapras here with how much stealth. Here, look at that telekinesis. The range wow. on it, absolutely incredible. Almost got them for a big moment. Limit testing slow, bro. I feel like we don't see it very much anymore, but every now and then, players got to really push the limits of what this specific defender can do. And now Lapras has recalled all the way back to base, and we have a full-on 5v5 fight again. The only different look is CG have an extra bunch of points to play with. Yeah, the question is, how do they want to play this now? I think Uwu knows that they're behind. Here comes Slowbro. It obviously has that massive Unite move, but it's been hit a couple times by a snipe shot. Crustal Unite. Well, no one's around Crustal to do anything. Lapras and Metagross coming in with the combination Unite moves right there. Now we have Delphox getting caught inside there. They lower the walls, actually. Turn it around on Leafeon, who got caught by Slowbro. Big moves from Delphox right here as the fire continues to rain down on multiple members here of CG. Two down now on the side of Uwu as they're going to continue this push. Rayquaza now being hit in this central area. It is already at half. Blissey looking for an Egg Bomb secure. Inteleon on the top side of the pit looking to make some Something happen here. They need to zone this out. Here comes the egg bomb. It's too early. Secured by Glaceon. Wow, the bulk from CG just too unbelievably strong. I mean, there were so many Unite moves thrown either direction, and somehow CG literally looked untouched in a match like that. Here I go in for a bit of a back cap scenario with no points, and I think at this one. It's safe to say we have our final competitor for top eight. It is going to be CG. Wow. So we know all of EU. We got to see it all on broadcast here, Zoinks, which is pretty exciting. We know all of our EU teams heading to top eight. And we also should have the uh, bracket set up for NA. Yeah, we'll have that up on screen in a second. Sorry, I realized I went away mid-game, but uh, take a quick look at these stats. But yeah, I think normally it's what we were expecting to see. Metagross maybe the best performance we've seen from it all day, though. I think it's got. I think it's got uh, some real viability. I do. I think mm -hmm. people are not. You know, it's it's new. It's a new Pokemon. It takes a little while to adjust to it. It also went through this weird balance process, right? That I think a lot of team, a lot of players go. Oh, it's trash. Oh, it's too good. Oh, they nerfed it again, so now it's probably bad again. You know, it's just, are you are you going to roll the dice on something brand new, or are you going to play what you know works, right? Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, it seems like we still don't have the bracket started, and I can give a quick refresh at the page, but... I think, uh, yeah, I think we're still sitting on it. Metagross's build. I'm so sorry we don't have the build because we don't have draft, unfortunately, but... Um, I mean, I can I, tell you the best Metagross build for most of your games is going to be Weakness Policy, Attack Weight, and Razor Claw. That's mostly yeah. what you're going to run on that Pokemon. There are some other options that work pretty good. Muscle Band's not bad on it at all. Um, mm -hmm. Let me think. First Bangle? Yeah, you could curse with it, I guess. I, mean, I think Resonant Guard is maybe a more... Resonant option. Guard's a good one, too. You theoretically play Resonant Guard. The yeah. only thing is, um, your shields are already so massive. But I, mm -hmm. I think it's weakness, attack weight, and razor claw. That's my favorite. Okay. I could see you focus to too coming from the chat. Back. Focus is good, yeah. If we're gonna run it in lane, yeah. yeah Was my watching. favorite NA team. Um my favorite NA team. What's the team of Cookie Doe's team that we're not supposed to watch? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, that one. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh my gosh. You said they came into your chat too? Well, Cookie literally came into the chat and said, Don't watch me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there we go. Secrets out. <laughs> there you go. Only friends. Thank you. Only friends. Thank That's you. my favorite team. So we have to watch them. Okay, let me check the Discord because I'm listed as like a North American participant um, in the Discord so I can see the update when it actually begins. But it looks like we are still just... I think they had to do some kind of reseeding. Okay. Um, Or at least there was just more teams than they expected, I think, when doing the seeding. Uh, so that's what they're... 
that's what they're working on. But cool. Yeah, geez, there are some good teams. Perseverance, by the way, another team that is low key really good. Glocksick and Tetsion kind of back and playing. Ravi, Squirtle's Den. Like, God, geez. It's so shrivel. Okay. Interesting tag. What? Getting ready for NA, everybody. North America. We've been through EU. We saw everything that they have to give. And honestly, they're looking great as a region. More competitive than I would expect here at the start of the season. If you're just joining us, make sure you smash that like button. If you haven't smashed that like button already, I mean, I would do it. But honestly, hang your head in shame because you've been here for a while. We're live on Twitch. We're live on TikTok. Hello, TikTok. And we are live here on YouTube. We're going to be going all the way through NA, myself, and the Zoinks cast. It should be a really fun time as we get to see who makes our NA top eight. I can't wait. Like I, <laughs> there could be some big upsets. Um, Sprinkles, did you see my power rankings that I did for no. this uh, for this team here? Let me show you. Yeah, I would, I, love, uh, I would love to hear your power rankings. This is for, for my top ten. Okay, I, I've already kind of two spots which don't count. Back. Obviously, the top ten. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just someone asked me specifically for my top ten, and so that's what I answered. But. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Also, please ignore my spelling. I um, always will. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Because the way I spelled ignorance is maybe the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. It's funny to spell um, ignorance wrong. <laughs> he gone romance. Um, I also spe spelled nemesis wrong. But this is my top ten. Yeah, nemesis is also infamous on this list as well. But uh, Nemesis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's take a look at it. So... Um, I'll tell you what I agree with, what I might disagree with. Uh, LG, without question, number one with a bullet. They yep. look great, too. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nemesis, I <laughs> yeah, they're sick. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm shocked that we didn't get to see Amaterasu day two last year. I thought they oh, were. I thought they were a shoo in for day two. Um, even just on main stage, did we get to see them on main stage? I don't know. I just feels like a team I wanted to see so much more from. TTV, obviously, they're a killer squad. The only thing I uh, I would say is hard with them is they've gone through, like, kind of multiple roster shakeups, right? A last-minute one, too. Yeah, with, uh, exactly. Vin out and Hitman in. So, yeah, they are definitely a team I would consider dropping to fourth or even fifth. Yeah, um, it, but it's hard, right? Because they're also... Uh, like, the the core of TTV, if you if you look at TTV, just, just Ender Lutano... Um, that pairing has been here for years at this point. Mm -hmm. um, Otter, obviously, with them all last season, looking fantastic. And now they've got two new yeah. additions. Pikadiff, who is sick, I think, taking to the role really well. And I have, I've, I've seen a little from Hitman. I've heard Hitman's a bit of a beast, but it's pretty yeah. new. So I, I would say putting TTV there is absolutely where they could be. But, you know, mm -hmm. they've got a lot to learn in a short amount of time. One thing in TTV's defense, and be, this is the top 10 I'm not considering for all year. I was just saying going into this tournament specifically. Uh -huh. So meta played a part of it. And I think that Hitman's best Pokemon by far is their Leafeon. Oh, yes. Um, And so I had TTV considered quite high because of that. Um, I think some of their power picks are just going to be really, really strong in today's tournament. So that's why I also had them ranked quite high. Um, I got to say, Brian, uh, first off in the YouTube chat, shout outs. Love you, buddy. Thank you for the super chat. They're not familiar with most teams, but based on the name Alter Ego, Alter Ego looks sick. Have you seen their logo? No. Oh, let me. That doesn't change my logo. mind about how good of a team they are. But you know what? Maybe it will. It's you'll think it's better. Uh, they um, <laughs> here. let me show you. This is the Ooh. Alter Ego logo. Yeah, that's sick. it's very good. So you're, you're God, I can't believe you're right, but actually, I do think they're even better <laughs> after seeing the logo. You're not wrong. So that logo is made by Cloudbuster, mm -hmm. who is actually a competitor, but also a really cool community member, an incredible artist, uh, in the Pokemon Unite community. And this was one of like 20 options that they made for the team, it, but they're really, really sick. So I am, I am pumped to watch this, uh, watch this team play. Uh, Hot Mom in the chat. How many teams are we watching from NA? We have a ton of them ready to go. We have, uh, LG Why is Monk inviting me to a team. He just wants Why you. Is... To, he wants you to play. <laughs> um, play. We've got a ton of a ton of teams we can watch. We can watch YT, TTV, LG. Uh, do we have Nemesis? Yep. 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 We, have, we have Nemesis. Everybody Alt on that top ten I just showed you, I have. Great. 
Uh, so Exile, Ignorance, God Squad, YouTube, Viridian, GT, Alter Ego, TTV, Nemesis, LG, and I have some other teams too. Some kind of like sleeper team, like Onbu, Dark Aura, um, Flamin' Hot Dodrios. Only friends. More. Can we? Can you tell me about? Um, I actually don't know if I have only friends. Uh, on here. <laughs> can you tell me about GT and why GT are maybe higher than a team that beat them last year, like TT or YT? So GT again was a meta choice uh, because I think OG is a freak, and I think OG is very, very good in this meta game right now. Mm. Um, so they that is why I had them considered a little bit higher. Uh, but they are GT was one of the teams that I was very much considering moving down <laughs> the list after after I originally put it out. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I was just okay. curious. I was curious uh, what your thought process yeah. were. They're a great team. I mean, it was yeah. neck and neck between them and YT. Uh, it was also Black's, like, best central picks are, like, Urshifu and um, Eevees. And I like, think Sylveon's also just really, really good right now. It so it's is, just another yeah. one of those situations where I think metagame could really favor them, but I maybe let that carry it a bit too far. Exile's a team I also have too low, I think. Hmm. Um, Exile's like Freak, Oblivion, Simp, tw not Twisted, uh, someone else, I forget who's their defender. Duck, or Joey, I think? Oh no, I can't remember now. What's up, Gotlu? Welcome in, buddy. Hey, streamer, prepare for the storm because Gotlu's greed and army is about to unleash a tidal wave of support. Is this a raid? Aww. We got a Gotlu raid? <laughs> is this a raid? Is this a raid? Like, he, just, he just sent us like a normal message, actually. No, uh, this yeah. is how Gotlu just says hi. <laughs> Gotlu yeah. walks in, and this is just Gotlu's hi message. This is a raid. What's up, buddy? Uh, congratulations so on today, by the way. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. I would love to enter places with a raid message, but not raid. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. Yeehaw, Sprangles bringing the stack down on you. Yeehaw, yeehaw. A couple of dancing things. <laughs> and they're like, hey. <laughs> they have to assume there was a raid. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, Gatlu, go rest. Congratulations on making top eight. And through Winter's side, Gatlu. It was so sick. Can I, can I ask, Zoinks, you have this list here for, for NA. Where do you put Gatlu's team on EU? Baltoy? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, Maybe first right now. Well, no, but I'm. Oh, did you make one? You didn't make one for EU. I didn't make one for EU, okay. unfortunately. But they, I did have them second in my list. I think I made a top four at some point, but not publish it. But it is. Uh, I would have nouns first, Baltoy second. But right now, <laughs> I would say a uh, pretty clean shout out to Baltoy. Yeah, Baltoy's looking great. A lot of teams looking pretty fantastic today. Yeah, no need to be nervous. I think you did such a good job. Yeah, you guys played um, great. It's obvious. Play. It's uh, of course there's a lot. You know, it being a new team, right? You wanna mm -hmm. you wanna su succeed in this first like real real go. You wanna make a name for yourself early, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course. Let's take a look at pool two because I we've had it on pool one for quite some time now. Oh, it's Wait, going. Why is this? Okay, okay, that's right. good. It sounds like link it's me that uh, Brorkit. Broke it. All right, let's just go to brackets. I'll allow them to choose. This will be the link that they can choose either. Okay. Or two. Johnny break it. Johnny break it. I was watching a video earlier. My daughter, when she was very little. Um, no. Wait, why is pool one not where, started? Let me finish my story, Zoinks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a video of my daughter. Uh, and she had a she wanted a cookie. She's really little. She's like a year and a half. This story isn't good. Uh, she wanted a cookie. Okay. She's really little, year and a half. And uh, we're like, well, we can give you half a cookie. And she's a little kid. And she's like, uh... uh Cookie, uh, Johnny, break it. Johnny, break it. So she's saying, just give me the whole cookie and I'll break it. That was her plan because she's obviously smart enough to figure out if we give her the whole cookie, she's just going to keep the whole thing. And I thought, uh, I was really proud of her watching that video. I was like, what a <laughs> what a smart choice. Told you the story wasn't good, but it means a lot you know, to me. I, I think it's really cute. Why are you judging the story so hard? <laughs> so you said your daughter's quite smart. I think so. I mean, you know, shady, very shady. <laughs> Who's smarter, do you think, your son or your daughter? Uh, well, my son was just born, but sure. the guy's freaking a genius. I mean, definitely him. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a mad genius. Can't believe it. This one month old. Uh. <laughs> oh. Well, what am 
Am I a hater, huh? What? <laughs> he is a hater. Is Zoinks is such a hater. Can't believe he hates that story. Cute story, says the chat. See, Zoinks? Uh, Everyone I loved the story. Zoinks doesn't like cookie stories. I thought it was cute. I thought it was a great story. The, uh, the the fun dynamic that I get to have with you, Zoinks, is you're so nice and likable, but it's fun <laughs> oh, to no. act like you're being ridiculous when I am. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a fun... For me, that's very fun. Okay, well, I'm, I'm happy to be that. Yeah. Jeez, there are... Oh, wow. Team Mufa is up against XO first. I feel like that's a, kind of an in-house... I feel like those teams like are always hanging out together. I always see those two teams like interacting on social media and stuff. So that's pretty crazy. Updating our brackets. So for some reason, pool two looks started, but pool one does not. I don't. Um, I don't know exactly what's happening. I'm sure uh... the bracket command should be updated for both chats now. Sorry, TikTok, but they don't let me have a chat bot for you. Oof. Ooh, for Pinned comment in okay. in Twitch is not good for you, Zoinks. Okay, they are both started. No, no. <laughs> they are both started. Oh, cheese cun, that's not true. <laughs> I do love cookie stories. Okay, so the match has, or the tournament has begun, finally. Uh, Luminosity, obviously, seated one, is going to have a first round bye. Come Ultra on, Rainbow. overrated. <laughs> what? Yes, bye. Just so overrated. What did they do? Just win Worlds twice in a row, something that will never <laughs> be repeated in the history of the game? I now want someone to start an overrated chat at, at NAIC or something so bad. Dude, Overlord? Overrated. More like overrated, dude. Give me a break. <laughs> the guy's only done the most damage on every broadcast he's been on. <laughs> Honestly, team sucks. He's actually that is a fun thing about him is that he's a stat monster as well. Like not only are the results there for him, he's also like a statistical uh demon, which yeah. is pretty cool. Not many players. So Gatlu actually one of those players as well, by the way. I talked um, Gatlu. I, 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 I know you probably didn't see any of our uh broadcast today. I know, I'm sure you're gonna watch it back in its entirety. But uh I up. I yeah. agree about Gatlu. I was very um glowing talking about Gotlu because Gotlu is one of those players that just uh I say you you push it to the red line like you yep. you really push the pokemon to the limit it's always fun to watch I think if there's a player who really made their name on Greedent, that seems uh -huh. like that would be the identity <laughs> yes. you would bring into competitive play you know what I mean yeah <laughs> if that's the pokemon you chose to first operate with if your starter pokemon in competitive was Greedent yeah that's how I want to look at it. Not what was your first main Unite. What was your starter Pokemon? My, you know, I, I actually, a lot of my uh, top played stuff is pretty mean stuff, I would say. Oh, yeah. It's not like cheesy I mean, broken uh, all the time or anything like that. But it was a little while Pup Lucario. Um, yeah. Even when yeah. E-Speed was the move, I didn't care. Pup Lucario, <laughs> Greedent, uh, Dodrio, and then I think Talon's up there. So it's like a lot of... I, I love being super annoying. Yes. Yeah, that yeah that checks out. That's me. Uh. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll be this, I'll be super annoying. I'm happy to do it. I think you had a question in chat earlier about like what are some off-meta stuff. And we brought up like a few like kind of meta-adjacent Pokemon that we think could be relevant. Like they maybe aren't like totally random, but because so five. I think Snorlax is seeing a surprising lack of of play uh -huh. however it feels like crustle is just a better snorlax now in competitive like for what you want it to do right like the whole reason you want it to is to enable your like long range damage dealers to hit easy shots and i feel like crustle's just sort of better at that now mm -hmm. yeah crustle is doing like great mm -hmm. if you really wanted to go hard on like peeling for your back line like if you're going up against double speedster or something maybe there's a world where snorlax can exist uh, just heavy slam yawn combos on anything that even gets close to your back line. Mm -hmm. All right. We have one game up. Uh, Dark Aura is starting off their first match, it seems like, if we wanted to... I wouldn't hate seeing that. Dark Aura, but I, I would kind of like to see a fan favorite team. Sure. Yeah, so teams that don't have um, round buys yeah. are Viridian and GT are two teams that I have. Uh, we could... Both of those would be exciting about. to see. What else um, do we have? E kittens DM me please. Another team. Okay. Awesome. Not Valuable. sure why you're just saying that. Ignorance. But what other team do we have? Um, <laughs> Ignorance. Um, we could watch their first game. Uh, they just popped. Uh, we can do a I poll don't... in the chat to see what everybody wants. Would you guys like to see 
GT. Maybe a hot mom could set up a poll on Twitch. First game, we got GT. What were they again, Zoigs? Viridian. Ignorance. Egonorance. Yeah, I don't know how I did it so bad. Or Dark Aura, I guess. Dark Aura. All good first games. Uh, let's go Only Friends. He doesn't have Only Friends. I don't. Yeah, tell Cookie to add me and then I'll spectate. <laughs> Got the poll up on YouTube. I mean, I guess you could spectate too, and I guess cast up your stream if you really want to. I oh, could. Or, or Flame and Hot Dodrios. We also have the option for them at any point. The name's extremely good. It's so good. They also have a dope logo. <laughs> they also, they just basically colored a Dodrio red. <laughs> right now, GT is crushing it in the YouTube vote. Okay, got it. All right, well, their game hasn't started quite yet, but we absolutely can get into there. It's a good one to watch. They are they are a top team, for sure. Yeah. And they I'm are... I'm down to take a break. This is a long day. I'm down to chill for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, month. we have a lot of games to see. We're here... I mean, I don't want to say, like, we're like, oh, we're martyrs or whatever. You know, like, I, I hate that, like, people would even say that, like, oh, you guys do so much. Like, we don't deserve you. Like, that is not the kind of energy I want to bring to something, you know? Sure, like, sure. this is what I'd be doing regardless of people watching or not, okay. you know? Yeah, I got you. I got you. And I hate that, like, oh, you're like... You're like kind of like the Mr. Beast of the Unite community. Oh, you're like... Say. <laughs> like, everything you do is, like, so, like, amazing. And I'm like, guys, <laughs> like, th like, this is so nice, but also, like, it makes me uncomfortable, you know? Right. Yeah, Wait, is Sanji about. playing in this tournament? Who's Sanji playing on? Oh, is he? <laughs> I don't know. He just popped up in standard games at the same time as all the matches are starting, so I have to assume so. Do him and Faz have a team? That might be happening. Hmm, interesting. Let me... Let's check right now. Uh, so yeah, TTV and stuff like that, a lot of these teams have round one buys. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, Sam's saying that in the chat as well. A lot of these teams have round one buys. So uh, they are not playing until round two because last year they did so well that they're a highly rated team. So the way they, you know, mm -hmm. sort out the bracket is they're, uh, you know, they're set to miss that first round, which makes total sense because all they would be doing is dumpstering a, a low ranked team. Yeah. Uh, Sanji is playing. Uh, he is playing on a team called Limit Testing with Reggie's, Muty, Onion, uh, and then uh, and Calipi. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, we didn't even put Team YouTube down as an option, <laughs> but their game just started. Wait, Team YouTube is in round one? Um. Well, let me. Ch There's no way. As a team that went to Worlds, they're they're not they don't. Yeah, have... no, they're not in round one, but they have a custom game that's starting right now. So yeah, no, I want to watch their actual game. We don't need to watch their custom. Yeah, that must be like a scrim or something. Yeah, I don't know what it would be. Probably. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me check the. I need the to switch this list. to NA because we're still looking at EU bracket because I'm dumb. Hi. Oopsies. My name's Jake. I'm dumb. Tried to put RAM in my computer yesterday. Didn't work out. That was the whole thing. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm mad about it. Okay. I bought uh, RAM that should work, but it's just <laughs> won't. My computer won't turn on with it. I gotta try different RAM. It won't take it. It won't take the you. RAM. So sad. Uh -oh. Rye Bread, thank so you so much for the Prime, buddy. Appreciate How you. How did the chat pull pick the game that pops last? Also, they're three minutes into their match right now. GT is so. Great. After uh, it should be jumping up as for spectate availability any second. I'll now. get this set up then. It's GT versus whom? Uh, that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, pers uh, professor party. PP. Gosh. Is professor two S's or two F's? <laughs> Put both. Uh, just one F, two S's. That's what I thought. I don't think it's gonna fit. I don't think the party fits. I'll, I'll find out. It's a professor party. Are these Pokemon professors? I wonder. Ooh. If they are, they're gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> Probably need to ram it in there more. Says the chat. I don't think you know what the ram is. Okay, I, but to hey, be fair, maybe I don't either. That though. I'm pumped. Tried. I'm putting it in there. It's not working. 
If your PC slow, you should slow, you should download more RAM. I'm telling it, I'm telling you guys, you don't know what RAM is. <laughs> download more RAM is All my right? favorite meme in the world. <laughs> if you thought my cookie story was good, get ready for me trying to put RAM in my computer. I got a lot of great stories. <laughs> All my stories are <laughs> just a thing that happened with no buildup, no climax, no resolution. Yeah. Not exciting. <laughs> But important. You can't really call them stories. You oh, know? Did I get the game? I guess they're just things. Ah, we got, we got the game. Let's go. Let's okay. go. Gosh, there's just so many. I have 